Basically, yeah. everything that Big Smash should not be a part of. Oh, <laughs> yeah. listen, listen, hold on. Definitely. Bet the house. Bet the house is a wholesome, loving, coming together. Oh my bringing to people no, so together. Oh, you yeah. are it's wholesome, It's some crazy God. shit. It's some crazy shit. For those of y'all don't know, if wow. you listen to Big Smash podcast, right? He is not the same person that he is when he get on everybody else shit. He come on everybody else shit and go crazy. <laughs> You listen to his, this motherfucker yes. talking inspiration. He's giving you positive he quotes. He be nice He's giving fuck. you affirmation. <laughs> then he go on everybody else shit like, fuck you. And go ham. And go ham. I'm not going to fuck up my food. own house, yep. so I'd rather fuck up everybody else's house. Shit, why not? You a true nigga. Y'all That's got right. a welcome sign that says, welcome, so shit. Make yourself at home. Me, Casa. Hey, smash this your country. You didn't need come to your house for the first time and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, my house is going to smash. It's your conscience speaking. They go to conscience. Stop. Fuck that. Come fuck up your house and be in the weed right when y'all about to ready to clean up. All right, y'all, man, I catch y'all tomorrow, man. It was nice. Y'all, y'all shit in a mess. So hey, smash, I, I catch y'all. Hey, smash, we need you to stop fucking up people's happy home with your toxicity, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Y'all hey, know hey, DC, let like his ass know. DC don't do DC don't get on no more lives with me where it's just me and him. He learned that lesson before. Yeah, bro. I came on to be positive. This nigga like, yeah, go slide in there wrong like you going home base. But he wonder why he wow. broke my bandit though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, peace and love. He was like, no, nah, fuck that. No condoms in love all day. <laughs> I told y'all motherfuckers yesterday, if I'm going down, Everybody going Everybody with going me, goddammit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's day. Let me go ahead and mind my business when it comes to Smash because that nigga out here with the fuck. He that nigga said he taking his fall right. down. Hey, I'm, real I'm, quick. I'm, I'm not out. Out. Oh, hey, shit. Bro. If I get in trouble, Yo. everybody going down, goddammit. Nah, man, about that. Real quick, Raw. I appreciate Yo. you holding it down. I got about an hour and a half and I'll be back. But I want to say something real quick. Uh, Word on the street is everybody like what's going on with this. So it might be an annual event. I can't say yes or no. But uh even if it ain't I feel a record, like yes. Even I if it ain't it. hold on now, hold on I now. Even if, for, even if it ain't for a record book, I feel like yearly this might be a thing. Um from what I hear. I, 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 I niggas gonna that. have to cut the check next year though. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. you know DC, if I gotta be here next I, year for more you know than three hours I, for an hour, I need to check. <laughs> Niggas Same cutting the check. check. Cut it. None. Nigga, we ain't cutting the check. Her name is Amron. Hey, cut the check. Okay. Where's my money? <laughs> cut his money. <laughs> Put the money in my cut account. The check. God damn it. Cut the check. Yeah, I I I'm a cheap <laughs> day, okay? I'll, it ain't going to cost you much. Okay, well, shit, DC, just if they, nigga, they want to shoot just give him a 30 count like eggs. Give him a 30 count yeah, eggs. I, I, got, right. I got enough. I got enough eggs. I got enough eggs. I don't need I'm no good, food. Man, God damn I'm it. good on that. Uh, but, uh, uh, check. Uh, uh, can uh, I Instacart my eggs off the EBT card? Get the conversation. Dope. Everybody but smash. Do everything great. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm gonna let him be because I ain't there to supervise. Uh, nigga, I'm Dave right Chappelle. I'm 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 Dave Chappelle. I'm Rick James. God damn it, fuck your couch, nigga. We here tonight. God damn it, shit. Well, technically, right now, so you uh, the- I don't know whose couch it is, but it ain't mine. Either. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. What the shit? Couch. Keep it going. Halfway home. <laughs> y'all got me. Yeah, I don't know. Then, who's hey, listen, hey, listen. When I when I do my when I do my three. When I do my 300th episode, I'm welcoming all y'all to come to me for my 300th episode. All right, come on in. Talk oh, for sure. shit. You know, I'm I'm for my sure. 300 is coming up. I'm like 14 episodes away. So, and I'm finna drop them motherfuckers consecutively. Every day I'm dropping a new episode. So, 300 is coming. This is Sparta. I'm, God, I'm gonna say she gonna see about that check though. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> so, um. Shout out, shout out to DC and them for taking oh, wow. the time. Oh, that's right. Y'all got money. What's up, my G? What's up, man? You know, on, shout man? out to them, chill, them chill, to chill. do this shit. Now, he, he thought he was going to hide and duck from this motherfucker. Hey. He, was, yeah. nah. he thought he wasn't going to be here. Man, I told y'all going to be here, bro. But you need to be. 
fuck. Yeah, hey, man. But I, hey. this, this shit has been an experience, though. I no, it has. Right. It has. Right. First of all, for we're doing this social like me, experiment, this uh, crazy idea that I didn't know what was going to happen or how it was going to happen, but you motherfuckers stepped up, showed up, and showed out. Everybody but Smash, I appreciate y'all. Smash, I double it. <laughs> and that's why you don't get a big Smash rub no more, dog. Like, you Yo, just you got to stop saying that. First of all, I am not neither a motherfucking rib nor a pork loin, my nigga. Don't be saying no Smash rub, nigga. What the fuck is going on out here? Yeah, none about that shit sound right, bro. Nothing. <laughs> Early the motherfucker said, Yeah, I must have rubbed off on him. What? Hey, you need a new catchphrase because that ain't it. That ain't working. Hey, man, Uh, listen, that was my catchphrase for like two years, and I had everybody upset because. They 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 knew it was the truth. Nigga, like, I'm gonna be upset. You say you rubbed off on me too. What the fuck you mean? <laughs> yeah, that that. But anywho, as I was saying before, he tried to rub up on me. I'm calling HR. <laughs> um, I appreciate y'all for joining in on this great, weird social experience, social experiment. Um, so many dope ass podcasters. So many people just been watching, tapping in, loving it. I appreciate y'all all. I'm sorry I had to pull double duty and work and try to do this. But you guys are holding it down. I know Raw's been holding it down. A lot of you guys been uh in here for hours and hours. Man, Raw ain't been holding shit down. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Oh, wow. <laughs> you so hate you sound shit? like a fucking I've been in it, Hold on. First of all, I've been in this bitch since about 1 o'clock. Hey, yeah. listen. Hey, listen. Raw, raw. I've been here since eight this morning. morning. Raw must be on the couch, so he <laughs> said, "Fuck that! I ain't sleeping mm-hmm. on no couch. I'ma just be recording all fucking night." Fuck you talking about? Because y'all okay, know raw say he ain't sleeping on no couch. Oh no, 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 no. That's not an <laughs> option. Well, I sleep on the we couch already know that's not an option bed. in my house. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> if I fall asleep, Again. that's one thing. You ain't making me sleep on no motherfucking couch. <laughs> Again, real quick, yeah. before yeah. I let Queen oh. get y'all get y'all started, whatever. Uh, lead the team building experience for this hour. Because this pretty much all it is has been a bonding team. Big experience live retreat online. It's gonna be a lot of collaborations created from these fucking 48 hours. Good, that's what should happen. That's amazing. It should happen like that every time somebody's trying to get in. Hey man, hey man, listen, listen. Hey, hold on, real quick. Kiki, I'm in young DC did a hell of a thing right now, but Big Smash did this same thing on his 200th episode. All right, shut the fuck up. Kiki, you still at work? No, I'm at home. I'm about to go to work at 11, though. <laughs> okay. No, but real quick, again, uh, I, I I really appreciate y'all. Y'all dope. Um, I'm loving all the, the networking and collaborations and the conversations. I've been trying to keep up with it as I'm out here in these streets. I ain't been keeping up with nothing. Hey, first of all, again, shut the fuck up. We grown folks are talking. Hey, DC. Shut it. the fuck up. DC a clown, man. <laughs> As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. You guys are dope. Continue this uh, live stream, team building, bonding, podcasting, extravaganza experience. Be halfway home. Y'all dope. I'll be home soon. I feel like I'm getting out of prison. Like, I'm talking to y'all. Both <laughs> I feel like, yeah. That's, I'm gonna put like, when are you going to be nigga? home? Because that's crazy that you've been locked up all this time and I ain't even know. I know. I'm coming home. I'm put something on your books, dog. I got you. I got you, dog. Hey, you know that's a that's a I'm song. Get you a that's cake. a common song, man. I'm coming home. Hey, man, fuck common. We not getting back on that, man. Hey, hey don't do that. Don't do that. Don't disrespect yeah, Chicago. Like that. Hey, man, fuck common here. Don't disrespect Come Chicago, Chicago like that, nigga. Man, I like Chicago, right. but fuck Kyle. Hey, why you, from, why Cleveland, y'all you from Cleveland and all y'all got no, is the No, Kiki is not y'all. Don't just do them. them. Just he the only motherfucker I know just that hate Common. Oh, I'm gonna say, what he do? He, did he start pissing the nigga? Gonna go listen to Machine Gun Kelly Ooh. since he from Ohio, nigga. Nah, he said Common stole his cornbread and he ain't never forget that shit. <laughs> cornbread filling ass nigga, but we ain't gonna get into that. I'm gonna let y'all do what y'all do. Uh, <laughs> But again, y'all, y'all feel something about cornbread. <laughs> something, man, I ain't y'all still, y'all still going on tonight? Okay, so okay, okay, I got a question. I got a question, Ro. We don't have answers. Oh, you you gonna have an answer for this one? All right, for all okay, my fellas in here, can you can you lose a fight in front of your lady? Hell yep. no. Damn, you gonna that. go down? My my no. wife ain't gonna let me. She probably she ain't gonna let you lose. Your wife watch you get packed up. She ain't gonna yeah. let me know because I'm a jump. Nah, that's gonna be the best sympathy dick suck you ever got. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to, I have to jump in if he get beat up. I feel some type of way. I bring it up in an argument. Yeah, I'm gonna be mad. Like, 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 hey, so I don't know why. Why can you get beat the fuck up? Then she ain't your wife. Cause right? this ride or die, motherfucker. We, yep. we, we go. We came in here together. We getting our ass whooped together. Fuck yep. you, mean? you dead. Wait a motherfucking minute. Like, now. You, like, you ain't gonna get our ass whooped. <laughs> no, I'm saying if I'm getting my ass whooped, you better be getting your ass whooped. Too. Okay, I'm um, right. If you I'm getting right. your ass whooped, I'm gonna get my ass whooped. I'm just too. saying. That's I'm just saying, is. man. Like, like you will never be respected again. Like I'm gonna tell you, I ain't, I ain't getting taking no ass whooping in front of my lady, nigga. Like that's gonna be where you see me at my best. I'm going to be a rare form in that fight because there's no way in hell I'm going to be looking like Mike Tyson out in that motherfucker because ain't no way, dog. Ain't no way. Now, if it's 20 on one, she better meet me at the car because we gone. I'm not I'm not standing there for that shit. No, that's a different conversation. Baby, I'm, I'm going to be at the front door like I pulled the car. And I wish she would. I wish she would call me a bitch or something. Did you see we was outnumbered? 20 to 2, <laughs> goddammit. Who the fuck you think we are? Hey, <laughs> hey, hold on. So, Wait, so but hold on. What if you just get your ass whooped by one? Yeah, okay. So if he get his ass whooped, you ain't got no for him no more? It depends. Like, you know, it depends. And I don't want no sympathy pussy if I get my ass whooped. I'm cool. Oh, no, no, no. You don't get some sympathy pussy. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like that should be a requirement if you get your ass beat. Damn, I don't that, know. Hey, hold on. It depends it depend on the situation, hold though. On. I'm surprised it's, Smash said he ain't getting no sympathy pussy because last night he was talking about <laughs> ain't nothing can stop the pussy, even if this exactly. woman has cold. That's that, 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 that period. Here, man, now pussy. I don't want that shit. I don't want that lazy pussy. I'm cool. Don't don't give me no pussy because I lost. No, fuck that. So what you're saying is you not like Neo. You don't want that lazy love. Hell no. Cause if I get my ass whooped, I don't even want to look at you at that moment. God damn it! Like, <laughs> what the like, fuck? She got to do with you get your like, ass whooped. I'm gonna sleep in the garage for two weeks. Cause I'm gonna take it hey, that pussy. Shit. Fuck it. Hey, I'm gonna put. Hey, I'm, my dude gonna be mad. I'm gonna sit around playing uh, old Master P songs. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it out on the pussy. Hey, you a fucking asshole. Be, a hole, be another hole in that motherfucker. She gonna be mad as hell. Like. You need to get your ass whooped more often or some shit. Something gotta give, goddammit. Wow. Miss, Somebody, Miss Candy, what you gonna do? You 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 yeah. you, ain't, you ain't gonna respect them after those mm-hmm. or what? Mm-hmm. You watched him get it, his it ass would depend whooped. on the outcome. Like if you if you at least try the outcome, he got his ass whooped. You. <laughs> that yeah, yeah, might not be win. his fault. He got his ass whooped. What if you ain't gonna win in every fight? fight. I'm just it not gonna lose a fight in front of my fight. woman. Like I'm running. I catch I, you another day, nigga. But Pop, without her being Pop here, said nigga. you win some, you lose. You lose some. some. Yeah, if you win, fight, no, especially if you fight, fight. If you fight on my my behalf. Hell no, nah, I'm fucking oh, yeah. with you. Oh yeah, I definitely, I right. definitely ain't losing that fight. I'm gonna do what Craig did and grab a brick. Like we all know, As you was, motherfucking we all shit. know was beating Craig ass exactly. before he grabbed that. He brick. definitely was. Craig like, was getting his ass whooped. <laughs> so hold on. Got, let me ask you this. He let was taking the this, fuck right? out that nigga. Y'all in Walmart. Yeah, he, he y'all too. in Walmart. Yeah. You start some bullshit with a nigga because your husband with you, and then your husband gets your ass whooped after you started the bullshit. Does that change? Oh, no, 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 no. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I, if, if it was me that started, we this gonna shit, jump that nigga. First of all, yeah, that's gonna yeah. happen, and then I'm gonna yeah. feel bad because I started this shit. But right. if he if he on some drunk belligerent starting bullshit and he get his ass whooped, I'm like, that's the fuck you get. Get, get in the fucking car. Yeah, <laughs> my dumb ass forgot I was on mute. I was in the kitchen talking hell shit. Nigga got <laughs> little, that nigga got Lil John music playing in his head. You know, Lil John is fight music, so he just on some bullshit off top. See you at eight, Kiki. In his head. I just stopped through. I gotta go on my podcast, but much love to y'all. See y'all tonight. See I'm you at eight. eight. All right, all right, listen though. Right. Check this out. So I seen this. I Bye, seen Kiki. this. I, I want. I want to know everybody. A Opinion because they tried to get down on Big Mama from Soul Food. They said, I seen your post. <laughs> they said she kept her brother in the closet for 48 years with a stash of money in the TV while she had Terry pay for everything and help the entire family. Dude said that burn on, on her arm was just a preview of her eternity, if you ask me. They tried to get down on Big Mama and say Big Mama was, was, was the real villain in Soul Food. Y'all agree with that? I agree. I agree. I even, People I try to talk about Terry. Okay. Like, what? what? No, First of all, black card. 
Take that nigga black card right now. What? Because I ain't watch Soul Food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. We do. Bro, it, yeah. You ain't watch Soul Food? Nigga, I ain't hey, give a fuck hey, about man. that shit. I don't watch them. Any movie that look like it's going to be 60% softness, I'm not watching it. Hey, man, Soul Food is a black classic, man. For you. For the culture. Is Afro Samurai a classic to you? That's a black classic to me. Yeah. Look, they looking at me like, what the fuck is black Sam uh, Afro Samurai? I don't know. Uh oh, we made Again. boss lady come out to come out the woodwork. Okay. Yeah, I had to on that one. So Big Mama was wrong. She abandoned Pete. Pete had some problems. Ain't nobody care about Pete. Second, Terry, they took advantage of Terry for making her pay for everything. The family fucked her husband multiple times. Vivica Fox took her boyfriend. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. Was it 50 okay, cents? first of all, she didn't do Pete wrong. No, she gave him the room. Stupid. And who that's, had that's on still... Pete? Was Pete washing? Was Pete eating? Was he taking his medicine? No, we don't know. And that's the fucked up part. Nobody was checking on that motherfucker. They wouldn't know if that nigga was dead or not. Not at all. Because I don't remember one scene in that movie where somebody knocked on that motherfucking door and said, Here go your clean clothes, Uncle <laughs> Pete. Here go a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They brought him food. I bought no, him they brought him the food. They knew he was dead. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. <laughs> they, they but nobody food. did anything. That was in like two, one scene. <laughs> That's abandoned. Hey man, so, the little kids so went up there. Really the little kids went up there and knocked on the door and tried to play with him, man. Right. Them kids didn't know no better. <laughs> they Somebody should have really. called. They should have called the motherfucking ombudsman on goddamn. Uh, what's the bitch name? What's the fat lady? Right, so what's the, the pastor name? was slobbing down. Grandma, if the that was bitch. Slob- <laughs> if the pastor was slobbing down y'all girl like he was in Soul Food, would y'all y'all gonna let it ride because he the pastor? No. And the pastor get the most no. pussy in the church, so the pastor came out the second session because I believe the motherfuckers like the most pussy in church. Nasty bastard. What was his name? Pastor. Okay. Speaking of the whole now, now she went. She went to her ex to get her current nigga a job. Was that, that was shit okay. nah. Was that shit acceptable? Nah, hell nah. she was no. No, I think that pussy. was fucked up. That was fucked up. <laughs> I she think it was fucked up. Oh, it, okay. I don't know if she was so using your dude, or so not. Was, I feel like he, that he did that. That, that was some backhanded ass shit, and yeah. she did that to try to make him feel less yeah. of a person, and that's some bullshit. So, nah, you, yeah, girl, you don't do that. Nah. I want one of the ex girls to get you a job. How you gonna feel? Yeah, if I don't got a job, and you carrying my baby, I guess this is what we gotta do. Your ex is not finna get me no motherfucking job so he can come back and say, yeah, you know, you know I hooked you up, right? But my thing is, is I, yeah, right, that, you that know part that right there, you know, I, you know I gave you this little job, you know I hooked y'all up or whatever. But my thing is this, why the fuck did he, why do you feel like, why did she feel like he couldn't go out there and actually look for a job on his own? Or help him find a job. Don't just go to the yeah. yo, ex that you was fucking for all of this time and be like, well, he need a job. And da, da, da. Like, you yep. disrespectful, big headed ass. Because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be like Snoop Dogg and Baby Boy, where he's breaking down exactly. everything Jody going through and he ain't even exactly. on the outside. Like, and Jody couldn't even say shit because what the nigga said was the truth. Him. Like, shit. That's bad. <laughs> Back. It's fucked up when another nigga know everything that's going on in your house, dog. Stop like beating on her damn stomach, crazy. Like baby. man, look, I'm gonna go crazy if you putting all my business out here to another nigga. He fucking. That's yeah. how I'm gonna feel about it. Yes. Either yes. Not to be that, that, makes that? I, that makes sense. He the fucking. Because why are you so comfortable telling somebody our what I would consider to be our personal business? Because if it's supposed to stay between me and you, why the fuck are you going out here telling? Facts, yo, and, then, that. and then I come home from, from being a punk ass bitch all day because baby boy was a punk ass bitch. He was a fucking mama's boy. And you come home from not having a goddamn job yourself. You gotta girlfriend jump by little niggas. I can't believe that job, shit. Like, and this motherfucker at your girlfriend house. I will be mad as fuck. For the fact that he whooped them little niggas with a belt, though. That's <laughs> that was my oh, yeah. man, though, yo. That was, OG he for made real for that. that movie, cuz. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. He that made that part. motherfucking movie. Yeah, he did. And y'all say y'all supposed to love me? That motherfucker was funny as shit. Hey, man, I felt like that nigga when he, he felt like they was in there talking about him. I felt that shit because mamas do be hating low key. 
But they wasn't hating on him. They were showing him mad love. He just was in his motherfucking feelings. He was in his own head. <laughs> Which most motherfuckers do. Hey, when he tried to sell head. that dress, that shit was so fucking funny. I uh, was dying. <laughs> <laughs> he told her ass, hey, hey, that shit was fucking hilarious. He she was gonna buy the she was gonna buy the dress, nigga. And he just had to go post the one. And he like. probably, probably could have got the cheap tag it was too, because she was feeling him a little bit. He she was the workplace hoe. Who? And everybody do y'all think do y'all think Jody cheated with old girl or no? Which nah, girl, yeah. girl she worked I with? She left. Is that considered cheating? Yeah, yeah. 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 You shouldn't have been over there. You shouldn't have been at her house. So so if your co-worker <laughs> buy you lunch, is that cheating? If your co-worker <laughs> buy you lunch a couple times. Is that you? No, because I don't have, I don't, I wouldn't let them buy me lunch. Where are you finna go? Mm. Let me no, go. No, no, no. We ain't talking to you. you we cash. ain't even talking okay, to you because you wouldn't well, even I, have. I had a work husband or two. Before I, ain't even I, I, before I was a domestic engineer, I had a fucking job, Francis. Okay. Don't you call I me no fucking Francis. Job. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> well, okay. All right. All right. All right, Jacob. So if I have hey, a man, big bear, man, me. don't play with big bear. Listen, if you got a work. If you got a work husband, then that nigga better be prepared to pay the alimony. Facts. <laughs> you know, that's true. That's true. Just that be paying half these bills. Fuck you Shit. mean? If you, you put doing, that title you on anybody on else, camera, I feel like you me. ate his dick at least once. Yeah. It's it's just that simple. Y'all ain't that damn close for him nah. to be your husband. Yep. Y'all only work eight it's hours a, a day. Together, it ain't enough time in the day for y'all to get that close. He take care Not of me. He laughs at my joke. He understand mm -hmm. why I don't like Miss Carolyn. You he better work. You better work. You better work. Exactly. <laughs> you better work. You better work. And I hate Miss Karen too. Co just right along with you. You that I done heard about Miss Karen more work. than he did. You ain't that a flirt. I feel like I know Miss Karen because you talked about her so goddamn much. But you not there. You don't understand what people look at me when I be walking past. Say again. You don't be you don't be understanding. He see when she be looking at me. Exactly. He knows what I go through. I don't give a fuck about none of you that shit. You don't know her on a workplace level. It's exactly. Different. I don't give a fuck about none of that yeah. shit. You ain't supposed to have a he workplace know level. Why I want exactly. to you, did, face. you did a work, be productive, and bring your ass home. Fuck is you getting hey, close to that hey, nigga? I seen a video. I seen a video. I only went to work because they paid me. I seen I a video where a girl job. got into it, one of her co-workers, and she brought her boyfriend up there, and the co-worker whooped her boyfriend. <laughs> oh wow! I was like, nigga, this is where I got the fighting in front of your girl shit from. Like, nigga, if if your girl bring you up to the job to beat a nigga ass and he beat your ass, <laughs> she got to quit. She might hey, as well just hold on, Amron. <laughs> you ain't a, a, now that you here, you answer the question. If yeah. your dude, if you watch your dude get his ass whooped, can he still get respect? And is he getting some sympathy pussy that night? No, no. No respect? No respect. You leaving wow. him? I'm not leaving him, but I'm going to look at him different. I'm going to try nah, to catch him. If you don't respect him no more, you might as well just leave. Yeah. Because then now, 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 now the kids are going to be looking at him funny, too. You're going to keep, you, you gonna keep throwing you, that shit in your face. Yeah, you, yeah. You talking to him recklessly. You, you let that nigga now. whoop your ass. You ain't going to talk to me like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what if, what if, what if, you? now the kids going to be looking at him funny, too, though? Yeah. kids ain't. The kids ain't going to respect them either. Now, say you lose a fight in front of your kids. Like, I think the, thing is the kids going to be walking around the house flinching at that nigga all day. Why like, can't he ain't ain't shit? Up, <laughs> call, call him back. Hey, Flam, which one is worse? Getting beat up in front of your girl or getting beat up in front of your kids? Shit. I think they're kind of both equally <laughs> fucked up. Honestly, the only, the only two choices, correct? Like we just hey, hey, go clean up your room. No, nigga, you go clean up my room. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me call that nigga to whip your ass the other day. <laughs> and make sure you make up my bed, nigga. Or, or getting losing the fight in front hey, of your gonna be mama. Like, losing the fight me. in front of your mama is worse. <laughs> no, no, no. Your, your, your mama, your mama ain't gonna head. look at it the same way. <laughs> Your mom, mom ain't letting that happen. Same way. She gonna look at it and say, it's okay, baby. 
<laughs> you still yeah. my baby. Don't worry about it. She gonna hit not you with my that. mom. Yeah. Not my mom. She gonna be like, so you just gonna let that bitch beat your ass? But you I'll are... fuck you up, you stupid ass bitch. I can't believe you got your ass beat like that. Damn. And then I'm gonna get Damn. my ass beat by my mama. So, so hold on, talking. time out. Yesterday, I listened to y'all talking. Y'all was talking about how you'll swing back on your mama. Now, me personally, I can't <laughs> see my... I'm going to be honest with you. My brother, my cousin, my sister, my wife, somebody I know, the lawyer, the cop. I don't give a fuck who you is. You swing on my mom. You raise your voice a you die. decibel too loud. I'm liable to punch you, you in your face. It ain't it's even just, a conversation. Different. You finna go to the upper room, chief. Facts. Yep. So when I heard y'all like, oh, yeah, my mom swing on me. I'm swinging back. I'm like, hold up. What? Wait, what? Nah. First of I, all, I'm not even. If my mom got upset, I'm walking out the room. Yeah. Speaking of which, your mama's side and your daddy's side getting into a fight. Who you helping? Well, uh, I don't I'm gonna help my mama side because I'm. I ain't even this. know my daddy's side like that. So the motherfuckers will get their ass whooped on. <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> well, you don't know, you know, know, you know, know these side. niggas. This for exactly. the times for not being there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. I'm. I, I like. I love both of my side of my family, so I can't really. I probably try to break it up. Well, look at you growing up in a happy ass wealthy home. Nah, they told yeah. your ass pick a side, <laughs> motherfucker. Pick a side. Can't do, <laughs> can't do that. So, so if you, I'm not so picking if, a side. If your mom's side getting out on your dad's side, you gonna stop it? Or if your dad's side getting out on your mom's side, yeah. you know, which, which way you gonna go? I'm still trying to stop this shit, man. No, they already in the mix. It ain't no stopping it at this point. Okay, for the for the ladies, for the ladies, your daddy tell you to sit down. Your husband tell you to stand up. What you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> Now nah, that's a real question. Your daddy I'm tell you to sit down. Your husband tell you to get up. What you doing? I'm standing up. I'm not doing husband. either one of them things. Ben, get your ass, ass up. Nah, you gonna have to do. You either gonna ben, sit down or stand up. up. It ain't yo. You ain't gonna do neither one. Walk out. I ain't doing none of that. So first, okay. So for me, you know what? Walk out the room. For me, for me personally, you still got your ass I'm up. Gonna do whatever. I was about to say. You know, you'll say. Cause that motherfucker pay all of the bills at my house. So I'm gonna do what the fuck he tell me to do. Cause if my mama, baby, daddy talk to me like that, I'm gonna throat punch that motherfucker. Cause bitch, who you talking to? Dang. He getting two chops to the motherfucking throat. I, I, I fellas, fellas, who sits in the front seat, your mama or your wife? You better put that fat bitch in the back. Sorry, my wife. My wife got to sit up front. I can tell you now, if, if when, my, when my wife, when my mom was alive. If um, my mom was getting in the car, my wife was getting out. She didn't even think about it. She just automatically did it. Fine. Like, even, so, even her dad, I used to tell her dad sitting in front seat, he'd be like, no, you got it. Like, even in my car, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Fact. I feel like they earned that. They yeah. Earned that. Yeah. 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 Wait, I'm sorry. I'm so is your, who in the front seat now, your mama or your wife? Or your wife. My the mom. mom. Not your girl, your wife. Okay. Because there's a difference. Okay. Big difference. A big difference. My girl getting in the back, either way it go. I ain't, it ain't even a discussion. Mm -hmm. But my wife gonna win that win that argument every time because I feel like my mama, my mama, it, it my listen, my wife will get in the back just because. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, my just mama, out of respect. Yeah, like it ain't mama, even an argument. She the type, she like to ride in the back anyway. She yeah. like to be chauffeur, so. And uh, my mom's told me, you know, once you get married, that's that's number one. So she she takes the back seat, you know, just off her. Like I don't have to, you know, that ain't coming from me. That's her saying your wife is your number one right now. So I'm sitting mm -hmm. in the back. The wife takes precedence off the rip. It, yep. It's just that simple. But I feel like out of respect, like that's out of respect, I would still, you know, allow my spouse's mother to be in the front seat of the vehicle. All right, so we eat first at y'all table. I do. Well, well, they, they you as a whole motherfucking family. I will sit the motherfuckers down, put their plates in front of them, and you better not motherfucking eat till I say grace. <laughs> Hold on, did you say sit at a table? I ain't did that in years. Man. We don't actually have a table. We have an island, but yeah, like if we're eating as a family, I do. Until I, I motherfucking say time. grace. Exactly. I, so who plate you fix um, first? If you, I fix yeah. everybody's plate at the same time. 
I you can't fix when seven places at the same time. You got to fix one at a time. I don't have seven people in my motherfucking household. And yes, the fuck you can. Because I take one pot, I take one spoon, and I scoop each thing on a plate individually. And I'm like, hey, then I, I set the forks up, the drinks and the napkins. I set all that shit up. Hey, this one's yours, that one's yours, yada, yada, yada. They know who's is fucking what. Why are you harassing me, Francis? Shit. <laughs> no, you lie. <laughs> And it's the most the most uncomfortable shit ever. I was at my uh ex wifes house once for Thanksgiving, and it was food. Food was ready. All the dudes play the back. Let the ladies get their food first. The oldest woman in there, she had to be like 80, 90 something years old. She was like, "Nah, I don't eat until all the men's eat first. She was that old. She was still on that the men's type shit. And we, and none of us knew what to do. Like, as we supposed to really respect her saying we supposed to eat before her. Like, you no, know, yeah. we try to. Trying to do the right I mean, thing. Nah, I don't yeah. eat too many. When it comes to what an elder is telling you, I respect whatever my elder, depending on which elder it is. Because right. I'm about to say, because you beating elders but, up, so that's a little different. I don't. Yeah. I don't beat up old people. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't never hit an old person, motherfucker. Hey man, huh? CL wild as hell, man. I, I can guarantee. <laughs> see. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if one of your aunts yelled at you, you just gonna headbutt them. You ain't gonna say nothing else. And CL gonna, gonna you, come you, swinging you, right behind nope. them. Nope, because let, let me tell you something. One thing about me and my my three siblings, you what you're not gonna do, you're not gonna disrespect my sister. I don't give a fuck who you is. Disrespect my did sister. Did CL ever let you get beat up? Real fast, huh? Or did you ever let CL get beat up? Or did she ever let you get beat up? No. If I, if I was ever to be into an altercation, the first the very first thing I'm doing, I'm calling my sisters. I don't give a fuck how many of you motherfuckers. It could be one on one. I'm calling my motherfucking. Y'all ever ran on y'all? I'm calling the CL. Get beat up. Anybody? Nope. Uh, there was an altercation between myself and our baby sister, and she. Well, I want to tell you, she smacked the taste out of my mouth. I tried to take that bitch head off with a gallon of tequila, and I fucking missed. And our older sister sat us both down in the living room. And was like, yeah, we not doing none of that. And ever since that day, we've never got into an argument. Or we've got into arguments. We've never got into a physical altercation again. Cause our sisters was like, yeah, we don't, we don't do that shit. How many of y'all is it? But I, I it's four of us. And then okay. my mama husband got kids. So, but okay. of the ones that my mama gave birth to, there's four of us. I have Dang, y'all got a lot of kids in the house. You ain't First of all, <laughs> shut the fuck Oh up. Lord, I know you ain't talking about nobody. <laughs> Go the fuck on 10. He <laughs> probably got 11 up. kids and don't even realize it. Shut the hell up, 10. <laughs> I know you hey, got we RV. Talk, you we got were talking RV about that last him. night. Like, I wonder if I got kids out there that I ain't met yet. Hey, you shit, might. It's a, it's a possibility, goddammit, shit. You but, drive an RV? Nah. Nah, RV. he got a yellow bus. He got a yellow bus. Hey, man, hey. Whatever gets the move. small yellow bus, all them goddamn kids. Sorry. I'm not, though. I'm not sorry. So, wait. So, gentlemen, I have a question. So, you are at a family event, and your significant other's sister fixes you a plate. Is you taking that plate? Hell no. Hell no. Only person that make my plate in, in events is my lady. I'm cool. Unless she, my wife told her to fix that plate. If she had to do something else, yeah, I'll take that plate. But if she fixed me a plate, like, what the fuck? Why are you fixing me? I'm first of all, like, why, why the fuck you fix me a plate? I'm taking care of you. No, I'm good. No, the fuck you ain't. <laughs> nope. I have never. Babe, babe, my, babe. <laughs> me and all of my sisters are in relationships, and I've never fixed a plate for any. And don't bring me shit on a paper plate either. I, nope. Now you've had a cookout? Hell no. Nah. I'm bougie. Uh, shut the fuck up. Okay. Well, you better not bring your ass over here then. <laughs> don't bring me shit eat, on no paper plate. I want y'all fine china. Go in there and get the fine oh. dishes, goddamn. You ain't eating off you my not bring your ass over here. Dollar Tree dishes. <laughs> <laughs> shit. You know but now nah, I feel like I feel dude. like don't nobody make my plate because I don't trust nobody. At least I know if it's coming from her, then it's gonna be all right. I don't trust people. People don't be washing their hands. Yeah. Or they do no. some dumb shit like they take the fork and try to scoop the macaroni and cheese and then they get that little ass put off the end and put it right back in your mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, why would you do that? I'm good. Why would you? I'm gonna fix my own shit or she gonna do it? Cause yeah. the, I trust her. I know her hands is clean. I know she okay. ain't blowing her nose and 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 over food mm. and shit like these people, man. Or like I, she didn't scratch. She didn't scratch her armpit and didn't reach for the dressing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> she didn't scratch her nose and shit. 
Hey, she did grab one of these right here. Yeah, she grab, grab, grab a bit of and shit, and you don't, you don't know because mm-hmm. now nah, I'm cool. Nope. I'm great. Yeah, I'm good. Goodness. But yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. So you know better than to take the plate. So y'all never had like a work wife? Does that not happen for men? Y'all don't have that? If if I call you my work wife, that means we smash. Like you don't get that you don't get that work wife title. Like we not doing I that. Smash we smashing. You can't be work wife and we mm-hmm. ain't smashing. Like right. if you are work wife, you gotta handle the same duties as housewife. God damn it. So yeah. just at work, shit. Yes, but I listen. People be smashing on the job. Don't be acting like y'all don't y'all don't know. People be getting it in on the job. They do. Yeah. I'm not people. <laughs> okay, warehouse, warehouse jobs, they be smashing. Hospitals, All the they time. be smashing. Okay. Okay. Areas, they friend. be smashing. Yeah. I used to be in the military, so. The police. I used to be in the military. Uh, so. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> like, especially in warehouse jobs, man, like, yeah. that motherfuckers be wild with it. They don't be giving no fucks, like. They, they so. go out and they don't even have to go to the parking lot. Them niggas go in the bathroom. Fact. Mm. Shoot, they be on aisle eight <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and everybody know, everybody don't, everybody got a code. We don't tell on nobody because everybody yeah. doing this shit. That's probably what happened with that police officer in the train, in the train situation. Yo, I, I still try to figure out what, what the hell going on. I ain't read up on that yet. Man, that, that shit, shit crazy as hell, man. Like, I think they were saying the husband was setting the wife out to the rest of the police officers. That's crazy. Yeah, and then he, and then the new the latest t- headline that I read earlier was like um husband of wife who slept with most of her the police department co-workers or some dumb shit they said. Um it's, he, he's choosing to stick by his wife and they're not gonna get a divorce and some other dumb shit they said. Yeah, he gonna stick beside her. Wow. I mean at this point might as well. So y'all would y'all would leave her? Fuck yeah. Listen, once you engage, once you engage in situations like that with other niggas, you it's cool. I'm gonna let you have your fun. You're just not gonna be mine no more. That's all. Okay, so I am I am a super firm believer that if you're gonna be out here doing single people shit, you should be fucking Big facts. single. Big don't facts. waste my time and don't play with my emotions. I will fucking kill you in real life. Come on, I ain't got time for it. I understand, but to avoid all of it, just don't touch their stuff. Okay. I understand. That's fine. Oh, that's your cute little baby. I ain't got Thank time you. She none of that. Camera, but she keep being in my arms. So. <laughs> now I got baby fever. <laughs> I <know. laughs> okay. <laughs> just keep on going. No. For real though, do you really want three more children? Was that like a real statement, or you just yeah? I won't. I won't like three more, man. Shit, I'm only 36, man. I got time. You want three more kids? Yeah, yeah. nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Motherfucker, what you trying to do? I just you gotta hey, start listen, a listen. The, the, the good word says be fruitful and multiply. You've multiplied enough. Give somebody else a chance, <laughs> Nick Junior. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Bro, that's a lot of college loans, boy. That lot. That's a lot of college. You know how many books you gotta buy? Did you sign all your kids up for Dolly Parton's Imagination Library where they get free books until they five? No, they got a public library card. They get free books, literally. Free books. Library give out free books too. They got to return them. My kids have an entire bookshelf. That's what's up, man. Shout out to the kids that like reading. They got booked to hold on. Wait, let me let me clarify. I got, a, I, got a, I got a bookshelf of books. That, <laughs> some I like reading Playboy when I was a kid. Too. God damn it. We heard Shit. you. We heard you. <laughs> Does Playboy have words? That's cool. They ain't need words. <laughs> okay. All right. Out of respect. I just need to ask. Out of respect. I didn't know. I ain't never seen one. Now, you know, I just need to ask. They didn't need words. The illustrations was good enough for me. <laughs> they were. They were. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. Hell no. Basically, wow. shit. <laughs> oh, 
Hey man, y'all remember when y'all had Boy, that Tyler cried herself right Y'all remember when y'all had TV back in the day and y'all was watching porn and on the remote it had that last button. That last button was like Cartoon Network or some shit. <laughs> hey, yes. that was my favorite button. Last goddamn it, yeah, shit. Yeah, that's that skinny max. That's skinny max. <laughs> Please don't sit on your sister. Hey, cutie. Hey, be that way. Cute little baby. No, she don't. Thank you. She she attacking the sleeping toddler. Just, <laughs> they don't want you to. I'll be don't back. All righty. We'll see you later. Are you going to be late night? Oh, he didn't answer. And I will be at the late night. Exciting. We have another I'll be here podcast that Jennifer. should be coming in in just a second. It's a husband-wife duo. Meet the Tyler's out of Atlanta. Mm. Very interesting couple. In a good way. They fun. Well, I'm going to go eat and come back. Okay. Oh, that sounds interesting. Right. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. All right, y'all. Yeah, I'll be back on about 10. 10 to midnight? I'll be on the central, bro. Okay. I'm just here. Yeah, I got some other got streaming to do. Or show my jewelry and whatnot. <laughs> Are you ready for a nap too, baby? No? Okay. Yeah. That's your business. That's your business. When they're coming on at 6. Oh, no. What time is it where y'all at? It's 6.55. It's 6.55, so they should be on like any moment. Okay, great. I'm about to Queen Candy, what's your podcast? Oh, uh, it is called, as you can see, the Queen Candy Podcast. Um, I am Muslim, so I teach a little bit of Islam on the show. Um, share personal journey, um, but mostly give our kids and encouragement. Um, play music. Um, the whole point is to encourage, especially Black women. Um, that we are more than what we see here on social media. You can yes. looking at living proof. I've been through hell and but long story short, uh, lost dad, false care, child abuse, domestic violence, mm -hmm. homeless. Make long story short, um, now I'll use all that to uh, uh, no. do my show. So it's on all platforms. You can't hear Huh? Let me see. Let me. Hold on. I, they were muted. You're gonna have to unmute yourselves. There we go. Hey y'all. Hey. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. No, thank you for having us. How's it been going? It's been fun. Honestly, it's felt like being at your grandma's house when you were little, hanging out with a bunch of cousins. It's been yeah. nothing but fun, nothing but positive interactions and networking. Um, it's definitely an interesting experience. Yes, yes. Well, we're happy to be. We're happy to get our little piece of the pie. We, we want to come join the fun. Definitely, definitely. So it's y'all hour. You can do whatever you want. Let me know if you want to keep us in, or did you want to stand by yourself? Whatever you want. No, we can um we can all just vibe off each other and keep Definitely. the party going. I mean, it's a vibe, guys. Hi, mama. It's a vibe. 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 To introduce ourselves, I'm Nelson. I'm Kim, and we all meet the Tyler's podcast. For anybody hey. else who don't know us, we just we're us. We think we bring something good to podcast game, so we came to see what we can talk about. Right, babe? Definitely. Okay. So what do y'all have in store for the new year? What's going on? You said what we have for the new year? Mm -hmm. You know, just prosperity. You know, just you know, just be a better you you can be every day you wake up, you know. Right. We all know everybody ain't perfect. Life happens, you know. It's life, but as long as you push and strive to be a better you and be a better you, better foundation every day. Yeah. Oh, that was good. I love it. 
My plan for the new year <clears throat> is to not get pregnant. <laughs> That's a good and plan. I mean that okay. Because in twenty, I spent the re- the the rest of twenty twenty from July all the way up till March of twenty one pregnant. Then I was good all the way up until December of twenty twenty one. And then somehow I got pregnant. Obviously, it's the milkman's baby. And then I spent almost all of 22 fucking pregnant. What I will not do in 23 is give birth or be pregnant with another fucking baby. Because no man. Uh, uh, four later, I feel you. <laughs> no, I don't want to do this. I was pregnant for like um three, almost three years in a row myself. Girl, the fuck, I can't. <laughs> I and I had two grown ones and started over with two more, so I was. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a senior citizen by now. I got toddlers. That just don't seem right. Kids raising my old ass. Really. Mm-mm. My old people look at me like, girl, if you have another damn baby. I'm like, girl, I'm not going to have another damn baby. <laughs> you, and I salute my wife for that. Uh, she really started over for me because I ain't have nothing before I met my wife. Mm. I wanted kids bad. Being a girl. You know, you know, she was like, you know what? We you okay? Yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> that's a red flag for me. Uh, <laughs> no, because I'm 35 and I don't want to start over at all. Like, I don't want to do it. Like, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm not doing it. So, it's a whole different experience the second time around. Like, hey, let me go there and write it. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, my baby. I, I, I want to believe you, but no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. I'm done. I, I knew, I knew, you know, all the time that I have between my oldest and my middle child, I was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm not going to have no kids. Doobity doop. I am okay with not having more babies. And then back to back. <laughs> my babies are exactly 18 months apart to the day. Oh my oh, gosh. My. What's the funniest thing one of your kids has ever done? Um,. So it was actually recent. It was re- it was a really, really funny thing that the toddler did. We were at my sister's house for the new year, and we were packing up to leave. And she had a case of soda sitting under her little um, side table thing where she had the food at. So the toddler, she crawls under the table, and she takes the soda. Mind you, she has it on her coat, her hat, and everything. She picks up one of the sodas off the box, and she's tapping on it and making this little face like, yeah, I got a soda. Like, as if she was stealing the pop and nobody could see her. So then when we get it home, um, she shakes it up and she tried to open it and fucked around and threw it at the fucking wall. And I mean, this motherfucker exploded everywhere. I was just like, why would you do that? And she thought it was the funniest shit ever. I'm just like, this girl here. Oh my gosh. Listen, so my oldest child, when she was about I guess she was two. Okay, so we go to my mom's church with her one Sunday, right? We're from out mm-hmm. of town. We're not like we're not from where my mom's from. We came from out of town to visit that weekend. So we go to my mom's church with her. And when we get in there, you know, after the ceremony, after the church service and all that, we go. My daughter walks up to the pastor and she's like, I'm gonna you up and she takes her finger and she's like making the killing mark <laughs> oh, goodness. oh yeah she wasn't playing no games with that pastor she was she not playing her with the pastor in my face if I, you ain't never seen no pastor like the day you see my face go pale that day because I didn't know how to respond to it I was like I'd be it, like, I'm sorry, Pastor. We just gonna have to pray extra hard over this. We, we just pray for her. You know? <laughs> then I'm all like, I don't know where she got it from. I sounded so cliche and stupid. I was like, I don't know I where can, she got it from. She has never done this. That'd be me. She's so, never done like this before. I don't know. <laughs> like the maintenance man came to fix some shit at my apartment and the toddler walks out and she, I swear to God, she looked this man dead in his face and was like. 
Oh, fuck. And walked out the room. I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> she was no. dead ass serious. I didn't even know the little girl said the F word. I, I have no idea. I guess he was just here and she was going to get her a snack and she saw him and was like, fuck, these motherfuckers okay. here always fixing something. <laughs> she wasn't having it that day. I'm like, this girl. Oh my God, this girl. That second kid, I've learned that second kid don't get a flying for duty and about nothing. Uh, Last week, she smacked my mama in the face. Oh, no. Homegirl took her hand from Pluto all the way onto my mama's eye, and I was just like, oh, Oh. I'm I'm so sorry. (laughs) I didn't actually see it, but I heard the smack, and I was like, oh, shit. It's worse. This has some fucked up shit. It sounded like it hurt it. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So y'all to keep the going, I'm gonna keep it interesting. Had a whole conversation with you wasn't even one yet, and he literally sat and had a whole conversation with me for a while too. Right. I had to keep up the conversation because I'll be quiet for like two seconds, and it'll be like that, like literally like, screaming at him to get it. his attention. Right. That was one of my fun, funniest moments. Still at tops. <laughs> you know. mess. So y'all are gonna keep the party going and just to get interactive um and also get some of our viewers to participate as well. We're gonna play a game. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh. We were doing like random trivia last night and I felt as if it wasn't diverse enough with DC. I hope you're watching and you hear that. So these Ooh. questions let them know. Got a little bit of color. All right. Mm. Sprinkles on all them. So, oh, who wants to go first? Be fun, yeah. Me. I want to go first. Oh, okay. So this actually ended up being a black history question, but I know you know the answer to this one. No, I don't. You probably do. It better. So the person that invented the stoplight. You know this one. Um, I really, I really don't. Okay, I'll take you to the Wait, we'll come back. <laughs> okay, I I'll really don't know the answer. I feel stupid. So now. finish this line. You know this one, but it was it was Garrett Morgan. Um, I was about to give you like a GM reference. Anywho, y'all remember in the third grade when y'all had to do like stuff for Black History Month? Yeah, I always did like the peanut or the stoplight like repeatedly. I felt I, like I've never was. I've never done anything on a stoplight. Now, if you just said potato chips, I had you. But the stoplight, I don't know nothing about that motherfucker. I ain't never heard that nigga in my life. I'm going to look him up and get on, get my research on in about 30 minutes. Okay, so we'll do this one. It's music. And y'all going to get this one. Yes. We'll start it over. And we'll flip it. We'll flip it. We'll make you a second this time. All right, the Tyler. Y'all got two on one right here. So finish the line of this song. Oh, you got to do the artist, too. Mm. So you better call. Tyrone. Tyrone. <laughs> Eric Badu. Yes, Eric Badu. For the culture, people. For the culture. For the culture. Do I get I like extra points for being white and knowing the answers? <laughs> you don't get you, are so ah, you, do, you do not. You do not get white points. There are no white points. <laughs> Can I come to the barbecue at least or something? <laughs> You don't have to look. I, I assumed you was already coming to the damn barbecue. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I okay. promise not to put no raisins in a potato salad or nothing like that. Okay, so I was actually on Facebook and I saw that this lady was like, Who the fuck started the rumor that white people put raisins in a potato salad? Who started that rumor? Was I want to know too potato? because I grew up yeah, in a white yeah. household and I've never right. seen raisins in potato salad. I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen um, people of lesser melanin. Put raisins and a lot of things that raisins don't really go into. Now raisins that, don't go in nothing but motherfucking cookies. Exactly. <laughs> I've seen it in chicken food and cereal. Right, <laughs> raisin bread cereal. I don't know what the obsession is I with raisins, eat it, but I, that's what they. I think it goes in that. So in Kentucky, y'all weren't y'all weren't putting it in the potato salad camp. No, absolutely oh, not. God. Okay. So just be you gonna get yeah. this one. So name the song and the artist. 
Okay. It's close to midnight and something evil's lurking in the dark. Is that thriller by Michael Jackson? Yes. Okay. I said, you not see the shoulders? I was moving. I, I did. I, li- mm-hmm. I like that little helpful hint there. That was nice. <laughs> All right. So back. I had to look at my husband. That's his favorite artist. So what is they say in the lyrics? I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I yelling. Okay. I don't know this one. <laughs> what male super group originated from California in 1986? <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, um, the one with Mark Wahlberg. What their names mm-hmm. is, Kim? Mm-hmm. They on the block, but aren't they from Boston? Oh shit, they from Boston. My bad, damn wrong city. Mm-hmm. Shit. And I'll give you a hint. Cruising down the street in my six four. N W A. Okay. Okay. I told you y'all were going to get this one. Was we okay. even supposed to answer that? Did we jump on the... I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> baby. You just relax. I feel like this is a trick question. What year did the song 99 Problems debut? That 2004? Good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Now I got ninety nine problems. No, you want to do another one? Want to do another guess? Uh, two thousand one. No, it was two thousand three. I'm gonna give you half Damn. a point. Damn, I was almost there. I know. I think okay. it was honestly the end of the year for two thousand three. So I think that's why you said. I'm that. pretty sure it was. Was that not? That wasn't on the Blueprint album. I don't think. <laughs> Where the fuck is Annie at when you need her? Annie, get your ass back in here. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right, you should have the music ones. Okay, so finish the line. Give the song title and the artist. I was born by the river. Uh, uh, river. She's not talking to me, y'all. Yeah. River. 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 Not the river. I don't know the answer. Mm-hmm. Me they, not off the top of my head, I but I know, know that. the song. Yeah, I do. I definitely know the song, but I don't think I've ever known the artist because I've never not. actually paid attention to that part. I know the name. So again, is on Annabelle, song. where your ass at? Yeah, mm-hmm. She know I'm talking to her. I don't know where the river is. I don't, I don't know a lot of it. Okay. It was Sam Cook. It was Sam oh, Cook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You was a son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so here is the question. So we're back to just be in the TV show. Job. He didn't have a job. Nobody ever knew what the fuck Tommy did. That nigga didn't have a job. Boys and girls club. No, the fuck he didn't. <laughs> All right, so back to the Tyler's. This TV show includes African Americans to attend college. A different world. Yes, yes. Yay. Yes, Kim. Yes. That's a great show. It's a great show. So also I was like that more for the college show. Sorry, but we didn't know who was in a real college. Real fact, I really wanted to attend Hillman. Like, I was going to school in Virginia and everything. I had a plan. Turned out it wasn't a real school. They be building up the best fictional shit. And they'd be like, wait a minute, I can't go there. I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. That's crazy. Right? How they gonna do that? Like, How they just gonna do me like that? That made that college look so. We wanted to go so bad to that college. I went to okay, the HBCU. They made college look good. Okay, so in the TV show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Just B, what character originally played by a dark skinned woman was later played by a light skinned woman? Oh, Vivian. Because that was some bullshit. That was. They switched her out. And it's funny because they had an episode. Remember, I forgot what episode when they looked at Enviv and looked at the screen kind of crazy. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they even somebody <laughs> in the episode said something like, "There's something different about you." Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. And they just looked at the screen, all confused and shit. That shit was funny. Okay, so this one, I'm not sure if you'll know what it is, but once you, I think you'll know what it is. So, what was the first black show on Disney Channel? Mm-hmm. That's so Raven. Good Kenan and Kale. Kenan and Kale. On on that Disney Channel? Was it was Smart Guy. That was Disney Channel. That was first, Nickelodeon. It, Mama it has to be Smart Guy with Taj Mowry, Essence Atkins, and those other people. Smart guy. Yeah, Smart Guy. I oh, that's wrong, that. too. Oh, you were wrong, but I want to Google this because this is saying what the problem. The but I didn't no, realize it wasn't. the Proud Family came out before that, so Raven. The Proud Family did come out before that, so Raven, but the Proud Family wasn't the black, the first black show on Disney Channel. It was Smart Guy. But didn't Smart Guy used to come on something else? Hold on, wait. We're about to Google this shit right now. Google, yeah, that was Nickelodeon. Smart Guy. Oh. Nick at Night, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> This is a free one. Whoever answers first can have it. Who created? Hit the quad. Hit the quad. Oh. I lied. Smart guy was on WB, so it could have been. It could have been a crown family. All right. So think about. But it. I remember actively watching it. Hit the quad was. Uh, Wait, y'all jumping on the phone? I, I googled it to see what network Smart Guy was originally on, and it was originally on the WB. Okay. Right, I, it was. Yeah. So we got a new question, and this is a free for all. Whoever answers first, who created Hit the Quan? Well, it wasn't Rich Homie Quan. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I was about to say that too. Which it, was, it was not I almost said Soldier Boy. I don't know. Boy, he made all the other dances. Did he Hit make the, the coins? I don't I don't know what them kids' oh. names is, unfortunately. I think actually and this it was Boy. I don't know. It's I love Memphis, but on here it says the answer is Rich Homie Quan. Oh that's not, that's not even his fucking song. Oh well you did get it right then. Yeah. It's, that's I'm not true that. because <laughs> Rich Homie Quan, that's it's a dance. It's not about him. The the song itself is about the dance. It's not it's not yeah. even, he's not even on the fucking song. I agree. I will give you that point. Well, I think it's right. So when did the cabbage patch dance come out? Oh, about 90, 85. No, nah, it's like 93. 1987, I had to remember with how it went. I'm not a dancer. You got it something like that. Kind of like something. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> we going viral by accident for 1983. I'm going to be honest with you. This is saying 1980. I'm not trusting these answers. It's saying when? 1980. 80? Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. Well, the cabbage patch came out of babies. Oh, well. Does the cabbage patch have anything to do with cabbage patch dolls? I at all. Seriously. I'm going to be honest with you. The term cabbage patch is derogatory in my city for like crackheads. So I don't know if that's related to it or not. I don't know. <laughs> I ain't never in my entire 33 years of life called a crackhead a cabbage patch. Yeah. Ooh, cabbage patch. I swear to God, I'm about to go to a bad neighborhood and be like, shut the fuck up, you cabbage probably, patch ass bitch. They probably got lost <laughs> in the cabbage patch. Shit. I'm about Somewhere. to use that. Yeah. I get the movement. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Smart. Where I'm from. You better not call me that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no cabbage patch. Your mama one. Oh, <laughs> and look, and look, and somebody from Georgia, we, you know, we got the Cabbage Patch land. Like, there's a whole museum, Cabbage Patch Museum. Yeah. In so, like, <laughs> the baby, the actual Cabbage Patch where you can go pick your own doll and name it and all that. That's a like, real ass place, and people don't know that. 
Yes, we have that in Georgia. So look, can you imagine me showing up in your town and I'm all like, I'm thinking that I'm calling you pretty. I'm like, you look like a cabbage patch. They'll be so mad at me. Not even, that would be so. That would probably not even that knowing that I'm, I think it's some whole different. See, only I could get into something like that. Yeah, you would no, get cut. Mm, they gonna cuss me no, out Yeah, nah. <laughs> and then I have to explain. She don't know. She not from here. Right? Like, no, I don't even know. She I don't know. That know. That's what y'all call She's from Georgia. You have to look over her. Why would you call the crackhead a cabbage patch? Like, why would no, you call them that? That's what they was called. That's the cabbage patch. You say it like that. Oh no! You're you a know cabbage that cabbage patch. You know cabbage patch over here on Seventh Street. You know everybody in my You no longer mine. Yep. So not, I guess it's I think it's better than calling somebody, you know, a bad name related to, you know, the addiction. I don't think I would want to be called that, but I mean So what do y'all call meth heads in your area? Meth heads. You call it I'm is sorry. what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. You call it like you see it, you know. I call it twenty four seven where I'm from. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So this one, I feel like everyone's going to get it. Where did the dance? When did it go? Atlanta, Kathy, originally. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Deep for real. That's yeah. Deep for well and then Franchise Boys. And Franchise Boys, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I'm Yay, okay. Go Atlanta, go. <laughs> everyone did. Everyone won. I'm going to make DC give y'all some codes. He don't know it yet. Don't tell him. Um, <laughs> so I want to ask y'all since we're all in podcasting, what are your podcasting icks? I'm not a podcaster, I'm literally just a fucking guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that because you will be before it's over with. Trust me, I'm just that's a how guest. I started too as a guest, and they pretty much made me do the show. <laughs> they came so in, you know. Like, you don't ever go on people's show and be like, ooh, this is horrible. Yes. So I feel like if your voice is too high pitched, I don't like high pitched voices. That makes me mad because why the fuck do you sound like a toddler and you're a grown up? I want to punch your face. <laughs> right. okay. um, if your podcast has like too much, too much dead time, like I feel like 30 seconds is a long time for you not to talk. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that seems like a long period of time to me, especially for yeah. a podcast. Why the fuck are you taking so long to read a question? Right. Or people who can't read good. Like, why, you don't, you didn't learn to I read good. I understand that because you gotta, like, even if you're doing research on something, you gotta know, sound you like you know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. If you sound you like know. you know what you're talking about, then you won't have that dead space. Right. Or like when they always have background music that don't match what the fuck they talking about. Like, why the fuck are you playing twerking music and we over here talking about mental health? That's fucking with my mental health. I can yeah. see that. I, an ick for me on shows is when people are taking slick shots at other shows. Mm -hmm. mm, that that's a me, good one. Like, I just don't. It, it's hard for me to vibe with those people after they take those type of slick shots. Like I'm here to encourage everybody. I feel like we all got our own shows right. that we can make, and people will listen, and we'll all make money at it. It don't have to be a competition right. just because we podcast. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a big ick, is that competition factor that they just feel like they're the best. It's cocky, arrogance, you know, and then you go on their show and it's half boot. Like, you feel like you're going to fall asleep and you're like, so you're that fucking cocky and you your show, mm -hmm. your content is crap. Like, you got right. me messed up. Mm -mm. I'm not kissing ass just because you a certain person or you feel like you bigger than you are you know you, so you got to make your guests or your the other shows feel less than see i'm not with that okay that's some bullshit i'm gonna be honest with you i don't like unnecessary beef like when people have topics that are just like you you know you don't really feel this way you're just saying this to try to start some type of controversy mm. like on the other day and I'm not going to mention who this person is because I'm not going to name them on my platform. Like, it irks me. But the topic was are women, like, pretty much 
do women value their jobs more than their relationships? And his argument was, look, she go to work in work clothes, but she be in the house in house clothes. And I didn't understand it. Like, you know how you're waiting for like, okay. And then what? Yeah. Like, okay, okay, that's actually a really good question. So let's discuss that in depth real quick. What the fuck is the difference between my work clothes and my... Okay, so I was in the medical field for a long period of time. I wear scrubs. I have a container full of fucking scrubs. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to come home from my job with... She'll be back. I guess she's not going to come from her job. I'm from my okay. job. I... I I'm not going to come home from my job where I'm wearing this one fucking outfit all day for, let's say, eight, 10 to 12 hours. And then I got to cook for my kids, clean my house up, get myself together for my next birthday, check my kids' homework, and do a menagerie of other things, and including wash my fucking work clothes. I have house clothes so that I can be comfortable. And that's not to say that my work clothes aren't comfortable. But if I'm at work, I'm wiping stuff on my clothes sometimes. You know, hell, in the middle field, I've had people literally throw up in my lap and piss down my leg and shit on my pants right to the point where I've had to completely change my fucking scrubs. So I'm not going to bring that into my house. There was a point in time, especially during the very beginning of the pandemic where I would stand at my front door in the middle of fucking winter and take my scrubs completely off and fold them up and sit them off to the side until I was ready to go throw them in the washer. So I would come home, take my clothes off outside go upstairs, take a shower, and then put my stuff in the washer. So there is a clear difference between work clothes and house clothes, but that doesn't mean that I value my job more than I value my home life. And that's a stupid ass comparison. And to that person, I hope you are listening. I hope you get poked in the eye with a dirty fingernail and you get a, a sty on both your eyes and it drains for 10 days straight and you can't fucking see, you asshole. I agree. I understand that because I, I work with metal. In my job, like that's like me, okay, coming home, getting off of work, smelling like all this metal and welding and shit, getting next to my wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Right. And then who who necessarily wants to smell your work smell? Because sometimes your work right. smell ain't a good smell. I've been sweating. Right. right. But my whole point is, okay, so what is he trying to say? <laughs> She don't look good in her house clothes. That she looks good for work, but then she comes home and don't care about herself. Is that what he? That's, that's what he was trying to say, but it still didn't make sense. Because yeah, it don't make is, sense because at, first of all, if she was at work all day, what's she gonna do? Come home and do two hours on her makeup and hair just to start to go and slave and over the stove and serve him some dinner, like. Yeah. That's what they're explaining. Yeah, we, not, we not doing none of that. That's not like some bullshit, sir. That's your whole like bullshit. <laughs> and shit, sometimes, you know, depending on what kind of the field you work in, sometimes you go to you already go to work with dirty ass things on your clothes and fucking work. Right. Like, I don't see anything wrong with coming home and putting on your house clothes. Like, you got your t shirt, your leggings, your little fluffy socks, your little slides, or you might have your little big you know, big t-shirt, like your favorite raggedy t-shirt that you put on yeah, with really, your PJs. Honestly, as a man, like, I would kind of want my wife to change and get comfortable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm the same yeah, person. He was, he was trying to say you know? the, the modern woman um, pretty much were not putting in the effort for the husband. So, like, let's say before you go to work, you might, you know, put on some mascara and some lipstick before you leave the house. So when you come home and you're like just yourself, you're not putting the same effort into your husband. <laughs> then they were trying to say, like, if your job call you, you show sure will go in for that overtime to help my household. Why wouldn't I? Yes, because, bitch, I'm being paid. I don't get paid to cook your stupid ass dinner. And then <laughs> here's another motherfucking point. Sir, who the fuck got to come home? You want me to put on the full face of makeup mm-hmm. to cook you dinner? But the thing is, guys who have those unrealistic ass expectations, you can't even meet those requirements for your wife. Because unless you exactly. go, Are unless you, you get off your fucking and job and you go and get a fucking lineup every fucking properly. day, boy, fuck you and your unrealistic ass expectations. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. What were you saying? No, I'm sorry. That's I didn't mean right, to interrupt. I feel but... you like that's one thing with me. I wouldn't ask my wife to do something that I wouldn't do for my. 
that I wouldn't be comfortable, be comfortable doing. doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really yeah. wouldn't, you know? It, it's why. different like this. That don't, that's all I was saying was, so, okay, are you going to match that energy? Are you going right. to go work that's your full day? And then are yeah. you going to come home <laughs> and you're going to go to the gym so that you're all and shit, to be tight honest, for me? As a and, fucking man, mm-hmm. if my wife don't feel like it as a man, like, it goes the back to A, B, and C. We are stronger than women naturally. We're the man. So really, we're supposed to be willing to do more, to be real. Like, I mean, come on now. Like, I wouldn't expect my wife to get off of work and then cook this and then do this and then do that. But as a man, if my wife want me to cook her a fucking meal when I get off of work, I goddamn will. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. Like, I'm sorry. I ain't mean I'm getting <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you say what you want, you grown. You feel <laughs> like y'all get where I'm going with this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Live up to what you live up to what your expectations are. And make sure yeah. you have somebody who's gonna live up to those same expectations if that is what you require as a person. Exactly. I don't care whether you male or female, I don't give a fuck what your job title is. If you have mm-hmm. these expectations, then I'm gonna need you to live up to them and not just hold me to a certain standard and you ain't gotta do nothing. Yeah, and right. we're both gonna be robots, finely oiled robots. Um just yeah. charging each other's plug every now and then and everything else is just going to flow like it's not even no if if a, a person can't even okay as single women we have to do it like that like we have to go to work come home cook clean wash clothes do homework make sure everything like we have to do it like that but same, when you the same thing can be said for a single father Exactly. The same thing is if a single father has custody of the children, they have to do it too. They got to get up, make sure the kids are good, get to work, make sure the house, you know, if you're single, you're expected to have to do everything. But if you have a husband or a wife, that's what being married is about. Like his job might be more physically demanding than mine. So when I come home, I might be willing to cook and clean and, and make sure everything's good if he makes sure the kids his homework is done and if he makes sure the laundry gets put up or you know what I'm saying, like a compromise with each other to make sure it all gets done if we're both going to work and both coming home. But for him to to go to work, for me to go to work and then come home and I got to look like I'm headed to America's Next Top Model while I serve <laughs> him his dinner and rub yeah, his feet and clip his toenails and wash his ass for him. Hell no. No, we not, not a baby. baby. No. And I will say this. It is a single man that has these expectations, which I, you know, I, who would have thought? Um, imagine that. <laughs> It's Imagine just him being at home, being single, and lonely as fuck, eating TV dinners. Mm-hmm. Right. Nanny. Seeing and other people. Bad that mind. he said it out loud that he's at home watching TV dinners, single, okay. and lonely and miserable. Boy, if you don't get you a good bottle of lotion and shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. You better look at her and her PJs and he's her little fluffy shoes and think bitch. she's the cutest thing walking in that house. That's what you better learn to do. Mm -hmm. but that's I do want to say this even if the situation was when you know when he comes home Kim if you want to you know if Nelson comes home you want to dress up and put on something frilly for your man you know what I'm going to be honest with you that's none of my damn business that's going on between your house and that's what y'all need to do for y'all but that's something that you want to do for him it shouldn't Mm -hmm. be a requirement requirement. Mm -hmm. right Unless when I come home, you got on, you know, full lingerie, frying chicken in the kitchen. That just don't make sense. Because why the fuck am I frying chicken in this silk ass outfit? I'm gonna fuck around and burn my goddamn nipple. (laughs) You're gonna burn your nipple, you're gonna ruin the material. (laughs) You're gonna have green stains on something. You're gonna have green stains and little holes because the shit is now I got a three dollars. Now you're gonna look like a fucking silky nipple. Mm hmm. But that's the thing I also want to add. When you have kids, certain things are like inappropriate. Like, yeah. why mommy lay stuff in the kitchen? Exactly. Like, like it doesn't make sense. There'd be people with these super 
unrealistic. Oh, well, this is how it was with my grandparents or my great grandparents did it a certain way. And I'm not your motherfucking great grandma. I don't give a fuck what that dead bitch did. I don't give a flying Fladudian. <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm going to do. When I get home from work, if I choose to cook, I cook. If I choose to order out, I choose to order out. Why? Because sometimes I might be just as tired as your raggedy, funky ass. Mm-hmm. If I choose to get right in the fucking shower and take my ass to bed, that is, again, my fucking choice. Because I might have to get up and go to work the next day. Somebody got to get up and get these goddamn kids ready. And sometimes your lazy ass ain't going to get up in time. So I got to make sure that I, when my 5.30 alarm go off, I get up and get all these motherfucking kids together. Mm-hmm. And that's real because how do we how do we go... I mean, it it all comes down to the role, the gender roles and a conversation that a a single man is going to have to have with somebody that's going to reject it because that's not whatever his that them expectations in today's society. It just doesn't every day like. Oh, Kim, I'm sorry. I got to ask you something because you said something that kind of. It rubbed me a wrong way. I don't like the term gender roles, but I agree what Nelson said. Mm. In in your relationship, Mm. he will do what he needs to do for his marriage, if that makes sense. No, that's what I'm saying. I wasn't saying it as if we have gender roles in marriage. I'm saying society has placed gender roles on us to the point where they feel like he's a simp if he comes home from work and takes the trash out. Or they feel like he's a... he like. I'm a, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm not all woman if I'm working more than I'm at home or that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. I'm not saying we need to have gender roles. Okay, good. Have you guys ever seen like one of the pamphlets of what the, what they specified as gender roles from like, let's call it the 1950s. Have you ever seen one of those pamphlets? Do you see the list of requirements that bitch had? It was, I I saw one a while back. I used to take care of this one lady and she was actually one of the uh, models for a gender role poster thing that they had done at that time. And like, it was like rule 13 or some shit. It was like, um, when when your husband comes home, always be smiling, always have on his favorite perfume, always have um, his dinner ready, his cognac poured, his cigar must be (laughs) pre-lit. It was like a list of shit that needed to be done and all he had to do was quite literally come in the house take his shoes off put his suitcase down take off his work jacket she was required to hang it up because that was another thing that she was supposed to do and for him to be able to flip on whatever tv show or sports show he wanted to watch pick up his cigar and his cognac and sit there while she basically served him and these children like it to me it felt like slavery in, in a relationship why the fuck do you feel like I have to do everything. Why do you need to be pacified, calling them babies? That's the thing that confuses me too, because culturally that's not that's not really accurate as well. Because a I lot of times, especially husband. in the 1950s, a lot of African American women were working in the service industry. So mm, no yeah. granny was at Miss Pauline house from eight to three cooking and cleaning and washing their draws, then come home and making sure grandpa was taken care of. That's not exactly. fair. Exactly. So she was essentially taking care of two full households and only being paid to take care of one household, and she was getting paid shitty anyways. Mm-hmm. That's not fair. So it kind of it's it's another ick of mine, especially when these men are on these platforms referring to masculine men, um, alpha males. Ooh, that burns me up. I'm telling you, I'll that's a block quick. You tell me you into that? Mm-mm. Don't talk to me ever again. You know, because I'm not here for it. That's some. I'm not here for it. And then what you're expecting me to be is not a real person. Like that's not going to be me. I would rather it be in a situation. And I like how honest you guys are about your marriage. Y'all help each other. It's a mutual thing. It's not I do this and he does this. It's we work together as it should be. Mm -hmm. That isn't not what goals are supposed to be. Yeah, and that's um. Okay, because I did actually grow up in a culture where the woman was the woman. She knew her role. She knew what had to be done. Um, The gender roles were very clear in my environment growing up. Now, with that being said, I didn't always quite fit in the box because I'm kind of I'm strong minded and I'm very strong willed. And so Mm -hmm. I can't we. me and my husband have to balance each other. He can't be so strong that 
we're fighting all the time because I'm strong, he's strong. Now we fighting. And just because he's the man or just because I'm the woman, it has to go a certain way. Mm-hmm. No, we like he said, like we literally we approached today, we're like, okay, what needs to be done? Okay, we need to pay this for the kids, we need to pay this for the lights, we need to do this, we need to do that. We gotta go to work, we gotta pick up, we gotta do this, we gotta make it on this event, we gotta do like and we map it out and I'm like, Okay, well, I need you to go to the dollar store while I go in here and get the bed stuff ready to make the bed. Like and, and then by the time you get back, well, like we literally have to map out minute by minute what has to be done, and it takes both of us to get it done. So it would be completely fair if all he had to do was come home and sit here. He'd probably be that single guy you're talking about that would be talking about what he wants from somebody because there's no way I could feel that perfect void in his life right. where I can do everything. everything in me can't let somebody do everything for me. I've never been that type of person. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just nah. So it's kind of like basically you taking care of a child. Like come in like which that, I mean if you drink, think about the roles fucking, back what then what you want me to rub your feet and like that's like, kind of what it was. Like, I don't mind rubbing though. my wife's feet and all that, but it's like the hell like you a baby like basically like you taking care of baby like you said you know it's almost like it's really weird in a way because in that situation you're right it's like a child so you want me to treat you like a child and then sleep with you right which is twisted right that's twisted in itself like you want me, you want me to be your mommy right. and then have sex with you? Because I ain't even gonna lie, I be sometimes when my wife will tend to make my plate for me, and sometimes like I have to catch myself, you know, because I know my wife is just looking out for me. I'm a husband, you know. I'll be like, babe, I got it. Like you know, she's like, babe, I'm literally cooking dinner. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like I just oh did my it fault. Right like here. you know what I'm saying? Like you got it, you know. I'll be having to catch myself. But he do do that. He'll be like, I'm not a baby. You don't have to make my plate for me. And I'm like, well, I'm just doing it because I'm in there and getting it done. Like, it's just second nature because I have four kids. So it's just nature for me to kind of dish out everybody's stuff, you know? I'll be having to catch myself because I'm the type I'd rather. But also, I feel like sometimes if you just get it done, it makes it easier. I'm sorry. What was that? Just I, said, I feel like sometimes uh, when you just when you do cook dinner and you know whether he comes in and tries to intervene or not. Sometimes I feel like if I'm already cooking dinner and you know you're coming in the kitchen to try to cook, so to speak, I feel like if I just get it done by myself, I feel like it's, it's easier that way for me. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. But also, I I love how you don't want to fully be taken care of. You would rather be a partner. To your wife, I truly respect that, Nelson. I wish Definitely. they were. You said would go out and speak on these platforms to some of these other men, because that's that's wild to me. Oh, yeah, so here's you just try to save the energy so she can be great as a individual herself. Like you, she can't spend all the energy taking care of you and the kids, and now she ain't got no energy for for some me time or her time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like she don't spend all her energy taking care of me. Taking care of kids, cooking dinner, doing this, doing this, lighting my cigar, pour my drink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when and she don't, gonna have time for her? You know what I mean? And listen, I ain't even gonna lie to you. We did go through a, we went through a trial period like that where I tried to be like a stay at home mom that was a very attentive, always, a, you know, I'm on everything, all on point. The, I mean, I was killing the game, but. It came to a point where I had to be like, babe, I just ain't happy like this. Like, I need to be, I need to create. Like, that's what I do. So, I have to go back to work. Like, (laughs) it's eating me up just sitting and not doing no work. Like, I don't want to be completely taken care of either, especially when I've taken care of myself for so long by myself. Even my kids before I had kids with him, I had kids by myself. So, like, it's been a process for me to even get to me where we are like right now. Like I hear you on that, Kim, but I'm going to be honest with you. If I could relax for a moment, like take a breather, <laughs> I would, I could excel for 
exhale for just a second. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. Would you rather in a situation it be A, 50-50, B, 80-20, or C, 100-0? I'm so... Who you want to answer? <laughs> Y'all can have separate <laughs> answers. Y'all don't have to have the same answer. I mean, I mean it's different. Yeah, that's something y'all might talk about, but <laughs> it don't matter to me. Like what whatever is comfortable at the moment. Let's say, okay, for example, if she's the breadwinner and I'm not employed, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do everything I can to mm -hmm. contribute. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you know. Same thing with her. Like she contributes what she can, like I told her. Build on yourself. Do what you like. You have not, I mean, world foundation, but everybody need a little me time, especially as a woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Woman need their me time. So I tell her, like, look, build the brand. I'm working. I have good enough job to take care of us. So do you. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind taking That's care so of the foundation. You know what I'm saying? This is my wife, the mother of my kids, God sakes, and my wife, you know what I'm saying, my partner in life. So it don't matter. Any, even if she was to come up to me like, okay, babe, I got the light bill and you got the rest. Okay. You come you comfortable with that? Yeah, I right. cool. You know? Yeah, right now it's kind of like 80-20. Right. Okay. You know, um, he he pays the majority of everything but i just keep enough money um building the brand like i said you know investing in ourselves and stuff has been a lot with my money but it's like uh i make enough to where okay say his budget is so tight because of all the everything and so i cover the wi-fi i cover the washing the clothes i cover the household products the um, entertainment, you know, all the extras. I come in and cover the extras. And then he covers the foundation stuff and I cover the extras as of right now. But we've had 100, we've had 100, 100. We've had 50, 50. We've had, you know what I'm saying? But right now where we're at. Right. Like I said, whatever works for her. You know what I'm saying? Because Regardless, I'm going to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And just like she said, before me, she was making it happen. Before I was like, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yes, you're my wife. So, regardless, I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. In a perfect world, I would love to be swept away and being taken care of. Like that would be wonderful because I've worked too darn hard for a, a long, long time. But I know I wouldn't be happy fully being taken care of. Like you said, Kim, like I'd feel like, what am I doing? Like my daughter's nine. She go to school and what am I doing? Right. And it gets to the point. It's like, OK. Am I only existing for y'all? Yeah, because that's where it, that's the point it comes to, like. It's like I literally have no life outside of you. And then then the, it, according to what mindset you have, the mind might step in and say, that's not just that's control. That's not just him taking care of you. Like you literally have to ask him. You got to ask him for something to eat. You got to ask him for something to drink. You got to ask him. Can he go to the store? You got to ask him like that's a lot. That's a lot. Like I told her, she don't have to ask me for shit. Give me this, like she don't have to ask me for nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I told her, we had it was kind of a big thing when she felt like that. Cause I was like, okay, what you want to do? You can what you do what you feel like doing. Like, what you need me to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I, I just basically just want to not feel like I'm just here just for. You know what I'm saying? And so that leads us to where we're at. That's just yeah. 
So I was like, Meet okay. the Tyler's is my baby. Basically, That's what I've been spending my, my energy right. on. <laughs> Basically, my main thing, especially with our marriage, is do what makes you feel comfortable. Okay, if you feel like you being taken care of like a baby, okay, then I'll do something about that. We'll work it out. What you want to do? You know what I'm saying? If you that it's marriage, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I'm not a whole Superman or nothing. It took a while to get to this point. You know what I'm saying? To basically learn myself as a man. You know what I'm saying? It took a while. It did. You know, it did. Especially dealing with this one. It took. (laughs) Oh, I'm a whole handful because I fully like, okay, I'm, I'm an older woman. I'm not a 20 year old woman. I'm 47. So coming into this, I was 40 years old. He was only like 32, 33, you know? And so we had a lot of, we had to talk a lot through our beginning stages of marriage, like (laughs) going into it before the marriage, we had a lot of time. I went almost a year and wouldn't even go on a date with him. I'm, we courted, I went back to where I was like, okay, you got to actually show me something this time around. Like, I'm not going, I'm, we not doing no, I'm not here for no, I'm not here for just a fun time. I'm here for a long time. So I don't have those fly by night situations in my life. So, because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I think maybe just in the age difference, I ain't grow up with Corden. It was one of those, he, you know, sent me a message. He poked me on Facebook and then, you know, slid in the DMs. So I didn't have that. So what what do you mean exactly by courting? Like, I really don't understand. Like he had to. Sp- OK, like. I'm not going to say that he had to spend a lot of time. Convincing me, but he had to spend time with me. He couldn't just text me and be like. Good morning, beautiful. How you doing? And that basically, made me happy. Cause... Basically, like have a text day. You know how most people text each other, don't even speak. You know, just mm-hmm. text each other all day. Like I met her out, like, and still to this day, honestly, I'm a texting dude. I'll text you before I'll call you. You know what I'm saying? But I'll talk to my wife. You know what I'm saying? But I text. You know, and she was like, "No, I need a little mm-hmm. more." Than this. I have like, returned. You know, I need to hear to your voice. You're going to have to talk <laughs> you know, to me. Like, because right. words, words are just words. He can say a sentence and it might mean four different things. And me being an overthinker, I'm going to think of all four of those things and what he actually meant. And I might make up a whole scenario before I even get a chance to ask him in a text about something else. Like, mm-hmm. I need to hear what you want from me, what you need from me, what you. So I, we, we set up a, you know, we talked for months. We FaceTime for months. Um, we, we, he had to show his intentions before he even got the box. Basically like he had to let me, I, I had to be his woman before we had sex is what I'm saying. Like he didn't just get sex because he caught me his boot. Like, Mm-hmm. It didn't work like that. It was more of like, I need to know that your intentions are that you're with me for something other than just sexual glorification. You're with me for more than just a short time. Like, I need to know that you're in this for the long haul before I give you my body because I've been celibate almost two years with before you started trying to date me. So if I'm going to break my celibacy to be with you, then you're going to have to prove you're worth it because I don't want to just give it up to some dude that's going to be a scrub or that's going to be a serial cheater or a baby daddy or right. like. And it came to a point where I almost got, I was almost like, fuck it. Cause it's like, okay, so now you think I'm just, it's been about five, six months now. Like, come on now. So you just really yeah. think I'm, I wouldn't be here for this long if I was like that. You know what I'm saying? They don't, we had a couple arguments, fucking yeah, hung up on each other like, and all that. Yeah, because like, he'd be know? like, well, 
your standards that you ain't nobody gonna ever be able to make you happy. I was like, I don't believe that. I, Cause I know I'm not asking nothing that I don't give. So if, 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 I mean, I don't feel like I have to be less than to make you happy. If, if, mm-hmm. if we're just not compatible because you're not on the same level in life that I'm on, then we need to face that part of it but you can't tell me i gotta be my standards have to be right. less than because that's kim right. don't work like that right. that's like, what I'm back. Like, my, that. <laughs> my fault <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> montel thank you for joining us now i want to ask you in a relationship and now i'm you scared think- with you am because you know earlier today you you was throwing all kinds of heaters at people we were just kind of sitting there like <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what, what what she gonna throw at us now? <laughs> I just want to know. So, in the situation, in a perfect relationship, in a situation, how do you feel? Is it a 50 50 financially, b 80 20, or c 100 0? Honestly, it's to me, it's more of 80 20. Okay, okay. And the reason why I say that is because when you come into a relationship, you all when you're starting in a relationship, you're starting to invest into a union. You're starting to invest your time, your energy, your emotions. Perhaps you are now opening yourself up more to your fears and what makes you who you are. And you're doing it to somebody who is just getting to know you. So it's a double standard. So if you're getting to this point, then there's a high level of trust. And there's a lot of communication. So if we get together and I have my own and you have yours, wonderful. We will sit down and we're going to build a life. As we build, people certain we're going to have certain responsibilities. But I feel like as the as the 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 man in the relationship, it is my responsibility to take care of my family. If she contributes, that's a bonus. It's not required, but if she re- she contributes to it, beautiful. That means we are we are 150 out of 100, okay? Mm-hmm. If it's 50-50, then that means somewhere along the line, somebody is not willing to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Submissive, because submission comes on both sides. Mm-hmm. Okay. He has to be submissive to her because... He is in a position now that he holds her her emotions in the palm of his hand and he has he has to be nurturing and caring. Same thing with her. So if I can't trust you with how I feel, how do I expect you to trust me? And it's not just financial, it's emotional, it's mental. Because and here come mental. Speaking of mental, what's going on? <laughs> not, what? You're you're highly emotionally and mentally inclined. That's what I'm saying. Um, oh, okay. Like me, I was always raised to because I was raised by a single parent. My mom, my mother is my hero. I love that woman to death. Everything about her, I try to emulate. Have I screwed up? Oh yeah, I made a lot of mistakes to get to 54 years old starting tomorrow. But one of the things I've always learned from my mother is that if there's someone that you care about, you do for them. You don't expect, you don't require them to do for you. It's not a requirement. If they want to do for you, that's because you put them in a position where now they trust you inherently. So they're willing to give and give. It's like, if you're willing to give, just, just like in a relationship, if you're willing to take, guess what? Expect for them to take from you. And there's very little give. So when you talked about courting, I thought that was hilarious because I was talking to some young cats around my way. They're like, what's the difference between dating and courting? I said, dating, you're getting to know various people. You're seeing what's out there for you. You are finding your options. Okay. You find that one. You click. There's a connection. And she feels the same way about you. So now you guys want to spend more time together. You want to sit down, have longer conversations. And it's not just, it's not physical. Because the physicality will come. You know, if there's intimacy, it will come. And in courting, that is the only one you want to be with. That is who you want you decide you want to build your life with, or at least be in it for the long haul. Is it successful most of the time? Not always, because people are different. Cool. Okay. I'm twice divorced. I dated, I courted, I married. It didn't work out. 
we divorce. I'm I'm okay with my first ex-wife. My second one, mm, not so much. Yes, it's all right though. That's why I have this luxurious <laughs> white beard because I lost all my damn hair. So just saying. <laughs> I used to be handsome once. Oh, you still are. But You're biased. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, especially with courting, like people just, I, I don't know anyone who goes through that. Like, I don't know anybody that courts technically because or they'll consider courting like a weak texting phase. Because like, it's the, not, the generation it's like nowadays, is, they're impatient. They're not willing to wait. They're not willing to put in the time. They want it now, now, now. And someone will debate me on this as, okay, you meet somebody for the first time. And I, again, I keep having these conversations with people. I say, how long will it be before you decide that it's going to be your girl? Oh, nah, man. See, it's going to be, it, it, we start talking and texting and everything else like that. You know, it'd be, it'd be about, oh, maybe a month or so. I said, okay, you know very little about this person. Within a month's time, you're about to devote yourself to them. You are still in the learning phase. How mm -hmm. are you going to commit when you're still learning? I'm sorry. Me getting married to someone, I would love to get married again. It's going to be two-year period. Minimum. Because you can't really get to know somebody until you break it down and are willing to open up to them. Because most relationships don't work because one partner keeps all these secrets inside because they're afraid of someone learning about them. Heaven forbid you want to spend the rest of your life with this person, but they know very little about you. Mm -hmm. That's a risk. That's how yeah. people, that's, yeah. uh, for, for real, that's how people end up with, um, you know, wives who are, who are, you know, um, promiscuous and gold diggers. That's how women end up with men who have whole other families in their face and they <laughs> don't know it, like literally because they don't know the person they're with. So it's easy for them to have whole other families because you don't even know who you're dealing with. You didn't even look at their ID. You just assumed that when they told you their name was John, that that was really their name. Like, <laughs> Or because that's their name on Facebook, you believe it. That that's deep. Yeah, that's that's deep. Um, maybe I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm a little trusting, especially with that. If you don't give me a reason, well, am I supposed to expect you to lie from the beginning? Yes, yes. From a 47 year old woman, expect them to lie. Yes, I ain't gonna say expect them to lie. Let me correct myself. You don't necessarily expect them to lie. You just expect them to be them. That's why you're supposed to get to know them before you date them. That way you can know if they're a liar by nature. You can know if they're somebody who's trying to get over by nature. Like that's what the courting, that's what the courting is for, is mm -hmm. to get to know that person on a level deeper than text mm -hmm. and movies or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have long conversations. Me and my husband used to have conversations about our childhoods, how he reacted to certain situations in life. Like I wanted to know who he, his, what his character was, not his personality, but his character. Hey, mm -hmm. Kiki. So, Hi. so um, I love, I love you guys' conversation, and I, 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 I love it. But this motherfucking queen with attitude hour now. Can we? Mm -hmm. Can we jump? Y'all can stay, but can we jump to let's 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 get a little saucy. Okay, we getting but saucy. I love I love I love y'all dialogue though, but I hate to get to know people. But I'm a, I'm gonna <laughs> we'll have a conversation about that <laughs> another time. <laughs> we'll have a conversation about that. She another come time. in with a sledgehammer like, but hey, you doing? hey, the drivers, <laughs> how are you guys doing? I miss you guys this hour because I was eating with my children. What but was y'all you guys talking about? <laughs> y'all was in here talking about something wrong? No, it was no, no, it was very like very what? relationship wise. Oh, okay. And then and Savage come in with a with a aluminum softball bat talking about. By the way, ping. Let's get it a little bit more juicy up in here. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I want you guys. To Let's get into what you can. Let's get into what you can do sexually in your relationships. Thank God. 
I'm sorry. It's always one bad apple. <laughs> y'all, yeah, y'all, this is how it no, was all day today. Um, so we I appreciate seeing y'all seeing love. No, nah, we, we could we we could definitely keep the relationship dialogue going on. I I I, I like to hear it from other yeah, because they all up under the they up under the I'm going here. I'm going through a divorce, so I'm at the point in my life where I'm not trying to get to know nobody at this moment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's that starting over phase that. where it's like do I really want to but I do want to have sex though so it's like you know that's the that's the stage that I'm in right now I feel and I know that. at some I point I will get around. I will get back to that stage where all right it's time to get to know somebody time to meet somebody new you know whatever the case may be but the way the way um this world is set up right now and and Amron I'm sorry that you're very trusting but you can't trust none of these motherfuckers out here right now. Like you really, really can't. Like it's it's and, 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 and like what's what's your name, Miss Tyler? Mrs. Tyler? I'm Kim. Kim, like Kim said, any time Dick and Harry could tell you whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do the back work, the leg work to figure out the background of a person, how how can you know? And and like my man Montel said, at the week you like, yeah, right, we in this thing. Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> like that's that's crazy. Nah, I think that's absurd. But um, uh, me and Kiki is two thirds of uh, two. What? How many people is in our damn podcast? <laughs> right now, just three. It's, okay, so two thirds. Three of us at the moment. It was five of us, but it two thirds. Five. Of uh Queens with Attitude podcast. Uh we are a podcast that talk about everyday life issues. So this kind of is some things that we do talk about, you know, on our podcast and things like that. Um mm -hmm. we talk about everyday life situations, um, current events, things that's going on. I have a segment on there called Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You know, so um, and I, I break down what's going on. Name Annie. So well, what's that you. segment about? I'm Annie. I'm Annie. Ask me that. All right, no, you okay, cousin? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you okay. okay. That's kind of that's kind of redundant questions. Like, oh, well, you said she's you know. okay. I know she's okay. So what's the point of but, asking? Um, but no. So we talk about everything, and you know, th like I said, this is kind of something of a conversation that we will all talk about, but um. Right now, we are in the reconstruction stage of our podcast. Hiatus. Um, yeah, no, 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 it's not even a hiatus, it's a reconstruction, kind of, it's kind of like a hiatus. Yeah. That's yeah. a longer, we, that's a longer spelling of hiatus. <laughs> yeah, we, we shouldn't be on, we shouldn't be on a hiatus because we was on a goddamn hiatus, and then about three, four episodes in, they were like, Yeah, well, about this, let's figure this one out real quick, but um. We are a year and some change in to our podcast. Yay. And um Congratulations. you know, if we didn't take this reconstruction situation, we would be hitting our 50th episode for Queens with Attitude. Um but we have had the opportunity to talk to so many different individuals and learn different things about people that honestly I didn't even know a lot of people went through certain, you know. I mean, I you know everybody go through a lot of things, but when you meet people that go through shit that you're going through, it's it's a little, it hit a little different, you know. Mm -hmm. And and when their situations are similar to yours but a little worse, it makes you rethink your situation. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, damn, I'm over here bitching and complaining about X, Y, Z, and and Jenny Sue over here is going through fucking a tornado, and mm -hmm. I'm, I just got a little tropical storm happening. You know, so it, it definitely opens your eyes to different things. But as Kiki said, it will turn left really quick and Dick will be the only subject that we talk about. It's like really, it. really wild. Um, and it's all because of Kiki. So I try not to <laughs> Kiki coming like, excuse me, uh, what? Excuse me, it's what? Now, <laughs> Kiki, Kiki I can hear you say, Rub your ankle. She be like, "What the dick did? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. What happened with a dick?" We like, hey, what you know what's so things? crazy? I've just been on podcast after podcast, and people saying the same thing. I gotta really <laughs> check my dicks 
that come out my mouth for real. <laughs> That's a lot of dick talk. I I just don't get it like that on the regular, so I got to talk about it. You know, <laughs> it's part of my therapy. <laughs> it's very therapeutic to talk about the lack thereof. You know, but I just like to talk about sex. Like sex is like a good subject to me. I don't know. I all always been this way. Always. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't I can't take who I am away from the table, but I can't get into other conversations. I do. Every but day I, we are learning something new. Yes. Uh, we, I tell oh, you this, for whole, sure. this whole podcast uh project has been really eye opening, having a chance to talk to different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tyler's mm-hmm. over here just looking like this happy little couple. Oh, bless I see home. them though. Aww. They all booed up and caked up and I'm like, right. Just, mm-hmm. How long I, have y'all I, been married? Just want to be a player. We we <laughs> have been, we've been together <laughs> seven years. We've been married six years. Okay. Awesome. And we okay. can be friends with each other. We just play with each other. That's all. It's, yeah. See, you don't have to give up your player card huh. to be married. You just oh, gotta play with each other instead of everybody. <laughs> I know that's goddamn right. Tell me Let's something, go. baby, because shit. But um, no, nah, f- um, I lo- Snapchat has this filter where it's this big ass pink teddy bear hugging on you, right? So I made a snap, and I'm like, y'all not always post about this player shit, but I just wanted to really. Well, I'm pointing to the bear, like I just really want to be like this, like somebody just <laughs> on me like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I also had to be me. And I'm like, you know, just fuck right and love good. God damn. <laughs> but be on me like this. You know, so, you know, it's something, that is, people, it's something that you long for. But when you're going through a situation that I'm going through, you like, man, I don't even want nobody to love me right now. I just want to, <laughs> I just want you to dig me deep and keep it pushing. I mean, you know, it's, so it's just it's always like okay, especially dating nowadays. It's just like really, really hard to trust anybody. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like you gotta you gotta get yourself together so that you won't fall for mm-hmm. the lie. That time to get you together, then it's easy for you to fall for somebody's bullshit, and then you're in the same situation as the last one. So it's good to take that time out for yourself. And as my girl said last night, find you some bitch bench warmers. You know what I'm saying? When you do get horny, call them. You know what I'm saying? And as long as you're safe and you're honest, it ain't nothing wrong with getting your freaking home. You that, that's so that's so true. That's so true. Um right now where I'm currently at located at, everybody look like walking zombies, so I'm straight. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, where are you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> where are you? Make sure that's not a vacation destination for this year. Nah, <laughs> hell no. Do not come here, please. Where um, are you? Because you know what? If you got the walking dead around you, I'm gonna avoid that because I see what they I am here. in okay, I, I am that. in uh Leesville, Louisiana. It's a military town. And gotcha. uh, you either got horny ass military dudes, or you got the people that look like they did drugs since they came out their mama womb. So Damn. I'm just, uh, I'm really Damn. just like, yeah, nah, I'm straight. Damn. And I've I've been through the military <laughs> situation, so I'm like, yeah, I don't even want to fool with that either. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, mm. well, you know. So you see, um, I'm retired Navy, so I feel you on that one. So, and, yeah. And, and, and you're not retired Navy, so it's like, mm, yeah. So <laughs> I and then with me divorcing the military guy i don't want to deal with a military person they're like oh yeah i know that nigga no nah, i'm straight <laughs> i'm good i'm good i don't even want nobody but like yeah i, I know him Mm-mm. Nope. right that's like the first so, question like, everybody, everybody like, you ever met with them you gotta block all right, their friends right. oh, friend. so i'm the i'm the queen of i ain't blocking nobody i want y'all to see me <laughs> so see see me but um I just don't want to have to be like, or if I do like interact with someone, I'd be like, so what unit you are? What's your platoon? Like, I need to know all the details. I'd be like, all right, you ain't near him, but you still never know mm-hmm. if they true. may know each other. Yeah. So and I'm pass just like, across you know what? be a totally mm-hmm. different deal. All right. So I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm just watching The Walking Dead every time I go outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you already know where I'm at. I can't have no fun. Oh, no. Mm-mm. So you know, oh, it's, I'll be it's the Walking Dead. Yeah. It's oh, a process. It's okay. a, yeah, she she got the Walking Dead too. Uh, <laughs> it's just a process of me, like Kiki said, getting to know myself again, 
and um you know but i've been through that state i went through that stage actually still married so i kind of i found myself within my marriage but just having to go through the whole separating divorce situation children this and that it puts your mind in a whole different uh uh, what the fuck am I looking for? What's the word? State of mind. You mm-hmm. know, it, it puts you in a whole different frame of looking at people and how you handle things. And I think I'm good. Uh, we talked about sex toys a lot earlier. I'm good with oh. my little Rosie and shit like that. You know, I, 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 could, be, I, could, be, I could be in the bed like see. this by myself. Ooh, shit. So, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know. When I went through that phase, I, uh, I took a break. I think uh, is it Kim, right? I'm sorry, Mrs. Tyler mm-hmm. mentioned about being celibate. So after my whole phase, when I got separated from my ex-husband, um, I decided, one, as a joke, my friends and I oh, said, boy. hey, we're going to tell, whenever we meet someone, we're going to tell them, hey, you know, um, I'm celibate. <laughs> and, you know, if he stays, give him a chance. And if he rang, you know, we know we dodged a bullet. And then all of a sudden, I was like, you know what? I'm really going to be celibate. So I was celibate for like two years. And yeah, I was celibate almost two years before I decided to start dating him again. It's a, it, it, I mean, it's definitely a moment of clarity. You start feeling mm-hmm. like you got cobwebs and you get depressed and you're like, okay, I should just give it up to somebody that don't mean nothing that way. You I know. Did. That's not an issue no more, but right, right, right. I feel you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I did five and a half years, and let me tell you, I was so horny. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I came back on the scene, good thing I came back on the scene with a little Jack Rabbit, you know what I'm saying? Because he gave it to me the way I should have had it for five and a half years. But what I did wow. find what I did find out in that five and a half years is that um I got mentally I got better. Right. Um mm-hmm. I I noticed that I was getting to know dudes better. Cause usually yeah. I wouldn't get to know, like I'm gonna just keep it real with you. I'll be you like better choices. I like him. And before you know it, we doing it. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. it was, like that, um though. To actually get to know somebody, and it was just like wow. Yeah. And I think the longest one that stayed around, he stayed a whole year without getting no nookie, and I was proud of him. But he dwindled away. They they don't stay no longer than three to six months. Just letting y'all know. If yeah, you- normally after after about two or three months, they're like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ain't but when we stuck here. around after like that six months, I started being like, okay, I'm about to go. I'm about to go see him. I'm about to go see him. Because <laughs> right. I was like, out. okay, he made it this long. Maybe you know. Yeah, and it's just a lot. Then you can't tease nobody either when you celebrate because I swear I done grind some legs and. <laughs> no, I ain't do none of that shit. Grind some legs. What the fuck? I wouldn't that even have been doing. I can't even tease myself like family. that if I'm celibate. Like I would be <laughs> right. I would. Hey, that's like I'd be afraid to bump into something. As soon as you bump into something, now you. It's all it. and you did that now too. You all, it's over with. Yeah. Like wow. Okay, now we together. Now you talking yeah, to the wall like that. Now we together. Now I just let you right. know. Right. Me and you gotta, go together. We go. I don't together. know how. I don't know how I made it out of some of those situations that I put myself in. But that's the main thing when you celebrate. Don't put yourself in the situation to get fucked because nine times out of ten you will get you fucked. You will fucked. get. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Big facts. I, Speaking um, of getting fucked, been... my husband's getting ready. He's over here. We doing all this. He's like, okay, they're single. We're married, so we might as well go and get uh, some. Go, oh, y'all going to get fucked? I'm going to work. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Just rub it in. This man said, we're about to hop out. We got to hop out. We got to take care of our life situation. Thank you, Miss Cameron, for having us, y'all. Y'all got to go to yeah, we're gonna go be married and do some Aww. things. I love it. Uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Ooh, it y'all awesome. are y'all doing are great. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are doing. doing great. Keep yeah. going. I'm a, we're gonna come in on the comments after a while. So. I ain't married. Okay. <laughs> I ain't married. Come in. Come now. Okay. Let, y'all let us let us know how that goes. Oh, shit. Yeah. Thank All you. right, we got you. We got you. We got a review for y'all. We got a review. Right, so. perfect, perfect, perfect. You know, 
We got a, our reviewer right there on the comments. She review everything. So like that. Get, a only, <laughs> get a only fans. Yeah. Only right. fans. Let's we have been getting we've been getting calls for it people's like are y'all gonna get it only fans we like we look at each other like what, what? I, I don't know i don't what i don't know and, and uh, that take a, that take a level that take a level of confidence and trust boy I tell you that. yes it do because everybody yeah. gonna see that pussy and everybody gonna see that dick and it's gonna yes, be yes love right. <laughs> so hey, but if you um, have a good night relationship, do it Good night, yeah. you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, I don't know what celibate is. That shit is celibate. Is there, celibate there. Celibate there. Remember the last time? That's what I said. Remember somebody was like, "Yeah, I've been celibate." I said, "The only thing I know about celibate is celibate there, celibate here." You know, but um, uh, I think the longest I went without sex is five years. Oh no! Somebody, somebody started over the podcast. Huh? huh? Wait. What? One day, two hours, twenty. Okay, minutes. never mind. Never mind. Yeah, like we uh -huh. still going. We still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She was Kiki, like, don't do that. Kiki, Kiki, don't do that. Don't do that, Kiki. Uh-uh. Nah, <laughs> don't do that. Like, what just happened? Like, who fell asleep? No, no, no we still going. No, yeah. Hours, no, Andrea minutes. said, did, did someone say review? I started smiling. Right. I was like, because y'all were just talking about her a second ago. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> what I said. She in the comments, so. But no, um, I don't... Mm. I don't honestly. You I think guys got to go five years without any. But see, what got me something? through was the fact that I was in a situation where I wasn't getting it from her, and I'm not gonna mm -hmm. compromise myself. So right. I'll take care of my own needs until I get to a point where I don't have to worry about that. And it was about five years down the way because I had to get away from her. Then I had to start my healing process. And I got to get I myself understand. together. But in the meantime, I was in the cave. Okay. I was, I stayed away because that was just too much trouble. Cause I already knew the minute I got it, I was going to be hooked on that person. And that wouldn't have been a good deal <laughs> yeah. at all. Wow. Like, yeah. So what you doing tonight, girl? What's going on? <laughs> What's up? You want me to come over there? You want me to slide up in there? Come on, let's go. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to come through. What you doing? She yeah, like, you, you, you just saw me last night. I know. It's been too long. All right. Yeah, been, you want me? I you definitely. Hours was a long time. You hungry? I was, you want something to eat? I, I got you. Did it. I was stuck on that dude, like for real. I was stuck yeah, on him see? for two and a half years, like just stuck on him. Like I ain't seen nobody but him. I know he was like, "Damn, girl, go and play. Yeah, go, go do something." I would have really want some dick. I know that's fucking right. Don't go to Andrea. My goodness. I would have healed on some dick. But, but yeah, no, the, yeah, what made it so easy for me? You know what I'm saying? It's because I'm I was a truck driving, so I lived in my truck and I was just mm -hmm. working. So you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of real easy for me to, mm -hmm. you know, not do anything. Yeah. I moved to another country. Mm. You want to oh. talk about Japan? Oh. How was oh. that? Oh, Japan great. is wonderful. I want to leave. Like I want to. She was stationed there. I was only there for about. Three or four months with my ship, but it was everything. Tokyo won my heart. Mm. Wow. I was in the country, Okinawa. Was it amazing, like how it looked on TV? Because you know how it's like all that electronics, like, is that true? Well, not where I lived because <laughs> I lived in what would be, I guess, equivalent, I guess, would be like Japan's Nebraska. Hawaii. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Okay. It was oh my gosh. I want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> right. But, oh, no. I love Hawaii. So we didn't have, I love like, to travel. We didn't have the big city like, you know, Tokyo and, mm. like, you know, no, none of the big, the big cities, big cities, electronics. It wasn't like Times Square everywhere. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'd rather be in a place that looked like Hawaii anyway. But Tokyo yeah, was nice, subtropical, like um, a piece of mine. Tokyo was amazing. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm Tokyo big on. Busy. <laughs> I'm, it depends on where you go. Now, mm -hmm. the the image that people have on TV is of all the the shops and the large billboard signs, and right. that's that's Akihabara. Akihabara Prefecture is one of the main spots. That's where all the geek and nerds will go to get everything that you could possibly get because mm -hmm. that's where they sell it and when you hear someone say that they sell everything in vending machines 
they sell everything, <laughs> everything. in vending machines. Everything. Wow. No yep. bullshit. Yeah. What you think is a deserted ass street and it's a random ass vending machine in the middle of the <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Everything. Everything from Ooh. fucking panties to cigarettes <laughs> to full <laughs> on ass <laughs> meals, alcohol, coffee. You want to buy a wig? It. You want to buy a cosplay? You can get it in a vending machine. <laughs> uh, no shit. You know, yeah. that's, that's crazy. You know, I told you guys earlier how my son is into, you know, he's the nerdy nerd of my three and he's into all the anime and shit. And from the age of four, he used to tell me, I want to go to Japan. <laughs> I want to go to Japan at four. Mm. And I'm like, dude, how the fuck you even know what the hell Japan is? So when it's not know, hard, when, but most of the anime is is based. Like, I mean, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, so the first anime he was introduced to at like two was Bleach. Oh, nice. And nice. and because his father's into shit like that, and so that was and then his father's homeboy. Well, his father was watching, I think, the English version. But then his father's homeboy came to the crib and start watching the actual Japanese version. So now they're over there like, I'm sitting there like, what the fuck are y'all watching? This is not, I don't, never mind. I'm And I mind my business and I walked away, you know? So, but ever since the age of four, he always been like, yo, I want to go to Japan. And still he'll be 18 in July. And he's still like, I want to go to Japan. Mm. I, I like, I, this is something that's on my bucket list so i'm like hey bro you know i see somebody I gonna take off we're gonna take you i saw but cl's I message she said let me in i was like oh, here, we go. Here, here we go let me in now um, let me I wanted in to now. move to japan too i've been to japan did you in like Libya. it i loved it japan mm -hmm. is dope mm -hmm. tokyo it's yeah, yeah. see and, and i uh when i went with my ship uh we was right there in uh, Yokosuka. So we took the train from Yokosuka down to, to uh, Tokyo. And we got off right by the station. It was over by the Tokyo Tower, the big red, big red tower that you see in any of the pictures of, mm -hmm. of it. It's, yo, that shit is nuts. When I tell you they got a McDonald's on the third floor, and if you've never eaten at a McDonald's overseas, it's an experience. Because yes, everything is. Because everything you need with McDonald's is the best. Yeah. Hands <laughs> down. <laughs> that shit don't even taste like McDonald's. It's no. like a different no. fucking restaurant. The yeah. sauce doesn't taste like barbecue sauce. That's what I was going to wonder. Like, what do they sell at a McDonald's that's all the way over there? Like, they sell the standard fare, rice but they, they sell the <laughs> into it. Yeah, every country you go to is going to have it's something their different. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to be you different. Know, their local, something that's, you know, iconic to their area. What, mm -hmm. like Japan, is when I first had an Ebby burger, which is a shrimp burger. Yes, I did oh. too. Oh my God. Oh, shark, shark burger? Shrimp, shrimp burger. burger. Shrimp burger. Oh, shrimp. Mm hmm. Yo, it was. Yeah, I was, was close. Okay. I said shrimp fried rice burger. She, she did though. <laughs> and so their racist. chicken sandwich is not <laughs> a formed, a reformed shrimp fried rice. Shrimp fried rice. Piece of chicken. Like it is an actual. Like, no, it's better than a po' boy. Whole piece shrimp, chicken. Shrimp, What's yeah, a po' boy? Po boy. When they chicken breast. They actually put a chicken titty between two pieces of bread. It's like yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Hello, titty. all my friends. How you doing? Oh, What's the business? Speaking of nipple, what's up, dude? A chicken titty. Huh? A chicken breast. Oh. A chicken breast. <laughs> it was, it was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> it, it went over Kiki's head like this. Yeah. Y'all, I'm just waking up and I'm about Look to at all you right fine here. folks still out here podcasting and, and hanging. Yeah. Taking yeah. no well, dose. CL, you look like you've been asleep for two days. Girl, look at you shining. I've been here all day, too. I know, I feel you. Montel, good to see you again. OG White Beard, OG, OG, OG. Did you get, did you get some I, sleep? Who, me? Yeah. Sleep's for suckers. No, I just got back from work. Look, he got oh, coffee okay. in his hand and everything. What I'm upset about is we are in the middle of Queens with attitude. We just disrupt our show. Well, first right. of all, um, CL, I can do the hell the hell I want. That's second of all. <laughs> CL knows so, she'll come in. in the second middle of, of all, I did. He came in with I, CL. 
I don't think you understood when I said I'm going to be sliding through these last two days like Deadpool through the multiverse. I'm just sliding through every show when I want to, how I want to, when I want to, because I can. Oh, you're right, Poe Boys. I'm and they put a whole triple D. I on just said, screen. I just want to let everybody know that I'm using that. I'm gonna, it, it, I'm like, we got titties? some titty, we got some chicken titties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never quite heard it like that, but it makes so much sense. Like, okay. Yeah, let me get that before. chicken titty pull boy right there. Yeah, let me get that chicken titty pull boy. CL said, CL said they put extra nipple. Let me get extra nipple. I like it. I like yeah, it chewy. It's like triple D's. I like it chewy, bro. I like it chewy. Let's go. What's up? What's good? Yeah, I want to oh, crazy. Now, crazy. I was, now I'll tell you the best experience I had in Tokyo was at the Tokyo Tower in the McDonald's. We were eating. There was a bunch of school kids in the corner. Now, uh -oh. anyone who knows me, I, I always asked. carry my backpack with me, and I keep. <laughs> I always take, I never know where I go, but I always keep my Yu-Gi-Oh deck with me because I play Yu-Gi-Oh. And they happen to be playing over in the corner. And I said, you know what? They're probably going to turn me down because I'm a guy gene. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I walk over there and I pull my deck out and they were like, you play, <laughs> you play. I said, I, I be excited. I they kicked my ass, but it was the best time I ever had because <laughs> they were looking through my cards, looking through my deck and the there was a the language barrier was a bit limited because i don't mm -hmm. speak a lot of japanese and they were barely speaking english but we made it work and it was mm -hmm. one of the coolest experiences ever i'm so mad because i couldn't get a picture because if i ever go i'm just gonna say konnichiwa jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> what does that even mean konnichiwa. 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 Hello. so you're just gonna tell everybody hello and say goodbye for hello Cause that you was doing last night. Wrong country. What was that voice you was doing last night? This sound like you was deaf. You was like, "This what it sound like during." Oh no, that's 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 so racist. Oh no, I want to hear this. Oh God, no. Do it, Kiki. We were talking about moaning because that Kanubo. Kanubo. She said she. She got paid for doing like the um the moaning. Yes, the moaning for the porn. You know what I mean? And so wait, somebody gets paid for moaning and porn? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But that's how they sound when they have sex. Like I, I feel like, <laughs> do it again. Do it again. And there are people that turn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They sound just like that. Like for real. And that shit and then, is I mean, I was like, real. Oh, you want some for nine nine? <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> oh, God. oh my God. <laughs> But if you ever watch Asian porn, they sound like I'd be like, do it hurt? Are you okay? You want to be like, are you good? You Oh, I'm sorry. Did. She had me say, "You want some for nine nine? I was yes, like, you "Oh shit, nine -nine. we got pussy at the nine nine cent store now." Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, Dollar Tree will like, never be the same anymore. Like, oh my goodness gracious! Yo, nah, not to be going to the Dollar Tree. What the hell's going on? Don't worry about it. We need to go ahead and change that because Dollar Tree is a dollar twenty five now. That that tree don't want to be They got three dollars and five dollar items too. Fuck that. They just a regular dollar yeah. store, like yeah, they dollar dollar general. Yeah, yeah. we're not even gonna go there because every time I think about, it, I get upset. I get like, upset because them quarters <laughs> add up. No, no, wait, wait, no. Let me tell you something. I went and bought six items, and I'm like, all right, cool. It's about to be like you know six and change. And it was like nine thirty five. I said, what did I buy? Nine thirty five. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm like, nigga, what did I get? He like. Yeah, I'm like, mm, I'm so glad I'm, I had nine dollars in change I'm, on this. Oh, no, wait, you bought six dollars. No, wait, you bought you six five. items. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's two items. That comes up to like oh, a seven twenty-five and another like sales tax too. So you. So I live sales tax I, on in everything. Louisiana. The sales tax here is nine point nine five. So yep, yes. that's about it. Yep. So that's yep. nine dollars and some change. Yep. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, yep. I'm going to PA. PA don't you? You could buy shit. And they don't charge you shit. 
yeah, I love. I miss. That's the one thing I do miss about living in Pennsylvania. Baby. Go across that damn. I yeah. would drive today Walmart. Okay. Oh my god, that's I'm the one thing the I do state. miss. But um, or if you go to Delaware, Delaware is a tech free state too. Well, I know um, Ohio is like that with food. I think. I, I, yeah. You don't get taxed for. Um, food. <clears throat> well, if you use EBT, Hot there's food. no tax. <laughs> <laughs> And get you an like EBIT. Huh? What kind of laptop you got? Um, a HP. I had to think about it. I'm like, I'm fucking no. I don't even use the motherfucker. I'm trying to get my <laughs> together. That's what I oh, use for the podcast. HP. HP or Dell is your two best bets, in my opinion. Well, everybody been talking shit about my mic. I don't have a mic. And then I'm like, well, buy me a mic. They're like, fuck you, CL. I'll be like, I told you to get some good headphones. Mm-hmm. All you really need is some good headphones. Mm-hmm. I got Acer. You'd be good. Oh, I got, Acer is a good brand, too. I got Acer and a Gateway. But the Gateway is like low budget. Like if I get on there, that's when I first started podcasting. Remember, it used to be real dark. Oh, your screen used to be trash. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we used to be like, damn, Kiki, are you there? <laughs> These two professionals got from a blurred corn speaks. Unicorn. Blurred corn speaks. You mean Angie blurred and myself? Corn. Yeah. What blurred kind of unicorn. mic y'all got? Because everybody talk about how I'm a low bud. Blood, you know. Um. You I, have a mic. Where's your mic that you already have? I. Ha- yeah, I have. Who had the colored mic? Then you have a mic that turned colored. That's me. I got oh. the colored mic. Yeah. I, I have two. So Angie. many mic computers. I have a Yeti. Yeah. I have. I my- got- too, and it was working good. I think I just need to go back to the laptop. She got a Yeti, yeah. She need to plug it into a computer, though. See, I That's have the regular the standard Yeti, and mm-hmm. I have a Yeti Nano. Yeah, I have a. Nano. I was gonna buy a nanny, a Yeti Nano too, but gonna I buy was buy a nanny. Too. Oh my gosh, why are you gonna? So buy what do y'all do? Yeah. on y'all. Okay, so y'all, are y'all on laptops? No, I'm on my desktop. I'm on a Mac, my desktop. Yeah, oh, desktop. I, okay. I am. A, I have a gaming yeah, PC. I got a Dale I desktop. I got a, a Dale. I have a gaming oh, PC, and awesome. no, the only reason why I have a gaming PC is shut because up, PC. when I was going to school, uh, the next motherfucker to tell me to shut up out in this mother. No, I was playing. No, you oh. won't. Shut the fuck <laughs> up now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. I, work. I can't <laughs> wait to play the game so he can be a game host again. Lord. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> we were I got the power. <laughs> I got up at five o'clock this morning. Like, let me see what these niggas is doing. I was about to see that yeah, one crazy. robe that don't quite close right. Yeah, see, yeah, the crazy yeah. thing was, I got and that girl. That girl that came on, Cicely, man, she's dope. I like her. Yeah, Cicely. She's in a bad sleep. She said she's gonna be up about two to hang out. Okay. I said I got a gaming yeah. PC, and I had to get it because the laptop I was using died when I was going through school for my bachelor's. But the fucked up part is, as soon as I started using this, it resurrected itself. It's going, nigga, what you Undertaker. <laughs> it got mad because it's like, oh, you gonna use another PC? You was dead. Don't worry about that. What? What you? you, you <laughs> yeah, when I come back on later, I might hook my laptop you up. Cheating on you now? You cheating? But so, no, mm-hmm. I can't do that because I don't have. Look, listen to how that sound. When I get back <laughs> on, I've been on here twelve <laughs> hours, but I'm gonna oh, take a power bad. nap and come back. Oh, oh. Y'all some yeah, soldiers, I'm man. I'm well, definitely taking a nap tonight. Sure. Y'all some soldiers. Uh, yeah, uh, I, she I'm tapped out go. on this quick. Lord. <laughs> Who? You? I, I was like, she knocked. Oh, oh me? I, but I was on for a long, long time. You was. So. No, you yeah, you was. was. Yeah, the I reason was why I was on okay. so long is because I, 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 you was I, at work. Yeah, so y'all helped me through my work shift. I was like. I know your shift was smooth sailing last Smooth like, as hell. Like, Oh, yeah. Serious conversation. Well, I'm gonna bounce because I got to get ready to do some streaming on Twitch. I got to make sure I keep up a schedule. But, How do uh, you do that with Twitch? Hey, you know, send me I'm your Twitch so I can send it to I'm my son. Twitch. What's, what's Twitch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did this bitch start twitching? <laughs> Lord. I stream on Twitch from like Streamyard, but it ain't really doing that. I got like two followers. Twitch is, uh, for those who don't know, Twitch is a streaming platform where primarily they use it for gaming, but you can gaming. do it for anything. Mm-hmm. You can do it for podcasting, mm-hmm. you can do it for crafting, you can do it for talk shows, you all the Legos. Types of stuff. Like, yeah, you have a channel for Legos and, and all types of things. And people come in not only to watch other people play specific games they may have an interest in, 
but to engage in conversation and to connect and interact. And right. on my stream, that's what I do. I play, but I, I, I have conversations with the people who come in because if you're taking the time to come to my little neighborhood of Twitch, uh -huh. we gonna talk. We have a conversation because you're supporting me. The least I can do is go, "Hey, you are the shit. Thank you for coming." So, oh what God. game do you play? Um, my, how do you I, get more followers? I want okay. Grant that photo. I'll, I'll see. You. So, what I do, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna answer you too, Kiki. So. What I do is I engage on my other social media and I also tell people everywhere I go, hey, I have a Twitch stream and you'll find out that people are really interested if you have a Twitch stream, especially if you're not the standard fare. Mm -hmm. And the other way is if people that are on, hey, put the word out about me if you like what I do, da, 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 da. So you're basically advertising yourself. I do it on my Instagram when I do my convos or if I'm doing a, a post or wherever else I am, primarily I just speak about it every time I get a chance. Okay. Because oh, I just yeah. stream on it. I just tell people they can find me there. And it's, stream it's been streaming over a year. And I got two followers. Because you got to be more consistent. How often? You, how often I'm consistent. Do, I put out shit every week. But how yeah, often but do the you people let people do know? stuff every day. How often do you let people know that you're on Twitch? I don't be saying it like that. She don't, that, she don't that, tell people. You, you got to, because it's the only way. People are not going to come across you accidentally. I didn't even are, know what Twitch was until y'all said something. Right now, there are about half a million uh, streamers yeah. on Twitch. So you're navigating a massive neighborhood. So the best time, as soon as you say, hey, I also do a stream on Twitch. Look for us, da-da-da-da-da. We talk about X, Y, Z. That's how you do it. Now, Kiki, what did you ask? Every day. What game do you play? Currently, I'm playing Marvel Snap, but I'm a variety streamer. So I play a little bit of everything. The only things I don't play are Call of Duty, <sighs> League of Legends, Overwatch, Fortnite. Because there's plenty of those soul and souls out there doing that. I'm Jack a Grand Theft Auto and <laughs> pay to play games. The first he's one he's on his way. Call of Duty, those was my things. Um, as a streamer, if, if you <clears throat> different tiers. You start out, you don't get anything. But if you put in the hours and you put in the time and you put in the stream enough, you'll reach affiliate. Affiliate, you can start making money. But that's dependent on people subscribing to your channel, mm -hmm. also donating and things like that. And then if you really put in the work and a lot of people come to you, then you can go to partner. And there's a little bit more to that. But with Twitch, they want to take more out. So honestly, I like being an affiliate because I feel like that is where a lot of people you are get paid. Hey, uh, hey. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Montel, I just sent my this son your Twitch, and he He's said, always oh, this thing's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a All joke. Right. I laughed at it. Well, I would uh, say- My son think your Twitch is cool. He's like, oh, this thing's cool. Like, he's super enthused in his text message just now. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I will. I definitely look forward to having him here. If he follow me, cool. If he pops in, I'll shout him out. And how old is he? 17. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to curb my language as much as possible. Cause yeah, no. His, do you have you met his, his mama? mama? Is have you met? His yeah. Mama? I, I've heard of her. The legend is still ringing, but I'm I haven't yeah. quite met her yet. So yeah, but, he's know. all right. He's okay. all right. Oh, but you mean I, the horror story? Miss, <laughs> from Angie, what I just found oh, out, he cursed a lot. Do you eat food and smack in that mic? No. Ooh. Well, you know, people have YouTube channels and they. I know. I watch it. I like oh, the, the, the ASMR. 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 Yeah. I all the time. I don't do that, man. That shit's weird. I get well, it. I don't yeah, that I don't do like hey, that. I've been thinking about finding somebody with some good dander for scratching their shit because they're doing good on YouTube. Yeah, that's weird. Right? That's the fact know. that people is watching that and they be like Why, people, people whispering and then people scratching their head. Scratching uh, niggas. Yeah, I'm going to scratch my head. head. <laughs> that is absurd. <laughs> Sir. Oh, sorry. I was oh trying to see God. where that came from. Like, what the hell? <laughs> well, no, I asked her that because she got the foodie on the end of her name. So, you know, people have YouTube channels where they eat. So, I was really, I really well, yeah, to know. uh, mock bones. Yeah, but it's a lot of them. They just be eating eat. a whole bunch of food. Like, I drank too. Yeah. And I have friends who are like, yeah, I was why? watching this mukbang and they was eating all of it. Like, first of all, <laughs> why? Okay. Are you paying to watch me eat? My cousin loves. Hell no, you nasty. But you watching them? Okay, got you. I tell you one thing though, they, they they are so mean in the comments. I'll be there for the comments. I'll just be like, oh my god. <laughs> what they're mean for on the AMFR? They're mean. 
in the comments? No, I, I'll be watching on YouTube they eat, when they eat their, when they're eating, like especially if you're like oh no mukbangs, yeah, especially like if you're a bigger person and like it look like you about to die, like people are saying crazy things. Yeah, sometimes it's a good time in the comments. Andrew talking about I love the toe, bro. I don't even want to know what that is. Oh my god, I don't even know what that is either. But carry, uh, carry on. I'm beyond scared. Okay, so let's go back to this expensive ass gaming laptop. You got me fucked up, Montel. This shit's hot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh yeah, gaming, gaming computers is very. Good I paid though, a thousand yeah. something dollars. I had a gaming laptop. I didn't know what I was doing, but somebody I, stole it. I forgot on, the I, name of it. Hold I on. never, t I never told you what I was, what kind of PC I had though. All I had it don't matter. Just a regular one, high as fuck. But that's what because it's that? it's a high powered machine. It's designed to do a lot. But mm -hmm. I had I the got, best one. Hold on. When I got mine, mine, I got mine. What four years ago? I paid eight hundred dollars for it. What was that's, what's the name but, of yours? Yeah, but you did you get yours from the exchange? Sure did. See, that's not fair. What's yeah. the exchange? Everybody, what's the, the, what's PX? the name of your PC? <laughs> the PX. Uh, yeah. it's, it's an MSI Q4. Okay, and I think it, that's I think that's what I had, but somebody stole mine. I paid fifteen hundred for mine. Ooh, oh. I like MSI. I really somebody do. Somebody stole mine, and I, and if you're watching and you got much. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? You go what? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a threat live on the screen. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye. I said, I said, I'm going to feel you. I'm going to feel you. Yeah, I would rather oh, you okay. feel me than the other thing. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Kiki. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Too don't don't, don't give me the singing up in here, okay? Because I Who sing just started singing? singing feel me? <laughs> You already know who started singing that shit. <laughs> no, that ass was down there. Don't get me to sing it because I sing on my stream, so I had to sing. Oh it man, oh, shit. you sing on the stream? I haven't been. I haven't watched a stream in a long time. Well, if you decide to pop in tonight, I probably, I probably because I, it, I, I can't just sing this anything because I've been watch, I've been watching the live like all day. Oh, this been yes. oh, yeah, you've watching. been in here. You have been commenting. <laughs> I've been in the comments. Like, I've been in the comments. and So yeah, I was going to text you to see what time you were going to live so that I could catch a little bit and then come back. Cause I was going to do TikTok, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow because since it's my birthday, it's going to be my birthday TikTok and stuff like that. Happy birthday! Um, what are you doing on TikTok? <laughs> Thank you. Probably just talk. Simple. Because... Okay. If I if I live for at least thirty minutes, then that will and allow me to be able to do more things, so I can start monetizing. Because mm -hmm. uh, pe people like my D and the D and D TikTok I have, that joke is still growing. People <laughs> people like that one. It's like you play Dungeons and Dragons. I've been playing longer than you've been alive. The hell! <laughs> wow. Been you a, not, be what, like you are playing or something. Do not disturb. Like in the uh in the TikTok, I'm a dungeon master, and I'm, I was yeah. about to say something. I, to, I know you was, Mo. I know you was. Draws. That's what Dick I thought. Dick and draws. Dick and draws. Dick and draws. I don't have a like. I don't have a TikTok, but I watch them. Like I watch them in reels and shit like that. So I actually yeah. got it in my reels too. So it's one of my. It's my latest one. You got it in your what? You that dick supposed to be in your draws? <laughs> Somebody said, hey, mama, Bay J. Oh, that's my baby. Hey. That's your baby? Okay. <laughs> hey, bitch. How you doing? Hey, bitch. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm about to say, that's your baby, and we sitting up here talking about dick and draws? No, she damn near 30. That's what D&D &D stand for, oh. dick and draws. So. I'm about to say, that, that's a grown-ass yeah. lady. I know that's a grown-ass lady, because she yeah. said, hey, bitch. <laughs> I, know that's a grown -ass I don't lady. see the We all we got. <laughs> Yeah, she just turned 29 on Ooh, New Year's Day. Happy birthday! Oh, happy first, birthday! The first of the year. Oh, awesome! Man, I remember that age. I'm my born oldest, on the first too. My oldest is 33. But she's a fool. <laughs> Listen, April hey, fool. That hey. motherfucker's a fool. That's why she that way because she was born on that day. I'm Business. telling you. I'm my bad. I'm sorry. This is how we do it. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> oh. She's a fool too now. Don't don't get it twisted. Where are you oh, from? Man. I was born in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. I, I was, was born, born 
by the river. I was waiting for that one. <laughs> Well, y'all missed it because it was a trivia question earlier and I was trying to answer the fucking question and I couldn't because I realized I was logged into the wrong damn account. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where are you from, Montel? Originally from Indiana. Where you live now? I am in Virginia. I am I live in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, you pay that high-ass rent. All you do is work. No. No. Because I'm in Virginia Beach. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia not that bad. Suffering? My rent is not bad at all. What is it? Eight forty for a two bedroom place. Oh, that's not bad. When I my I got friends that live in Virginia, they pay fifteen, seventeen hundred dollars. That's because they probably live in Virginia Beach. Virginia. Richmond. Oh, <laughs> oh like that. yeah. How much you pay, Miss Angie? Uh, I, I have a mortgage. My mortgage is like seventeen, I think. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. Seventeen. See, I'll pay that for a house. That's fine, but I don't want to pay that for no apartment. For an apartment, yeah. Yeah, I bought my house when the market was good. I was trying to see the cost of living, but you're right. I wouldn't pay that for an apartment either. That amount of money, that's an investment. I'm literally investing in that. Yeah. Yeah, this is my aunt over there. I steal walls. (laughs) 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 More walls over there. Some more walls over there. Yeah. There's a ceiling too. Oh Lord, look at that. There's Wait a up. ceiling. <laughs> There's a ceiling with a fan. You oh you fancy girl. You she fancy. fancy. <laughs> but yeah, fancy. Oh man. But no, uh Virginia's cool. I have I'm a friend that's been trying to get me out. I want to apologize. I, I want to apologize. I'm not really sorry, <laughs> but I apologize for being in your personal business. <laughs> she really not sorry. I don't even know why she's saying I want to apologize. But I mean we grown. If I was looking she at the no, that doesn't know. bother me. Things like yeah. that don't bother me. You know, I it, didn't think it was an offensive question. He said, You all in his business? Like, I ain't asked him how much money they make down there. I'm talking about the cost of living. I would have just yeah. said enough. <laughs> I know that's fucking right. <laughs> no, but I have met people when you ask them how much they rent is, they say enough, like you're trying to be in their business. It's not that. It's not, I don't think it's a personal question. But no, because you know. they, they, we tend to make comparisons too. I mean, because people, it's easy to find out how much somebody pays in rent if you know. What, where they live, they live in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not hard. Like, some people be so it's whatever a matter of about absolutely nothing. I'm like, I'm just asking. I'm not. Well, judging. I'm gonna tell y'all where I live. But if you tell me ranking days. dollars in rent, I know you live in the hood. Off in Listen, I'm gonna tell you what. I in my little walking day city, two bedroom, seven twenty five. <laughs> I live in the hood. I'm from Youngstown, <laughs> Queen B. <laughs> huh? How much you pay? Six fifteen. Oh yeah, I had a listen when I lived in Youngstown. I had a three bedroom house with an attic and a basement and a separate garage Maybe for four twenty five. Somebody had houses for four twenty five. So I'm like, I had a house for four twenty five. I'm like, actually lose. I, I'm in like I'm like don't try to give me higher because I'm in Liberty. May I want to pay four something? That's that. I paid four twenty five for a whole house. I paid rent, but. Man, but, um, I would love to pay that. It's like it's like it's Listen, like I want, want it back too. Know. Youngstown See, is like back. if the I only go thing back. about Youngstown is nothing here. Is nothing to get get you motivated. I'm here because I did some crazy stuff, but I'm about to leave out of here. Thank God, he's amazing. Amen. But, um, want he do it? Yeah, he's amazing. Like seriously, my Always. God is amazing. Um, Always. But my I got God I, is I, I thought I was ever ever good. <laughs> But sometimes God gotta sometimes God gotta make you fall down so he can get your attention because mm. on some real stuff. Say that I again. Was not, Say I was again. not paying attention to him like I was supposed to. And during these two years of me having to be in a place I never thought I would have to stay again in my life, it I'm glad and I'm happy that he slowed me down so I can wake up. It humble it humbled the shit out of you, didn't it? It humbled me and it showed me that uh ain't nothing promised in life and you better um you know, so that's one thing that I had to learn. It's like sometimes when you start making money, especially when you made more money than you ever made in your life, mm-hmm. you get into this little bubble and you forget who the fuck you are and where you come from. Right. I had more problems. Right. Mm-hmm. God had to show me like, okay, all that can be taken away because I blessed you with that. So live next time mm-hmm. you get back up. Next time you, you live, right. yeah, you live humbly and you live like you can. That live. part. Mm-hmm. That part. Hey. Right. And Great I, sister. You know, that it's was like me. Word. I tell I tell everybody every day. You know, when you awaken, you've been given the greatest gift in the world. Right. You are allowed oh. to see another day. Keep you, you take nap sometime, according to Andy. She take nap. 
<laughs> you take nap, but she right. woke up. So, <laughs> on one of our episodes, we was uh, talking about dating white men, and Kiki was like, yeah, I did that, but being that I'm so woke, it fucked me up. I said, well, bitch, you need to take a nap. <laughs> wow. It was so I, I'm I, like, cool. I just, I have never, I just... <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And then, like the one thing that I give it to CL, because CL said it online with white people as our guests. She's like, I just can't because, of, um, you know, basically the past, like slavery and stuff. And that's one thing that I can't, I cannot, yeah. I can't get past that. Get like, past that. Because like I literally know what went down and how they They've raped, our, our, they raped our, 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 women our, and our children. Like mm. that's the type of people. And I know it wasn't them. It was their ancestors, but I'm like, hey, right. I don't care. I just can't. The apples don't run far from the tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, I, and and if there are any white people listening, I'm sorry. We love you. Y'all, y'all are amazing, but y'all as white women, I can't. I'm not. You know, I'm not gonna be sorry. My <laughs> preference. It's my <laughs> fucking preference because so. there is something about a black woman when she mm. comes into a room. That it just it's poetry. I'm sorry. I was raised by a predominantly female family, so I had it from all sizes, shapes, titty sizes, you name it. All that <laughs> we're talking from the athlete to how are you walking titties. Titties. <laughs> comparison, okay? Uh, emphasis on the titty size because he wanted to let you know the he don't titty size. On we're talking about from the A's to the triple H. I understand that completely. Okay. I have mm. mad respect for the female. He form. said, if you got some titties, you got to lift up to wash underneath. He fucked with you. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need for savagely. <laughs> you see her titties came all but, out. Like, right, right, right. I don't know about them. I don't know about all of that. To wash up underneath that bitch. Yeah. But see, here's a, but you know what? Here's the thing. Majority of the thirst traps that you see that are approached are black women because of course y'all because sisters know how to do it. Queens know how to do it. And when you see a woman with purpose. And and drive a determination. I'm not talking about these. Ooh, the chocolate. I'm not talking about the boss chicks. No, I'm sorry, cause y'all doing the most. I'm like, I don't need no man. I got money. Da, da, da. Oh, good for you. Live your lonely existence with your two dogs and three cats. Enjoy yourself. Oh shit. Okay, your menagerie <laughs> is waiting for you. I'm not worried about you. I'm talking about someone that I have a conversation with, where the first questions out their mouth aren't, "What do you do? How much you make? What kind of car you drive?" Um. Mm. Get to know me up here, and I'll answer those questions later. My white boy body count is zero two, baby. Fuck yeah, that. The, too, the only buddy. pink meat I like is ham. Fuck. I don't. Uh -oh, I don't. <laughs> work. It's, it's a nipple. I don't know why your nipples are pink. I can't get past that. I just can't. Because I, I like to bite nipples. You know. I, I walked in on the weirdest ass conversation every, every goddamn Yo, time. Every I step away. Time. I step away. This shit be calm, cool, collected. As soon as my, I leave you motherfuckers unsupervised, and it be like nipples, I ass know. cheeks. I, I, I don't know if he was. God like, damn. He was all the way white, like he was something. Because he's miscellaneous. So, he was something. I don't know what he was. <laughs> He was closer to white. He was closer to white than black, because he had an accent. But he was so, he smelled so good, and he was so handsome. But I couldn't get past, and this is crazy. I couldn't get past the skin color. Like I'm just like I can't do it. I got, I got, um, I got, um, say something like that. What I would call it, uh, I got race fish. So I met this white boy that I didn't know was a white boy because. I just felt like white, so I feel you. He he yeah. he, he raised fish me for years. Oh, John B. I did not know he was no white boy. Oh yeah, that's a white boy. Oh yeah, but, yeah John so B. Is like white as can be. He's white. But, yeah. not this, this, guy, but listen though, this particular white boy had olive skin. He worked outside, so you know Ooh, his skin. He, he had a perfect tan. He looked like a mixed breed. He had locks and shit and everything. So I'm like, all right. We got a little melodic dude. Right, let's see. I never fuck with them either, so let's see. Bitch. <laughs> we we'll kicked see him one day, and that nigga took his shirt off. I said, what the fuck? I mean, pale. I said, oh, hell no. Nah. But it was. Nigga. 
Okay, okay. Have, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a have y'all ever been on a date with the opposite? I mean, well, not the opposite race, but the white uh, person. Yeah, I, I did. I've really been like on a date and it's like we have nothing in common. Like my jokes where a black dude would get it, they're just sitting there like crickets going on in their head. Like, like, what does that mean? I'm like, like, you know, Tyler Perry. You're like, Tyler Perry. I'm like, oh, okay, forget it. You it's know like, what it was? You know what? You're being punished for going out with him. That's really why white. everything fell they flat. Because you were being punished. First. That's what that was. Don't you ever do that first. again. Okay. <laughs> Don't you ever. Ah, yeah, you know like, me? I could see if like we had something in common. We had nothing in common. And yeah. then like even his music down to his music, it was like I think it's one song where we where I knew what he was talking about. I'm like, okay, yeah, I heard that. You know what I mean? But yeah, this particular white boy had fucking tattoos of uh Volkswagen vans from the 70s and shit. I'm oh, like, oh hell no. White, white, white dude. You like a it, you tricked the shit out of me, yeah, nah. And I stopped answering his phone calls oh, no. and he was like, yo, what happened? My, I'm my like, favorite. yeah, nah. Did y'all say something what Montel said? Montel said that it's like poetry when a black woman walks in. There is nothing like a black man's presence. There is mm. nothing like it and i wish more men thought about his black queen how you do because i cannot stand how and there's there's, there's like black men that will and i'm cool date your white woman be happy with her but don't you ever compare her to me because there's no comparison because she doesn't live the life that we live dude like we go through the same thing we got the yeah. same color so I discriminated like you gone at bailey i saw that don't think she was gonna be I slick like about that i seen that what she say I see that Ain't comment. Like a white man that goes to a black barber. Your husband is black, girl. Be quiet. You <laughs> <laughs> gonna say a white man be fucking her, call her a nappy headed hoe, and she ain't got time for that. I feel you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> wow, well, I, need, we, I, we need are, I need a drink. Excuse me, I need a drink. And oh. I bust his front out. Is that assault or was that you know defending myself? You know that's self defense. <sighs> if if you love if you love who you love, that's okay. Yeah. But if you love what you love, my question is, if it's not within your own realm, what's the appeal? And I have asked that question, and I've gotten of people offended because why would you ask me something like that? Because I'm curious, you they ignorant no fool. Answer. answer the damn question. They had no. They had no answer. That's and why. they didn't. That's why they got upset. Yeah. I was like, well, and I just want. Me. Can we just put some? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so passionate now. Let me put my my black dudes on game. Uh, Except me. white woman, like what's between your legs. And sometimes that's all you're worth to them. Yep, you are a trophy. And so they will pay for you and let you drive their cars and be their little nigga. Mm -hmm. Because, and and I've seen this, I've seen this porn. This is what really pissed me off. I, 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 it didn't even turn me on no more. I was just like, okay, you know what? She said, she said, nigger baby i'm gonna have a nigger baby so like basically nut in me like she was just calling him he, oh, she was you calling already him. know that was that was oh gosh that type of porn was that like some fetish porn or something? Yeah, yeah yeah thank you yeah it was it's probably fetish porn because there's that type of fetish out there and i'm like it, 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 does this happen for real like do you get in arguments and the white girl call you out your name because I, I i know this one girl that was with my dude or whatever my friend <laughs> And yeah, she she, 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 she can things. say the N word in front of me because she says it comfortably in front of him. And I had to check her. I said, no, you will not say that word in front of me. That's the most ignorantest thing you can ever do. She was like, well, me and my, I said, oh, I'm not your name. <laughs> I said, get her before I put my hands on her. You know what I'm saying? It got to that point. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't she, that as well. Yeah, because she felt so comfortable because her man allowed her to, to disrespect him. <laughs> Man will have Kiki and Shaquita pull her ass and she ain't gonna say nigga no more. That part. <laughs> Y'all gonna have a lot of white friends. They're like, can I say nigga around you? Nope. No. Get in the habit to say around me or anywhere near me because I hang with different types of niggas. Mm -hmm. And when Shaquita whoop your ass, I gotta get my kick in for my answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. you? because I can handle shit because it don't bother me. Mm -hmm. But Shaniqua go whoop that ass and I ain't gonna be like I'm gonna be like Shanique well you ain't have to do it like that world star and then we <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I agree there is different levels like there's like me I'm gonna hear it and I'm gonna check you and if I hear it again then I'm a world star but there's some people they hear it once 
and it's world star. Like there's no yeah. thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like it's like zero to a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna escape the whole situation, but that's where I'm at in my blackness today. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know what I'm Maybe 20 years ago, I might have even responded. I won't even respond to you. It don't even get a rise out of me. But for some people, that shit, it, it cut deep. So again, mm-hmm. when Shaniqua drag your ass, I'll be like, world star! Ooh, <laughs> get on doing now. Like, it's not, y'all know I'm ignorant as fuck. But- me, it depends on where I'm at. Like, if it's in an intimate setting and like I'm at my people's house, I'm going to confront it. But if we're out in public and I know that there's a whole bunch of Karens and I know that nine times out of ten, I'll be the one in jail then I'll let it go. But as long as you don't put your hands on me. You know what I mean? All you got to do... F- I ain't even going to go there. We'll talk later. I would, say, I, w- I would say... Like neither. I would tell you the best power trip I've ever had, and it was unintentional, because Angie knows I work at a game and comic book store here in North. And I've oh, been... Really? Huh? You work where? I work at a game... A game what? Game... A- in comic book store. Game. Oh, I thought he said a gay. I'm about to say, okay, well, go Girl, ahead. we need to upgrade your computer. I mean, for real. We got to do this desperately. You were going in now. Yeah, you that was you. you. Yeah, you went in now for a second. You was like, I work at a gay. <laughs> it's going to sound gay. That's how like, okay? huh? I was like, gay? Okay. I was like, what? You work where? I'm you like, I'm, I'm, I'm about to say, you're going to talk about gay people tread lightly because they will come and shut us down. We uh, remember, here. I was never here. We done drag. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'll face it's no a regular case. comic book store. No, I work at a. Uh, <laughs> a regular I work comic at book a, store. Uh, a tabletop gaming and comic book store. And I've that been was there not, for- like you said, a tabletop and gaming comic book store. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I ain't even walk away this time. Back to the gay man. Twenty four hours of offending everybody on earth, and we found a lot of people to offend. How the he hell? We uh, left. No, y'all I pissed him off. I have, corner, oh apparently. shit! He put myself in the corner. Because I am being misunderstood over her. I put myself in the corner. corner next to the gay men in the comic store. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, come <laughs> back. I was, I was on the top. Well, that's what we do. Is see how we like, you, you come for me now? Really? He you works, come for me? He works my at. Don't know me. I play too much. I apologize. A tabletop. I know. So do I. You and comic book. So, you gotta announce it, like pretty woman. Gay guy at the comic. And what? Well, yeah, Angie, you're that. doing it in the comments, cracking the fuck up. Her comment is killing me right now. Oh, oh, man. Hi, man. I just. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we've come going. to, dear people. This is what we've come to. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Now she said you need the right the right white boy. You gotta get the one. I want I want, I want to John B's barber because I love <laughs> what? I'm telling yeah, that you, that was he tight. raced me for years. Y'all could not tell me John B went black. And I was gonna I was he gonna wasn't. John B. He wasn't. He I actually just told you. I'm trying to tell y'all, I was gonna give John B some pussy before I found out he was like, was white. <laughs> Did you just throw up in your mouth a little bit? Oh, no, 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 I want to give. I want to get my imaginary pussy that I gave him back. She said. He said, "Don't listen to what <laughs> people say. They talk about me being." Oh white. Lord, you thought he was a light skinned black man? Too? My pick. No, not me. So <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. So and she I'm thought gonna, he was mulatto, and he's and no lotto. Right. And just make parents. Oh I yeah, said. he at the back end of the drive. <laughs> But at the store, people will see I'm right now. I'm the only black person that works in the store between both locations, and I've been there longer than anybody else. So <laughs> you see me coming in, you you could just see the whole mood change. Yes, I heard. I doggone it, yeah, I heard it. And uh, there was a there was a bunch of sailors that came in, and you could tell they'd never been there before. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, man, everything was great. They saw me coming, like, hey, what's going on, guys? They got quiet, Mm-mm. and they looked at me. I said, so what we could do for y'all today? <laughs> Figure out if you was white or black. <laughs> no, they want to know if they can push me over and I'll beat their ass and then throw them out the damn stove. I ain't got no okay. problem hemming people up. Real quick. Listen, again, let me go back to what that in one said second. This morning. I got to tell him something that's important. What? Don't be beating up the gay men at the cover. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, hey, crime. Better keep your hands off gay people. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Hey, let me Come just back. tell y'all. 
Montel said this morning, he told the motherfucker, why are you here? Go eat your burrito. I'm, I can't oh, let yeah. that go. <laughs> what? Like, I can't I let did. that go. He told that nigga, why are you here? Go fucking eat your burrito. I the said hell? what I said. He said what he said. I said what yeah. I said. Why See, are you going to go Oh, go okay, Christy. Right. <laughs> I will fuck her name up. Her name, Christy. C A C A. Her energy. Her energy was amazing. I hope she come back tonight. She said she was coming back tonight. She said oh, she'll cool. be she'll be on in a little bit. Okay. But on that note. I'll be Man. in at 11. Look at my child. Hey. <laughs> hey. I love it. <laughs> On that note, Madam Queen. going to be laughing at me when I do my... Uh, Your Elmo. My Elmo. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you going to come Montel? back later, Montel? Huh? Hold on. Montel, do your Elmo. I knew she was. Oh, my God. Kiki. No, because I want you to do it, and then I want Kiki to do it. Because Kiki do a good Elmo, too. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, for real? You really do it like that? Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. Oh my gosh, I like her. You do it too. Let me hear what you gotta say. Come on. He got me beat. Do it, Kiki. <laughs> Come on, say it. Say it. <laughs> say it. Say it. He sounds just like Do it, Kiki. Do it. I did my. Do it. Do it, Kiki. Come on. Elmo loved the baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Elmo love big dicks. Big dick. What is Elmo gay now? What is Elmo gay now? Elmo gay. Every time I walk away from this goddamn computer, y'all like to cut up. I come back, I hear Elmo, and she like big dicks. I cannot <laughs> walk away from this computer again. Y'all is about CBS, uh, PBS. Oh, uh, LGBTQ, everybody gonna be on our backs. We have managed to offend a lot of people this weekend. I like it, but at the same time, it's been a lot of people. I know you gotta go back to Twitch, but man, your ammo is amazing. Over it, ammo is wild. It. Thank you. Elmo is crazy. To hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. I can I'll, as always I come in right when the shit gets gets <laughs> <rusty>. <laughs> <laughs> This is the story about the gay man in the comic book. Story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're uh, talking about Elmo like your big dicks too. Yeah, well, right. we'll we didn't we didn't we didn't offend everybody yet. Wait till we get to Scott Summers. Hey, you know, really getting on on there. Oh, well, that no, I am going to go Twitch. All right. oh, Later, oh, Montel. Oh, hey, Elmo, hey, y'all. <laughs> Dicks. I, I just wanted to say switch you know. I will pop you in. Leave, leave, it, leave it to CL. I will pop I'll be back, in later, I'll be back on a little All right, Martel. What's o'clock. up, Miss Angie? It's been a while. Okay, Kiki. Hi. See you later. All right. How you doing, Kiki? CL. <laughs> Annie, as usual. Is What's this going show? On? Oh, look, it was somebody else's show. I, didn't, I don't want to. I don't know. I just popped in. I don't know. CL, honestly, honestly nobody left for nobody's show. Everybody had who had a it literally time just, spot. It just, it literally everybody still was in everybody's show. Yeah, nobody left. Honestly, I think you the only one that had like other like you brought a whole crew with you, but everybody else legit. But that's been on everybody's show. Yeah. No. 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 No, it's a, I'm it's saying, a good thing. That's a, it's a good no, thing. No, I'm not saying that there's wrong with it. I'm saying like the way it went, some people were solo and they like, nah, fuck that shit. Stay with me. Let's chat. Stay it. So, with you know, let's me. Stay with it. So that's the that's that has definitely been one of the cool parts. But you know what else is cool? Different people is crazy. Not you. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? You know what? You know what we're not gonna do? What I'm tired of this goddamn disrespect. I'm I I started this barbecue business. Mute, you see, he is getting you, loud. Oh, what word? <laughs> Anywho, so like I was saying, oh, motherfuckers, it's, it's you can't Andy talk. Andy. You can't talk from outside of the club if you can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey! I bet you won't say another goddamn word today. Uh huh. <laughs> what, what, uh huh. What, 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 Hold on. Look at them. Hey, if y'all can see their faces right now, they both in the in a, in a fucking screen looking at me. Come back. Good behavior. Oh, uh, okay. Keep on. Keep on. It'll be another 48 hours in this motherfucker. Me put your ass backstage. All right. Nobody else coming on. I love you, Annie. I don't give a I, 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 I'm going to 
it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Keep on. You ain't gonna yell at me. God damn it. I want some goddamn respect. I deserve respect. Yeah, bring you back. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We gonna learn today. You gonna learn the goddamn today to respect me. Put some respect on my shit. Come on. Oh, hold on. Okay. Daddy, when you just did that. Yep. Put respect on my shit, boy. God damn it. I'm tired of this shit. I've just, been up 48 hours. Uh, no, nah, Andy, come on. Front. Damn, I was, no, I was done. I'm done. I'm done. No, but seriously, um, all jokes aside, this has been a great. Um, DC, you're a fucking clown, man. <laughs> thank you. I get it honestly. But no, it, it's been a. Um, Damn, they took my pick. It's been a great weekend. Um, you guys are amazing. I've met a lot of dope people who I didn't know through some of this, who I had no idea was following. Um, right. Some weird people, too. I watched some of them. I didn't even want to get in the studio. It's weird. But hey, hey, hey psst, we ain't done yet. They might come back. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. You're done. Wait, have that come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Time out. We're going to have that conversation. After six tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is earlier, but no, it's a lot of dope people um, doing a lot of dope things. Like Angie's here. I love what her and Montel's doing. <laughs> Annie, you're I'm just here. More, more, um, CL, more. I'm just here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but no, I mean, cause uh, you got to think about it like this. A lot of people has been soldiering on, thugging it out. You know. Uh, Taking cat naps and whole baths to get back on here. Like, I appreciate y'all. Nah, I took a shower, though. I, I ain't taking a whole bath today. Our podcasters, we had a white girl up in here. Yes. I love <sighs> He's come back. We put a little coming back with our pepper. She'll be back tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's been, it's been, no, and I'm, I'm trying to be for it. Like, it's been amazing. Like, I can't, like, I can't. Um, put into words, you know, how great this weekend has been. Like, beyond my wildest imagination. Like, I think that's why I haven't been on camera as much because I'm trying not to. to It's CL. 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 Don't do that. Party or not? Well, we've got no time for excuses. Don't do that. No, I'm not throwing a party. This is the party. But no, you guys have been amazing and it's been beyond my wildest imagination. Like, when this came about, like, I didn't know it was going to be this great and so many people was going to pitch in and, and, and stay and help each other out and network and grow. Like, it's been beautiful. Um, so I can't say that enough. I'm trying not to be all sentimental because I got a rep to keep. Um, I'm supposed to be an asshole. And if I start getting soft, soft on there. people. Hey, Annie. Manny. Now, now anime. Don't do not do that. <laughs> We're trying to continue talking and you want to have Keep talking. Go ahead. My bad. You know what? I ain't even here. He's giving everyone they just do. He's giving Like I'm trying Now here's the problem. Now if I was if I was cocky as fuck like I put this shit together, y'all got to pay me, but no. Nah, now nah, I'm trying to give people homage and it's like shut the fuck up. See? That's why I don't give people respect. That's why I don't pay homage. That's why I don't shut I ain't doing nope. After this, I'm going to sleep. I ain't giving nobody shit. Hour and fuck everybody. Do what you want to do. Just keep the stream going. We got you. Nah. But I will say this, DC. I believe. Nope. I don't want to hear it. Nope. I don't want to hear it. Nope, don't care. Cool. The man, the moment is gone. The moment is gone. I don't feel it anymore. I got a headache. Uh, I'm going to go. No, I got a headache. Hit the, hit the comments, wait, wait, DC. Wait, hit the comments, DC. Angie Dota shouting her out. She says, shout her out. She's lit. Yeah, she is. Man, Angie is dope. Lady. But no, nah, I don't. Yeah. I don't want. No, no. See, the moment passed because when I tried to do it, you told me to shut the fuck. This what you. When I tried to do it, when I when I tried. No, no. When I tried to do it, this is what you told me. Shut up, bitch. That's what you told me when I was trying. When I was trying to give people respect, you told me. Shut up, bitch. So I'm gonna shut up. But now I don't want to hear it. All I'm saying. He's trying to say. He's trying to say it. He's trying to say it. it's cool when y'all do it. But when he do when it. When I do it, it's, it's <laughs> fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> Make sure y'all uh. talking. That's all. Somebody had said something earlier in the podcast, and it was silent for like two seconds. I got nervous. I'm like, somebody say something. <laughs> that was on you. I'm like, oh, if shit. you fuck this up, I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, she's um, Ahmed. <laughs> I kill you. I'm like, Jesus. somebody scream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Angie, Angie, love how long have you been on, Angie? I seen y'all earlier. I 
She can talk back in. I can't like in like in like in about an hour now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I shared it on my Facebook, so. I'm glad you said that. I need to do that again. I, I need to share uh, it again, too. <laughs> <laughs> I need to share it again, too. Every time, <laughs> right. Okay. Well, share it again. I was like, we only had 22 likes, and we doing something for the culture. And I was like, y'all right, we got to reshare it, because that was crazy to me. Yeah, if you're watching, like. Yeah, when Raw said that, and I'm like, yo, that's. Yeah, if I'm you're like, watching, share this shit also. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Then put a like in your damn self. <clears throat> And right. like it, and if you've been it's on here, free. Like, it's free. Damn it, it's free. Like it, <laughs> like, I don't care. It, like it. Say, when we make it, we're gonna have us a party. Yes, it's, it's a party. It's a party. It's a party. Akron is real cheap to have a party at because their venues is real cheap too. That's why I was saying we should have a party. There should be. It's a party. It's a party. A party somewhere. Chris, uh, are you one of those candy corn eaters? Say it again. Were you wanted a candy? Oh candy God, candy? we not starting that uh, shit again. Yeah. Oh, Listen, my baby oh, is my baby devil. wanted them nasty candy corn eaters. Y'all the death eating that, that fucking. Shit all the time. This is what y'all be eating. Corn, but if you want to eat this, Fla- I think you're a serial killer. <laughs> what? What candy if corn? You eat what? No, those orange peanut circus peanuts. If you eat those, oh, oh that's my it. God. That's <laughs> oh. Who still buys these? I don't know. <laughs> My issue is who the that fuck is for this? Because they still making them, bitch. They, they still make. Come on, wants to you know, know who are we and ladies. how do we follow? I'm okay. I, I'm CL from Pussy Talks, and I'm your hostess with the mostest. <laughs> That's who I am. That's All right. Um, Monique, yeah. I'm Chris Fury of Blurred's Eye View. If you just go to Blurred's Eye View on Instagram, it'll send you to the link tree that's all in there, and it sends you to all the socials that's in the bio. So uh, you can catch us Tuesdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch handle Blurred's Eye View 1, and Thursdays, 9 p.m., same channels. And YouTube, Bye. of course. <clears throat> okay. And I'm okay. Annie, you know, they call me savagely hum. Uh, now I'm playing. Uh, I'm about to say, don't fall life. asleep again. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> it's a hard not life podcast. Um, I'm on every Friday, 8 30. I talk with uh up and coming artists of all flavors, all artistry. Um and like Chris said, follow me on Instagram, it's right there. And my link tree is in my bio as well. So yeah. Or oh, as my yeah. as my man Raw say, Google me. Yeah. Or tell your mama. I got <laughs> what? Why? Why is that Raw? I barely know to do like that, and I still I'm like, yeah, that yes. sounds. That's I'll the energy he gives. I also got a sex store at PussyTalks.com with over fifteen thousand sex toys. You and- can't sell the minors. Oh wow. <laughs> Wait, wait, why she said she said it like I know that shit. I'm the beautiful almost. like the real file from Ms. A- from I didn't know I can't speak from the foodie. That's what you'll find me on Instagram. Tell me who eating candy corn though. I just I need to uh mm-hmm. why. Oh, we had a full conversation about this shit earlier. Yeah, I was driving in the truck, I threw my phone, I was like, Is motherfuckers out here really eating candy corn? Like <laughs> well, still? Why did it all like it's a billion candies on we're on, on on earth. On Earth, with candy an F. Shit. How do you eat candy? And corn? people was eating candy corn. How you eat it? You throw it away. Throw it in the fucking trash. Matter of fact, I'd take a blowtorch to it. It's it ain't gonna melt. melt. It probably won't. <laughs> you know what? I think I think roaches and candy corn gonna be the only thing to survive uh, survive a nuclear strike. Candy corn is not delicious. It's gonna be the last food on Earth. We're gonna be starving eating that nasty wax. I'd rather eat Twinkies. That shit is wax candle. <laughs> And moose knuckles. That shit and fucking Burger King uh nuggets is the worst thing on earth. There's I swear to god the people like that shit is depression, sawdust, and moose knuckles. I can use that for 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 uh woodwork. No, people use that shit as sticky putty. <laughs> like you take the nugget and smack Burger King's nuggets. And you ever had Burger King's nuggets? I have. How what they taste it's like? Don't they take don't they taste like Rosa Park sitting at the back of the bus? I just I don't know. I can't put my finger on what. Neither could I. I was like, Ew, I'm never touching these motherfuckers again. Yeah, your hunger goes the away like really quickly. Consistency is a little different. A little? It's sawdust, boost and knuckles, get, like, and spackle. For a dollar. So you know why they've been a dollar. Let me tell you something. If something been a dollar for twenty years, <laughs> it's either good or they trying to get rid of this shit. They're trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Dreamo. Hey. Uh, Draymond, what's, what's happening? <laughs> in the shadows. Look, that's what I'm talking about. Thugging it out. She in the shadows. 
She wanna be she wanna be loud, but the baby don't. She don't wanna wake the baby up, so she got no, the lights she, out. She going to sleep. She going to sleep. Oh, but, so that's why the lights still out. We good. I got you. Yeah. You know, her dad over me. He like, you've been doing this podcast all all. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh welcome, I'm like, welcome to I... the quiet storm. Uh, you know. Welcome to the sexy couch. Sexy couch. couch. <laughs> After midnight, oh, we like to play that. Don't play no music. We don't want to risk it. It wasn't no music. It was Wait, welcome girl, to the yeah. sexy couch. Wait, which which I... Oh, that's DC. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I, I, I was I saying, <laughs> after I, like I was saying, you know, so Moose Knuckles and uh Burger King. If you say, please stop saying Moose Knuckles, please. That's what it tastes like. Their ankles. What? Oh, the um, the nuggets and Burger, Burger King's nuggets. They taste yes. like their ankles, Disgusting. depression, and spackle. That's what BK means. Bull knuckles. Bull knuckle nuggets. <laughs> I don't mean Burger King. I mean blue. Like them shits is horrible, man. And the fact, like, oh, and yeah, the fact that they still been a dollar because they trying to give them away. Like matter of fact, I bought a meal and they threw them shits in my meal. I was like, I didn't even order these motherfuckers. Y'all just out here throwing random ass shit in my bag for free. No, it's 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 a. It was like buy a cheeseburger. No, it was a it was a meal. It was like a, a sandwich. Uh fries and a drink and it was like oh and these nuggets i was like nigga this is an afterthought like he was just like we got five thousand in the back bag him up johnny broke people food yeah, it's <laughs> homeless people right now on the side of the road you give them to them they're gonna throw them back in your yeah, car give them back <laughs> I yo, said a dollar, yo, bitch. Remember, remember Miss Jerry and Martin when she, when she was like, I'm so hungry. Martin was like, well, I got this. Food. I don't want no damn tuna. Like, <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Fucking loose is. knuckles. How many hours you put in, Eddie? You've been on here like the whole shit. 32? Uh, <laughs> shit. I don't even fucking know. Coffee like, and no dough. Keep it high five. Probably. Every time I popped in, I see you. <laughs> Yeah, get it out. see it pop in, give a death stare, and leave. And leave. Uh, I'm probably on a good 18 or yeah, probably on a good 18 for sure. Shit. I don't know how many, I know I'm under 10, but I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Y'all got it. You got it. You got popping, it. I've been popping in and out, so yeah, me talk come out. I love it. I love the comments. You on here. I ain't seen you this whole time. He yeah, was on earlier. Who, Chris? Yeah, I, I came, I came, yeah, he I came, I came, I came on at 7 yesterday, jumped on again at 1.30, got in the earlier today at around, what, 2.30? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's not it's, it's not a competition, yeah. but I've been here. We're just trying to support you, just, just, I know, I appreciate it. Like, no, 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 we're not going back to that, because when I tried to show people love, you told me to shut the fuck up. Remember, I was like, hey, everybody's cool, and you was like, shut up, bitch. Was remember that? that? <laughs> remember that? Did you remember that? Wasn't that long ago? How can you forget? DC, I bought you a lot of pots. Oh, yeah. I appreciate. It. I, I was trying to show you love, but you didn't want it. Even no, the, the even no, no. Here's the, see. Here's the problem. When when I'm a nice guy, people are like, oh my god, fuck that nigga. When I'm an asshole, he be like, why DC such an asshole? He needs help. He's an asshole. He mean. Pull up. Let me see what she doing. Who? Auntie. She probably drinking that uh peanut butter whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to Chris Stapleton. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> in a pickup truck, <laughs> petting Yo. her dog and beating her husband. Yo. You know, country music is like the weirdest genre. It's like the opposite of black music. They like beat their wives and um, hold their dogs. They be like, I just uh, made love on a buy neon sign. <clears throat> Crazy. I don't know why it was a random thought. Yo, why did Deshaun Watson's truck get stolen? Uh, what? Probably because he didn't pay that money. Yeah, he, 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 no, it was his truck and four other trucks at the Dagon Mercedes dealership. I mm. think oh wow! Court. In Cleveland? Yep, North Olmstead. Of course, North Olmstead. I'm like, that's the football player, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Allegedly, a hundred thousand dollar truck. Now, here's the thing: unless yeah. you know somebody who's going to strip said truck. You, you really can't do anything with that. Shit, you better call a little Ray Ray and them nigga. I know somebody can do something with that truck. I mean, allegedly, I know some people who might be able to. Allegedly, no, no face, no case. I don't know nobody who could. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Move that truck. Uh, 
So anywho, like I was saying, I don't know nobody who could do anything with that drug. So yeah, you're right. So that's the thing. I'm like, the, let's face it. The the common criminal really ain't that damn smart, especially once it was an inside them. job. Yeah. Just like what was it? Two a couple weeks ago, somebody. It was like four dudes. It was like twenty truck or twenty cars got stolen from a dealership. But they showed a video and it was like four dudes. And I'm like, how the hell did four dudes steal twenty cars? Like Jesus. none of that. None of that makes the math. It bad. actually, it actually do because what you do is you pull up. Never mind. I'm not telling y'all criminal enterprising. We ain't here for that. <laughs> I watch Leverage, so I know how to do it. I told y'all how I used to uh, impersonate the food inspector. I got away with it. Lord, that was a funny ass story. But it was true. Yo, wait I'm telling you, you'd be surprised what you can get away with if you assert yourself like you know what's going on. And you just walk in like you own the place. I need the story. I need the story. So okay, I went I went to a job interview and I was a little early, you know. And when I get bored, I do stupid shit. So I was like, I wonder if I could walk in here with this little satchel and pretend to be a food inspector. So I walked in the motherfucker. I looked around. I was like, hey, you. And the was like, yeah. I was like, hey, Johnny Skanowski, food inspector. He was like, oh, okay. I was like, uh, give me some of that tea. I drank the shit. It tastes like piss. I was like, this tastes like piss. <laughs> give me some of that cola. Cola. I was like, this tastes like rust. Give me some of them fries. I want to see if they are weighted right. So he gave me a large fry. I was like, oh, this is rated right. I was like, cool. It's like, now give me a burger. I want to see if your bun to patty ratio and your cheese to edge and pickle to bun, you know, and condiments oh is God. on point and make it a double because, you know, people like doubles. So then I seen a dude who was supposed to interview me walking. I was like, oh, yeah, that's look good. And I walked out the back door. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, everything looks good. Uh, You got an A. I'm out. So it was fucked up. You put you pulled the John Leguizamo. That's what you did. You I was bored, man. You when I was young, I was, I was. I was. Right, I'll be back. Work. I'm going to sleep. We got sleep. All right. You sleep? I ain't sleep. Gonna sleep. Yeah, I'm going to take a nap. I'll be back. Sleep is for She'll be back. <laughs> man, I've been here all fucking day. She, she has. Right. No, she Annie, don't awesome. let them put pressure you I'm into not, doing some I'm shit. Not. I think I only took off like an hour, maybe two hours. No, bro. I'm just saying, like, sometimes you got to just, you know, figure out what you can do. You walk into Toys R Us and be act like you're a toy inspector and just <laughs> take walk out with some toys. This, this, so whatever happened with the Santa, job, though? Hey, Santa sent never me. I it. never got it. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Draymo, did you not just hear me say I impersonated a, 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 a food inspector? You, I said <laughs> a whole interview. <laughs> Shit. Fuck it. Might as well um, keep going. <laughs> Hey man, hey, sometimes you gotta figure out what you can get away with. Sometimes you never know what you can get away with until you test your limits. Or until you go to jail. Hey, I, I, I ain't in jail. Like and the statute of limitations is technically up now, so I can talk about it. Yeah. My karma too. I did some shit like that. I would have went to jail. No, be, look, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take anything. Yo, what happened? I didn't flash a badge, so it wouldn't be incriminating because I didn't flash a badge. All I did was I said it, who I was. It, the dude believed me. Incriminating, use the right words. Huh? You said in, incriminating. I said no. It, was, it was, wasn't impersonating because you didn't no. show up. Well, whatever. Anyway, the, the I, it's not my fault. Dude was the dude believed me. I couldn't help that. I was very he, convincing. He, he assumed that DC was. Yeah, he assumed that I was who I said I was. <laughs> He didn't have to see no badge, no paperwork, no nothing. I had a little satchel with me. He seen the satchel and thought I was official. That's more his fault than mine. If you really look at it, I blame him. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's not my fault. Do y'all use the same pictures? Y'all try to get new ones. I try to get new ones. Yeah. Try to get I tried to too. I tried to like put on a wig and shit. I ain't got no pictures for this man. Oh, you mean like of yourself? Yeah, myself. I generally don't. I don't. <laughs> I, don't I always throw the logo, the logo up, and then it always, it's like a different background or something. No, when you do a, a magazine interview. Oh, magazine interview. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different picture. Yeah. If yeah, I can, okay. yeah, different picture. That's what my issues. I ain't took no pictures. I might get in the bathroom taking pictures, and I don't know. It's all the people you know. I gotta get. I gotta get some new ones done because I'm putting together a media kit. I got this amateur uh, 
photographer. Well, she's getting a lot better. She's a white lady. I'm going to ask her to come take some pictures of me. I lost 20 pounds since the 2nd of uh, January. What you doing? Running? Oh, yeah. Well, how, how you do that? I've been swimming every day. I'm getting married in February, so I got to come down for these pictures. Okay. I don't even Welcome. know how to swim. That's, oh, I used to be a lifeguard. I, I can swim a lot. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm there too. I really don't know how to swim on damn self. Yeah, nah. I almost drowned at an um, amusement park lake one time, and that just fucked me up for life. I like, almost drowned at Cedar Point in the pool. <laughs> I can I can hold my breath like a song, bitch, but I don't know how I pulled it off. I don't <laughs> I know who you are, El Monique. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, well, well I didn't see the comments but me. Uh, I can't you see ain't looking. Yeah, just uh, oh, hey. hey, did I tell you all the time I almost drowned? I thought no. I was I, I couldn't swim. And it was like this boy's summer camp. And you know how you get hyped up. You're like, yeah, I can do it. So I jumped off the diving board. And you ever get that moment where you in the air and you see the water <laughs> and like, your life, <laughs> your life <laughs> flashed before your eyes. <laughs> you, you, as you hit the water, you be like, damn, I ain't got insurance. Did I pay the light bill? Did I even get life insurance? Oh, I'm about to die. So I die instantly. I hit the water. I start panicking. You know, they say don't panic. What's the first thing you fucking do? You fucking panic. panic. None of that panic. shit works. Like all that, no. like don't panic. You 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 put yourself up. I fucking floated like a rock, straight to the bottom. <laughs> Fetal position in the bottom of this goddamn pool. <laughs> He's so he sucks. So so look, they pull me out and give me CPR. Now I'm looking around trying to play. How now I'm thinking like, how can I play off almost dying in front of all these kids and still be cool and save face? So there's no way to come back from almost dying. It's like ah, nigga, you almost died. I was just like, <laughs> fucking Damn. badass kid. Anybody got so an they, but but look, they made me sign one of them forms to be like, I'll never jump back in the water again. <laughs> <laughs> I almost died, man. Twice. Man. Nobody. Got you? Tell us a story about the time you actually did that, um, DC. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, you died before? Shit. I did? I don't even know that. <laughs> I, <thought laughs> I, lie I know y'all hear me. Don't play. Why would me. I lie? Yo, uh, that really you happened. Let this nigga in. I'm really I know y'all hear me, god damn it. Acknowledge uh, me, god damn it. I can't see it. That's that's a, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, you said acknowledge me. <laughs> bird. <laughs> oh my god, god damn it. Shit. You See, why would you like think I'm lie to you? That really happened. I'm gonna die. Don't you ever leave us with your sister again, okay? Because I swear <laughs> y'all like the same person. Huh? Okay. What are you doing about I CL? Swear CL and her sister is like the same person. I swear oh. to God. No. She oh my God. Out, didn't she? Huh? <laughs> she cussed you out? No, nah, she knew better. Just like you knew better. Yo, oh. he be on his bullshit every time he come in here. Yeah. <laughs> Me. If he see me, he gonna fight with me. I don't know what it is about him. All he, the time, I, Chris. I what up, I'm, my guy? What up? What up? I don't know you, Miss a Angie. Angie the foodie, but how you doing? How you doing? I'm the crazy yeah. podcaster. She be That's nine crazy. Kids. The microphone. Nine of them. Everybody getting respect out this motherfucker. Draymo, head. what up? And CL tags me to start my Draymo. If you write a review <laughs> on on how oh my this, god. March to uh, the record has oh been. God. What oh would your God. review be? Ten my stars. Review, an honest review, yeah, it'll, it'll be ten. Ten stars. Yeah. Definitely. It gotta um, be. We definitely threw a hell of a party. No, definitely ten stars. I mean, I, I feel like Shit. um the what what the 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 what what the blur the blurzy the I can't I can't what what are y'all? Y'all you? Blur yeah, y'all, 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 segments though. I ain't gonna hold. Yeah, and I'm an honorary <laughs> member of the Blur's Eye View, even though they won't let me in on the show. But it's cool. Hey, though. You gotta call. You, you know? gotta hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like y'all, y'all, y'all take over segments. Y'all definitely come in yes. with y'all shit. I, I be like, okay. I, I, I can't I get on what the shit. I can't in. get on Blur's Eye View. It's just uh, oh, time out. <laughs> hold on there. Hold on there. Don't come on this motherfucking blasphemy and then this motherfucker just start coming on here telling all kind of lies. <laughs> 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 this nigga was no, like, I mean, yeah, what this on the table. What's up, niggas, bro? Niggas be taking no, sneak disses on me on all on the table. It's all I've good, though. We finna go to war. We, my my soldiers suited and booted. 
We going to war with all on the table next wait, week. Wait, oh wait, I just Damn. realized something. Damn you, raw! I just realized something. <laughs> what the fuck I do now? Oh, <laughs> we going to war earlier, man. Huh? We going earlier. And this track about big man. The cross-eyed <laughs> bandit is going to war. See y'all oh, next shit. week. God damn it. <laughs> we going Listen, to I war. Got my next on. I don't week. care. <sighs> Philly versus Chicago is going. Enough down. from the clown. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm trying to get out of me. All I did was walk in the room. How I walk in the room and walk into the middle of a wall? Like I don't hey. even know, bro. Cross eyed nigga, give me next head. week. Big smash versus the world. God damn it! It's coming. <laughs> Big smash. I'm glad you got your hair cut, but why they got your hairline so close to your eyebrow? Oh Just lord, wow. yo, wow. No, haircut. I said it was nice. Wow. Oh, hey, hey, CL. That's not how you ask the question. What you do is you ask him to wipe his forehead to see if it's real. That's what you're supposed to do. Wow. All right. You are definitely on my war list for next week. Don't worry about it. I didn't call you cross-eyed. Are you really cross-eyed? I'm, I'm finna turn Kanye on all you niggas. Apparently, you didn't watch the episode, so I'm you don't understand why we call him I'm finna turn Kanye on all you motherfuckers next week. Just watch. He is cross-eyed. Oh, you, you got know it? what? I did. I heard you because he don't fuck with ugly bitches because he cro- he won't fuck with a bitch because she cross eyed because he cross eyed. He cross eyed. Yep. You want to kind of, but I'm all right though. What the? Let fuck? me see your cross eyes. How about no? <laughs> he, won't show it. <laughs> he won't show it. You will not he be able it. to screen record me and use that as a meme or some shit. I am not going. <laughs> I definitely. I am very smart. One of the little squeeze dolls. Oh, okay. Eyes okay. All right, oh, but welcome. Right. What what is this? The blurs? The blurs? I view hour. Nah, nah. Nah, but I just welcome, in. welcome, I just welcome in. to the revamp blurs eye view. I'm your host, Big Smash. You know, uh <laughs> can't take the name. It's copyright, baby. <laughs> now blurs by yeah, 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 yeah. That's thick. why I said it's the revamp. Y'all gang. Y'all I didn't gang say gang. the original. I said it's this nigga revamp. got I'm too like a bug. <laughs> like he was you, can't, you can't you can't take it. Look, <laughs> ship captain is always gonna be the ship captain. You can't roll, you can't take the ship. <laughs> Hey, that's what we do. That's what me and Raw do. We take over shows. Hey, Raw. 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 Hey, hell, she know. Hear me talking to you, Raw there ass. You go. There there you go. CL lost Call her show shit. for a night, and she ain't invited niggas <laughs> back since. <laughs> I like the only, re- the only reason why I haven't been on CL shows because her show is the same time as uh, as my second show. So No, I mean, no, no, no. It's not CL show. It's the Big Smash and Raw extended show because we took that shit over. Right. Okay, all right. So it's it's not Pussy Talks. It's Big Smash and Raw featuring the rest of Pussy Talks. Okay. <laughs> is this nigga? Is this? I leave for two seconds. This nigga still doing hostile takeovers. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? I ain't seen Boom all weekend. Where Boom? You uh, He in San Diego. <laughs> With the lot lizards. Hey man, shout out to my Ravens right now. They 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 about to do the unthinkable. They about to upset Joe Burrows. He uh, he ain't stopping. Oh shit, he really? Get on. They about to upset Joe. Cause if they don't, I'm done with this march to the record yes, shit. Yes, I ain't getting back on here. You said you're gonna have <laughs> you having a whole Rob, Robert, you gonna be upset. Uh, who, whose bands is this? Who is Robin? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie though. I was wondering where the fuck <laughs> is Robin. I ain't see who in the whole know, damn big the whole time. I like oh, I, you I think just, I you, hold, hold on now. Big big just, you got too many you. big homies for me. I think inviting random strangers in here. Yeah, you got too many big Robert homies Robert. for me. She finna get fired. I'm cool on all her and her big homies. Yo, shit. No, everybody, her auntie and uncle. Everybody yeah, old shit yeah, fucking with you. She doing too much for me. I'm cool. Like you can't. No, boom is actually, I think, on the road, so he couldn't make it. I think he was in the comments like the first night, though. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Always on the road. What? What's the difference? Nah. No, you know I what? That's funny. That was... on Raw show. Why you couldn't stop Hey, man, I'm going to invite my guy Roscoe on here, man. been on my show and not been on the road. Hey, hey, hey. We got a five no niggas I don't know limit. So we, and y'all starting to wear that motherfucker out. 
Wait, what? I still got a few hours left before we up to like three now. <laughs> two left. Y'all each got one. Somebody two left, and then I'm cutting motherfuckers off now. I'm starting looking if back. I bring, if I bring motherfuckers in here, then you know they validated. All right? Hey man, if I don't know that motherfucker, they gonna get violated and be in the backstage. Validation, because they get the ultimate big smash rub. If I let niggas in, and tell oh, here you go. Oh, hey, we in here. All right? That did not sound right, man. Hello. Hey, hi. Hey, how's it going? Hey, 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 smash, 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 smash. Not today. It's anywho. Titty smash, you yelling. Shut the fuck up. Hey, my nigga. Collected half the collective comments drooling and you like, nigga, I'm about to be angry. Smash, ah, hawk, smash, ah. Fuck titties. Uh, <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Robert Holmes is my guest. My spot is at 10 o'clock. So I told him to get, get here early. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, you good. Also, she trying to kick us out? Oh, yeah. no, I'm not trying to kick y'all out. I'm, listen. Hey, when, everybody got to go. Y'all all, all, go, all go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, DC. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Hey, I always <laughs> want to do that to somebody, man. My bad, man. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, DC, that shit feel good, don't it? It do. <laughs> hey, hey, I was watching Avengers, and that motherfucker was like, "You were saying something." <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't kick them out. I just give them. The, I just put them on mute. That shit pissed motherfuckers all the way off. DC did boom like that. <laughs> when boom was going on his rant, he just muted his shit. All you see was. Yeah, that shit was funny Man. as fuck. Don't put me on mute because I'm going to unmute myself. <laughs> That's why I put a motherfucker backstage. You can't unbackstage yourself. I mean, shit, I just go live. <laughs> <laughs> now we got now we got a fucking diss war because this nigga all live calling me motherfuckers live. and all and no, I, I, tell can, it, I feel hey, like hey, do week, not go well, do not go support the march no nah, i'm just playing i wouldn't do that. <laughs> like next week, all his instagram posts is going to be about everybody that's been on this motherfucking every show. last one of y'all he goes hey. all, all of us out that's going to be a long post except for miss miss uh dan and i she ain't did nothing and miss Fo foodie yeah, ain't you did can't, nothing you can't and everybody else that walk in the door everybody the else is war from draymond i'm going to write a big ass review you gotta leave him alone yeah. <laughs> so what is the name of, hold on what's the name of your show uh the lauren hour podcast with lord danny okay lord danny. Uh, lord welcome lord. thank you for uh joining us on this um weird ass endeavor because it got off the rails quick motherfuckers <laughs> don't know how to act people eating candy corn people um hey, ride candy. bikes first and then get on tricycles no motherfuckers. <laughs> what? Fuck how feel. candy corn is good as shit fuck candy all corn is nasty as fuck candy, 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 corn, is candy, 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 candy corn is the best candy ever. people who eat candy corn don't use rubbers <laughs> It's the best hey. candy ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds about right. Because right. if you risking your life eating that if candy, you eat candy corn, you got COVID. I'm married. No, you don't. Well, I ain't never had COVID either, but fuck you still. Fuck if you <laughs> eat candy corn, Jeff. you listen to fucking Duran Duran. Hey, man. You know what? Candy corn might be the cure to COVID. Because if you never had COVID. Candy you corn you might be the cure to everything, but I ain't about to find out. <laughs> No, everybody in my house that had that shit at least once, but me. <laughs> Damn. 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 We're all probably just, just like, I'm gonna have just a this candy corn. <laughs> everybody in your house can't have candy corn. Candy corn. Like, 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 you had that shit. You just no, I had didn't. a symptom. I didn't. I didn't get it at all. You lucky you probably didn't have any symptoms. No, I did not have it at all. Your wife had you got it. Tested. That's because he eat candy corn. <laughs> I tell you, it's the cure. <laughs> When that they, is when the they cure. basically when, no. the, when the first person got it, I was working out of town at the time. So when the first person in the house got it, I happened to be leaving the day he found out he had it. So then everybody else got it after that, and I was already gone for like two weeks. This so nigga bought a Joe Jackson. Listen. I'm going to get some cigarettes. <laughs> 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 hey, Duke, you're in there sneezing wrong. I'll be back. I'm going to get some cigarettes. Yeah, I'm get some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> going to get the tires out the pool. Hey, that's fucked up. He's like, you, hold on. He was looking at the signs. Runny nose, sneezing, <laughs> eyes water, wheezing. Yeah, the, I think word just called me. He said 2 a.m. is the free slots, right? 
Uh, Dremo, I ain't gonna lie to you. Ain't no free slots because every time I'll be like, Yeah, there's a free slot, motherfuckers be like, Yeah, I'm staying. So I ain't telling nobody there's a free slot. I want niggas to get the fuck out for once. Like, niggas go home. Like, you know how a motherfucker you invite somebody to your house for the. Hey, I feel like a nigga who invites y'all over for a sleepover and I'll never do this shit again. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, no, um, honestly, I think two to six, um, 8 a.m. to 11, and then I think after that, it's a uh, home stretch, everything is full. So, if y'all want to thug it out from um, two to six, y'all more than welcome. Uh, I think two to uh, 10 to midnight is a uh, queen candy again, so. Um, no, I think I, I know Flynn's at eleven. Night. I know that. Okay, oh, yeah, Flynn. Yeah, midnight Eastern. I do believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flynn's at eleven. He, he told me he's at eleven. Eleven, 11 his sleep time. Over, I'm gonna bring my key. Eleven, 11 his time. So he yeah, he's on midnight. Midnight to one, and then after that, we open. I believe. Um, but I'll let everybody know. Like I said, um, yeah. Let me know. I think about jumping back on. I got you. I'll come back if I'm up. I think about I'm here. It. I'm no. talking my shit. I don't care who I'm I claim here. part of two <laughs> for putting bids in. This ain't Tarjay. I mean, I did too. I said I'm going to come at the dark. But I mean, if, if, if it's too full, I'll be in the comments. It ain't going to be too full. You know why? Because I got why? control. I'm going to kick a nigga out. You ain't going to kick okay, me out. Okay, so well, I'm going to come back because my daughter, look, as you can huh? see, she's sleep. All right, so if you you know once you start kicking people out, we just gonna have a party in the backstage, right? I know yeah. what I'm saying. Like I don't know why he think he's stopping some shit. Hey, I'm telling why you, why can't why can't you see all the people that's backstage? Like why we can't have our own party back in the backstage? Because this ain't that kind of thing. Like oh, the the new thing I got, you can see people. It's called yeah. uh, EVMX or something like that. You can see everybody who's in the stream, and you can also it's like a walkie-talkie on there, so we can all be backstage and talking while uh, everything's going on. Yeah. Streamyard don't have that, so that's why I switched over. No, that actually, yeah, yeah. that's actually dope right there. It's actually dope. Um, if y'all free, uh, damn, it's a lot of people here. You I want to do that shit here. on the rollcast too, too. Like, have motherfuckers in the backstage and shit where only you can hit their ass. Oh, I'm getting that motherfucker at the end of the yeah, month. That motherfucker so dope. <laughs> I'm getting the rollcast well, too at the end of the month. Back. Don't I'm even tell me. That's back. why I'm putting all this extra OT in. What the I'm fuck is rollcaster? I got the rollcaster one, but I'm about to sell that after I get the two. What is that? Oh, okay. Oh, it's yeah. It's this right here. It's a dope piece of equipment. Oh, wait. Damn sure that's what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm trying to show some shit. That ain't no DJ equipment, sir. That's a podcaster's best friend right there. Man, listen, I don't need none of that shit. I talk enough shit for all of us. Nah, man, nah. This this shit, this shit legit. It's all you need to record. If, if you Everything. never had a, a, a computer and you wanted to just record. This motherfucker is the shit. You can literally, if you, let's put it like this. If you did a live on IG and was using that, you can still post it. Yep. Like on Facebook or anywhere else. Yep. Straight out. Yeah. The audio, yeah, it's it's slick. I got a part. DC, DC got one. I got a couple partners that got them. I got one, yeah, but I'm about to upgrade my shit. A roadcaster? Yeah, Yeah, roadcaster. I think the price is still the same because it's kind of like the hottest thing out there. Let me test it out for a little bit. Yeah, right after I buy the other one, you can buy this one. Yeah, yeah. What's happening, yo, selfish, man? man? Listen, listen, listen. People in the comments, man. Y'all, y'all like and share and send this to your people and tell them what the fuck we got going on over yeah, here. Yeah, because it's still on twenty six right? likes. That ain't shit. We need to know. Get y'all people in here, man. Y'all support us. We gonna give y'all the dopest content y'all can ask for. You got some dope creatives on here right now. Share this shit. Text it to your friends. Shit. Write it on your titties or something and send it. Send it. How the fuck? Man. Especially if you got world feeders. What you talking about? Send it as an attachment to your guy or something and tell him to check it out. This is where the party at. You know what I'm saying? And Come we've on, been man. dropping a lot of game on this joint. A I'm lot of definitely. game. It's been a play. lot of game dropped in this yeah, last part. Because I'm ready to see what Laura, Laura, Laura Danny got to talk about. I'm waiting to see that. See, we about to get deep over here. Uh-oh. We about to get oh. deep. Oh, yeah. you, know, you, know, you know we like it deep. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah, we know nine times over. Look, Ron was messed up after that. He was like, he just, you know, messed up my rotation, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, how you you can't say nothing after a motherfucker say some shit like that. <laughs> you just no. gotta shut the fuck up and let it keep going. 
he almost caught that 45 second mark from everybody yet, man. Right. <laughs> man oh wait somebody else backstage all right that okay. might be my peeps jazz yeah yeah that's my girly that's my co-host no, nah, I mean, because I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I've seen a lot of people pop on here. I'm like, do we? Are these people a part of this, or they right. just got to stream illegally? <laughs> so, like, so, so my name that you're gonna see pop in is gonna be B Vaz, Mr. Holmes, um, someone named Shafka, and Jazz. Those are my peeps. Okay, okay so man. we got Holmes, we got Jazz. All right, so you got about three more. Anybody okay. else? I'm cutting. I'm playing like a more. bouncer in the club. I'm cutting them out. That's fine, because I don't know. <laughs> what you doing when you're going? <laughs> Uh-huh. No, because I'm I, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people, I was like, uh, do I let these people up? Are they with somebody, or they just got to stream illegally and just was like, I'm fuck it, yeah, I'm so out here hacking. Send this to your people. Tell your people. Call your friend. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Cause you not gonna get a car. You not gonna get a car. You not hey. gonna get a car. But still, tell your people. Hey, Chris. I also never gave. I only gave away two movies. This whole thing, I was supposed okay, to give away ten. You know, we we got time. my participation. Yeah, we, I don't care. We, we got. Uh, we got that was for the people in the comments, but it. But here's the problem: everybody in the comments started being people who was on the stream. Niggas jumped out the stream <laughs> to jump in the comments to try to win the movie. Like I don't know that motherfucking name. Like I wasn't gonna recognize a nigga in the comments. This nigga went and changed his hat and put on a different shirt. Like I wasn't gonna recognize this motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I fucking jumped in the comment like I'm straight. Everybody, oh, shout wow. out, shout out, shout out to Chris for 100. What is it, 100 episodes? Shout yeah, out to Let the we Stick for their yeah. future 100 episodes. Wednesday, you, Wednesday bro. is my 100 yeah, episode. 300 episodes on the way, god damn it. So, yes, milestones yeah, galore, I don't even know Congratulations to all of you guys. I couldn't Thank even you. tell you how many episodes I got. That's the crazy part. I just got a lot of them, motherfuckers. I had to keep track because I like to, um, Benchmark myself to know. Yeah, Rolf, you know. come out with a new show. We gonna shut down all these motherfuckers. Right. Uh, yeah, right. I'm gonna start keeping track because I don't even know what episode yeah, I'm on. How long you been doing your show? Um, not even a year yet. So. Oh, okay. oh you got time. Don't worry exact, about it. I got time to okay. catch it up next you month. Can find your exact year. number on on like uh the Apple Podcast or like Anchor or some shit. They get your exact number. Yeah, mm-hmm. we gonna be. Like, yeah. we that's the between. thing. Like, I started out all YouTube. Then I did basically only audio. Then I switched back. So now I'm doing audio and YouTube. So I ain't about to sit here and try to go do the math my damn self. It is what it is at this point. It's a lot yeah. of shit out there everywhere. That's all these blurs you got in here, they do that shit. Get, tell them, throw them a couple dollars and, and you know, <laughs> oh, man, shit. I'm, dude, I'm, we'll backtrack I'm, that. We'll backtrack. Keep, <laughs> we'll back keep Charlie. I don't spend money where it don't need to be. I don't need to that shit. Stop being stingy, man. Hey man, stingy Steve. Fuck you. All right, mean. man. Stingy, 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 stingy Steve and the Cross Eyed Bandit show coming soon. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are we? <sighs> all right, all right, guys. This point, I, I'm this gonna, point, I'm gonna sign back. up for it because I, I gotta come back for the After Dark show. Because I got. Something. All right. Say. Yeah, the after dark show gets spicy. They be talking about uh, oh, wet oh, feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, throwing yeah. hot dogs down hallways. When you get Kiki in the building, yeah, I that's what I heard. Come come back back get Kiki in the building, they be Kiki in all damn night. <laughs> I gotta, hey, I, I think don't come and call body government. language. The fact, the fact that Annie went and took a nap so she could get back on after dark, this shit going. Yeah, crazy. that shit oh, gonna be crazy. Deep. That's deep. Annie is dedicated though. Yeah, yeah. I might bring some strippers in tonight. All right, so even better. <laughs> as long as they got world feeders, don't bring no A cups in here. Oh my god! Oh my god. World all right, man, see, don't, don't knock me down been... if I bring these strippers in here. All right, all right, I got you. I'm gonna knock you down. You said knock you down. All right, not see that's the, that's where you supposed to have us all in the motherfucking backstage. We can enjoy the party while y'all talking shit. DC asked me on bullshit, man. All this day, why, every day. This is why I don't like talking to you. What the shit, niggas, man. I'm tired of y'all ass, man. Shit. Chris, the only one that get a pass. You other motherfucker that that be on what the shit is smoke next week. I'm back outside. Oh, he had to show his face to this one. Yeah. I'm about to get all these niggas. I'm about to get on some real murder shit, B. Anybody uh. that ever fucking said something about me? Owes me money, kick me off they damn live stream. It's fucking dead, B. <laughs> hey, hey, Draymo, 
Think about it like this. You got invited, and I knew this nigga longer. He ain't even pretend to invite me on his show yet. I didn't even put that up there. Oh, blood it. I swear to God, this dude don't invite nobody to his shit. But I swear, next time I get on that shit, I'm taking over. <laughs> you heard it from me first. It's what the shit. It's Big Smash featuring what the shit. God damn it. <laughs> Big Smash featuring what the shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> J-Mo, see the thing about inviting people is you don't tell everybody shit. <laughs> Especially when I gotta spend five, fifteen more hours with these motherfuckers. Now I gotta hear this nigga DC. I've known him for a long time. He ain't even invite me. I was trying. Here's the problem. See, J-Mo is just getting started, so I wanted her to be able to experience the show. You motherfuckers is established. Like y'all niggas is bigger than me. On my two hundred. Oh my god. I let this nigga on my 200 <laughs> Are we done? Okay, man, look I, Look, man, if I can invite everybody, I would But see, the way my shit set up One time, and this nigga, this nigga DC Started acting funny then Like, once I gave him that rub and put him on so you please stop no, saying that shit. That, that shit, that. fucking, that. it's ladies in here, nigga. That shit, biggest. Yeah, they looking at us like these niggas out here giving each other the rub. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, please do not do that. We don't even know them like that. They brand new. Like they, why would you do that? <laughs> jazz, jazz is already looking like, oh, these niggas. I know what time it is now. Uh, let's hurry up, get this, hurry up, get this hour over with. Get the fuck out of here. There's nothing to judge. See that? Hot dogs down hallways earlier. So. Oh yeah. Oh, that's my favorite saying. Wait, what? Throwing hot dogs down hallways. Oh, the game is was huge. Yeah, it's like Stargate. Kids just walk out already ready to go. Facts. It's like being the only person in the hallway, huh? Yeah. It's too late. No, it's too late. God damn it. You know, nah, it's too late. I don't want to hear that shit. He invited you. They know your shit, Draymo. Fuck out of here. Hey, man. It's Big Smash versus the world all next week. I'm coming for everybody. All right. In alphabetical order at that. Oh, right, I'm good. last word. I'm about to say, I'm, to I'm, I'm way behind at the end of the list. I'm good. Oh, oh my God. I might be the last motherfucker because ain't no many, ain't too many people with less letters than me. Boom. Oh wow. Right. Hey, well, I guess we're gonna let the ladies take Yeah, this man. Show. I'm gonna go ahead on and let y'all rock, man. Lord, have a nice show. What, what's your Thank show? you. Come Thank on. you. What's the name of your show? I want to follow it. It's the Lauren Hour podcast. Well, actually, it's the Lauren Hour Network on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. We really appreciate it. All right, no problem. Yeah, take well, care. have a nice trade, show. B. You too. Got y'all on the other side, brother. I'm... Hey, 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 guys. How you Hello, doing? Queen. I'm trying to get this super like... team together, man. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I we... forgot I had pics. I thought my shit was gone. Woo. Let me tell you guys. I am so excited uh, to be here I with you guys. I didn't pick that motherfucker. They picked the kicker for me. Wait, someone? That's not a. Oh, that nigga 76 off Rippers? And he is a superstar. Oh, we can still hear I you in the background. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Y'all good? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I thought I'm excited. I thought I muted myself. It's a lot going on around here. It's y'all show. We're going to back out. Matter of fact, go ahead. Thank you, production. We appreciate y'all. Yes. I'm slacking on my pippin. <laughs> it's okay. All is forgiven. So, guys, I want to welcome everyone to the Lauren Hour podcast with your girl, Alora Danny, and my co-host, Jazz. And we have our other co-host, Shaka. He shall be back in soon. And today, guys, we have a very, very special guest. I am so excited to introduce him. We have Mr. Robert Holmes himself. Welcome, Mr. Holmes. How are you Good doing evening, today? Everyone. Good evening, Queens. How are you? Thank you for having me on your platform. Oh, my goodness. It is our honor to have you here, sir. It is our Good honor. Evening. And most definitely, thank you for letting me share my story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. 
um, it is important for people to hear your story. And it's important for you to get it out there. So today's today's podcast, guys, I want to get so much information out to you. And I want Mr. Holmes to share his story with you guys. And hopefully it'll touch someone and inspire someone and help someone come out of a situation that others may not know that they're in currently. So, Mr. Holmes, I met you via Facebook. Yes. Um, the podcast network. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 So, I have been uh, doing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Robert Holmes, uh, born in uh, New York, New York. Uh, I'm currently living in the Bronx. Uh, mm-hmm. Played for a basketball program some time ago when I was a youth. And uh, some things happened over there that uh, led to some other things happening throughout my life. And uh, I have a story to tell. Yes, sir. You know what, Mr. Holmes? I said I I don't normally post in the podcast networks um, because I don't know. I've always kind of been shy of trying to get other podcasters to come on my podcast. But I put up a link. Well, I put up a statement. I said I need a guest. And you were you were, I think, maybe the third person to reply. And I was like, okay, let me inbox him. And then when you start talking to me, you started sharing my story. I said, you know what? This is nothing but guy because this is what we do on my podcast. We like to encourage people and we like to get valuable information out there and stories like yours in front of people so that it can help change their lives and help them to move forward in things. So, Mr. Oh, excuse me. So, Mr. Holmes. Again, like I said, I want to start out by saying thank you. And you said that you're from New York, New York. So you have a story that you want to tell. And unfortunately, your story is like so many other young men and so many young girls stories that we heard around the world. And sometimes they're often silenced. So you were a basketball player. Am I correct? Yes. uh, During the ages of 12 to 15, I participated with a program called the... uh, Riverside Church Hawks. It's a uh, nationally acclaimed AAU program designated to take youths between those ages, actually between the ages of 12 to 17. And uh, we go around nationally, we play in different tournaments. This particular team that I played for was the number one team out of New York City and actually was the, 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 the poster for the AAU athletic that we have today. Wow. So you guys are where it began. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That is, that's a, whoa, that is an accomplishment in itself. Um, so, Mr. Holmes, I'm going to actually get straight into it. So, during your time during that program, some things happened to you at a very young age. You said you were about 12? Yes, I first, I first entered into their program at the age of 12. I was uh, freshly off of a championship in grammar school. And we had a young man on our team that had already played for this particular program. Mm-hmm. So I uh, <laughs> took a summer off and I worked on my game and I actually tried out for this program and I made it. And uh, that was one of the brightest things that have ever happened to me but as a youth. But uh, so like I said, at, 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 at every light side of the court, there's also a dark side of the court. Yes. Yes, it is. So Mr. Holmes' experience sexual abuse by the hands of one of his coaches when he was playing for this league. So, Mr. Holmes, I wanted to ask, well, first of all, I want to say sorry. I'm so sad that this happened to you. And my first question is, when you said at the age of 12 it started, but how did it start out? Was it just normal, just, hey, come over here, I have some snacks, I have cookies and, you know, normal things like that. And then how did it progress into abuse? Well, let, I, I think before I answer that, let me go into a little background. Of okay, yes, give us a little background. Who, who, who was the owner of this particular program? Because I think that in order to understand how things progress, you need to know actually who this gentleman was. Uh, this gentleman was a multi, multi, multi millionaire. He was a, uh, a attorney for several leverage buyout firms. He earned, he owned several subsidiaries of that leverage buyout firm. He also was. Uh, he also was the deacon, the uh, 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 financer, and also a uh, uh, the founder of that particular program. So this gentleman was not only 
well renowned in regards to the athletic circle. Mm -hmm. He was a very strong political and financial person as well. But uh, fast forward, uh, it's, it's all normal, like any other program when you go play. I mean, you know, this particular program was uh, the number one, like I said. And so I made the team and uh, it really, and the funny thing about it is I never actually got a chance to even see coach. I mean, he was pretty much just like all person. I didn't never get to see him, wow. but uh, I finally got a chance to see him. It, it, uh, I actually got a chance to see him on a night we were doing a drill and I had, uh, was doing particularly well that night on that drill. And uh, he stopped the program, he stopped the practice rather, excuse me. And he said, uh, anyone can make free, th anybody can make that shot, but can you make a free throw? And uh, we, 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 there's a, a, uh, a drill over there at Riverside Church that we're renowned by. We are excellent free throw shoes, shooters rather, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is uh, you're given this drill where as though you get three free throws and you need to make all three and the amount of free throws that you lose you actually get the paddle for that, right? And that was known, renowned all through the AD circuits. So, so this particular night- uh, So a paddle, like- that drill. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry, a paddle, can you um, elaborate? What what does that mean? Like a, a kind of form actual, of- an actual, an actual paddle that one would use, uh, I guess it was more relevant back in the days, Catholic schools warm, but uh, they're a paddle that you use for actually paddling a boat, but in a minute, more miniature fashion, it was a, wooden paddle, paddle with some tape around it actually so you guys got disciplined with that for missing shots yes ma'am and this was allowed well here's the thing this gentleman was so big of a prominent figure you know and again i'll do a little research uh riverside church was the place that this took place and mm -hmm. uh back in the 60s riverside church was established by the rockefellers to have a, a church which had no real denomination that welcomed in any other uh, denominations. And plus there was an influx of minorities coming into that area at that time. Back then in the 60s, that was predominantly, excuse me, an Italian area. And so we had an influx of the Spanish, the black gentlemen or mm -hmm. uh, sisters that we came into the neighborhood. So Rockefeller came up with the idea where we'll, buy, we'll build this humongous church and we'll, uh, you know, have programs up in there other than the church. And this other program was the athletic program. So it wasn't so much as though that it was, well, I, I want to say, yeah, because to the date, uh, it still goes on if you do the research on Riverside Church. Mm -hmm. But my particular time going there, he was bigger than life. I mean, he bought mm -hmm. uh, finance to Riverside Church. This is when Riverside Church was on the up in regards to uh, becoming the, the dominant uh, 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 church figure it is today. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty much going on for years, for years, decades. So without it was on the rise to be a mega church. Yes, I, you know what Riverside is that you know today it's a, it's a, a mega church, but prior to it becoming that, so the basketball today, program is what really brought the notoriety and the, and the look mm -hmm. to uh, Riverside. So plus, so, and the, plus this gentleman was on the board of directors of Riverside. He was a deacon. I mean, you know, when they do corporate minutes, he's there. So any 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 type of uh, complaints or I mean, we're finding that now because I'm actually in court with Riverside now, but there were complaints for years, but they got swept underneath the rug because, you know, some poor black kids or Spanish kids coming in to play a little basketball is not more important than us bringing financial gain and political notoriety. Right, right, right. So, so that man had accumulated enough power where he pretty much knew what he was going to do. So he was just... He was just pretty much lining his ducks in a row because you don't gain that type of power for no reason. You want to control a lot of things. So he had plans for him to be the head honcho around there. So that's basically what it was. That's pretty much who he was. And so how did you, you gain his attention? Were you one of the star players or what made you stand out the most where he wanted to come to you and tell you what you said about your free throws? What do you think it was that garnered his attention for you? Well, well, I believe that it was a, a bigger plan than just the free throws. Again, I hadn't met him until that point. But mm -hmm. when, I mean, I struggled for years, and that was one of the questions why I went back to him later on, to find out if I definitely was that player or could I have been a player other than just me being your boy toy, quote, unquote, 
And uh, but there's a process. It's called the grooming process. And I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. And yeah. the grooming process, or his pretty much his his field of target, was uh, single young black mothers who don't have an absent who have absent fathers in the home who struggle financially, and they're looking for a way out. I mean, you know, in poverty, mm -hmm. impoverished kids that had a special talent. Yeah, so that's usually how predators operate, especially those who come in wolf's, uh, uh, well, sheep's clothing. So basically, he seen that the area was a struggling area. He took his players and act like he wanted to mentor you guys, huh? Pretty yeah, much. Well, what you're yeah, well, I, you know, I call it I call it a process which is called the group uh, the dandelion effect, right? In my book okay. that we'll talk about a little later. I label him as a dandelion. If anyone knows what a dandelion is, he's, that's one of the prettiest flowers in your garden that you may have. But this flower has no real purpose and no real value to you other than to destroy and strangle the other roots in your garden. That's true. So pretty much Ernest Lloyd was that dandelion. He came with great intentions and he gave that big farce of, I'm the, I'm the community savior. I have all of these kids' uh, uh, best interests at heart. But Deep in the, deep in the, below the soil, he was strangling all our brothers and sisters, uh, uh, and, and and denied them of really excelling to where they would have been. Mm -hmm. I love that you said the dandelion effect because when we're young kids, think about it. When we seen dandelions, we would go pick them and bring them to our grandparents, our mothers, because as kids, we thought they were the most beautiful thing. We thought they were flowers of value. And so yes. I, I like how you use that because a child seeing someone like him, they're thinking, oh, my goodness, look at this guy. He's larger than life. I've never seen no one around here like that. If this guy was to be able to be in my life and help me out, I can do great things, too. Well, that, so, that yeah. was the catch. That was the mm -hmm. catch, sister. I mean, you know, you just hit it right on the nose. And as youth, I mean, you know, we all came up in the 60s, 70s. Maybe we have some 80s babies on here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we grew up uh, uh, impoverished. I mean, you know, and so when someone comes to your hood who, who bears these great fruits and tell you all these great things, you wouldn't. And then, you know, you come from a single family, a, a mother who's struggling with her son or daughter, you know, you pretty much, he, 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 he gained the trust of not only the children, but the parents as well. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Holmes, I'm not even going to lie. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with this interview because it's, it's such a delicate question that I want to ask you. But I really want to know, when did it start? And if you can give us a little bit of not too much of a description, but tell us what what did the abuse entail? So when was the first time this man hurt you? When was the first time? And do well, you... Um... I want to say, well, actually, I know, but uh, I want to say that the first time that sexual abuse was encountered was the evening of my failing to do the free throw drill correctly. Uh, so what would happen is a bunch of us, because not all of us won that drill, we would go and we'd line up outside of the office. and. Uh, this was the first time that actually I'm thinking I'm going in this office. Actually, I'm thinking that me going into this office is a badge of honor, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've never gotten this close to coach. I mean, I know all, I hear all these things that coach can do, and I know what my intentions is. I want to get my family out the hood. I want to become this NBA player, or at least try to try to maximize the talent that God had given me. So we had uh, lined up on this free throw drill, and mind you, we see all types of NBA players because uh, this program, this particular program, had over. 60 NBA players, rather they went to NBA, CBA, overseas. Some of the guys that we look at on TV now that commentate, we'll get into that a little later as well, they all participated. So as a young child and you're seeing all this, you're actually saying, this is what I need to do. I'm yeah. actually along my way. I'm, I'm being a part of the process. But so I go into the office and we talk about, the first thing that we talk about is my family structure. Right, mm -hmm. it's not basketball. It's not anything else. He asks me about who's at home. I tell him that it's me, my, it's me, myself. About well, let me leave myself at the end. My mother, my uh, brother who passed away, and myself. My father wasn't in the picture. Uh, you know, they asked, he asked where we lived at. Logistics was very important, right, for 
what we discussed. And then the, the last question is financially, you know, what's going on in the household. So as a young man, you just, it, you, you disclose those things, you know. Because you're just, thinking he cares. Right, right. Because now again, you're thinking you're getting one step closer to that process, right? Mm -hmm. And I know I have talent, so I'm not thinking anything else. So along the way, while we're talking, he literally asked me to pull my shorts all the way down, both my shorts and my underclothes. And of, of course, you know, bells and whistles go off. You think, you know, but again, I'm, 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 I'm here. Like, you know, we all knew what was, we all at the end of the day knew what was wrong, man, but we all wanted to be Riverside Hawks, right? So right. now what happens is you begin to start fondling me and, and uh, touching my genitalia in, in the auspice of that you're measuring me for a jock strap. At that young age, 12 years old, I, a jock strap, I mean, we don't wear jock straps, but this is how he camouflaged it in regards to that. I mean, you know, we go from front to back in regards to that. And it was it was long, but it was quick. I mean, in young man's eye, it seemed like eternity. But again, like I said, I'm off base, but I think that I'm just got a base hit, I guess. You know, I'm getting ready to run yeah. these bases to become this NBA player. So uh, he says to me, you know, don't tell anyone. I'm not going to give you any type of punishment tonight, but don't tell the other guys that. You're my special player, right? That's what that's that's the code name, special player, right? You're my special player. And uh, so he gives me a couple of dollars and tell me to go ahead on out. And when you leave out, you see everyone's faces, right? And I guess I had one of those faces just like all the others. Because in my book, I talk about how some of the faces had smiles, some had cries, some had confusion, you know? And I guess I, I, I guess I was all of the three wrapped mm. up in one. But I, if you want to say that, and now if we move on, and as you, as you move on, the uh, abuse escalated because the first thing I would do was go home and tell my mom, you know, hey, man, I, I, I'm on this team. You know, we're doing this, we're doing that. He cares about me. So now my mom believes he's a father figure, right? Right. Uh, right. So, you know, now before you know it, I'm up at Riverside Church every day straight from school. Right. So, so I want to ask you a question. That night after that happened, how did you, what was your thought process after you went home? Did you process what had just happened to you? I, I don't think that you process it. I don't, I just, I, I, I can't say that I processed it, sister. Mm -hmm. I mean, all night. I may not have slept that whole night thinking about it, if that's the question that you're asking me. If you're asking me if I thought about it, yes. But processing it at, at that 12 years, at that young age, due to counseling and understanding what happened to me now, you know, mm -hmm. there was no way that I could process that at a 12-year-old. Right. You know, I could only right. accept it. or At that point, I'm only going to accept you it. You probably just it. probably thought, okay, this is what happens. This is, might be what happens. Right. Right, because I mean, again, like when you leave out of there, you know, you see people like we, you, you see NBA greats, NBA right. future greats, college greats, high school greats. I mean, we, you know, we we were, once we made that program, we we were we're in. That's like the Yankees farm team. Yeah. You, you so know? Th there was something else that you said to me that stuck out, and guys, you guys can chime in whenever you want to, Shaka and Jazz. Um, what you said was he said to you after he was done go ahead home i'm not going to discipline you as if you he still turned that around as if you've done something wrong and this man no he just did the most foulest thing ever but yes. predators had that type of control over young minds where they don't recognize that something bad just happened to them and they have this this thought process okay i messed up and they don't often come forward. Is that kind of what you felt a little bit? You just felt like, okay, I'm, I messed up. Yes, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I struggled with that up until a few years ago because I denied counseling for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I would blame myself for what happened. I would question myself for what happened. Mm -hmm. And again, through counseling and understanding what happened to me now, I think that, that when you understand that and you go through that process, you go from being the victim to a survivor, mm -hmm. right? And so, but yeah, I mean, I mean. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, guys, do you guys have any questions for Mr. Holmes? I do. Like, um, was, I mean, was he ever prosecuted or is it like, is he 
you know, like still out here at this place to this day, like, you know. No, uh, well, what happened was uh, I had released the articles or I actually sat down and I first became public with this in the year 2002. Mm. Uh, one of the things that was the problem was that there's a statute of limitation which did not allow him to be criminally prosecuted because the statute had run and no that's one bullshit. go ahead i'm sorry queen no i was saying that's bullshit like i feel like he still should have been you know like i don't feel i feel like crimes like that shouldn't have no type no of statute of, no no statute of limitation at you assault well, somebody 30 years ago you should still be prosecuted for it fully but that's just well, me. I, 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 I tell you what sister right here's the great thing and here's the thing why i love mario cuomo so much all right, we, myself, actually, we have a law that's named after me. It's, it's the Robert Holmes law. It has a lot to do with the new Child's Victims Act that allows everyone to go back now and to sue those accusers some 30 years ago. And right now, uh, I actually was at uh, Albany when Como and I signed that bill when it came into act, which is a great thing, right? So, but yes, to answer you. the question, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sister. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was saying that's the best thing he did. Right, <laughs> right. So, um, but to answer your question, right, Mr. Lloyds had, uh, see again, I say Mr. Lloyds, right? And that's always gonna be a part of my counsel because I still say Mr. Lloyds, right? For someone who had done what he done to me, I still hold him in that regard to say Mr. Lloyds. So it's still a work in progress, right? But to answer your question, the Mr. Uh, Coach Lloyds, Coach, he, uh, wound up finally after I got about three or two or up two other accusers to come forward one was my cousin right so we come forward and they actually get him over get him to be arrested uh through going taking a young man some 20 years ago across state lines and doing the same thing to him so right before they went to start trial he passed away I mean there's some other things that went along prior to that but I don't want to get long-winded. But to ask you this question, right when he was about to face justice, he died. Mm -hmm. So, so that's 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 jacked up, and I, I hate that for y'all because that man needed to face justice. And I hope, I hope he's going to face it in the afterlife. But uh, my next question for you is, what gave you the strength to come forward and tell your story? You said you came forward, and um, now did you publicly come forward in about two thousand? You said, or did you tell your mother? The first time you came forward, did you tell your mother and y'all kind of what, what happened with that? Well, the first time with my mom, uh, we approached uh, coach one on one. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll get into that. But the first time that I came forward was in 2002 of April. Uh, a front news story was done with the Daily News, the Post, the Times, Channel 7, 2, 4, 11 stating that two million dollars in hush payments was given to a coach in regards to keep quiet about sexual abuse that he experienced in that program and at that time i was incarcerated in federal prison and so his testimony and him being a part of my trial him paying lawyers for my trial him paying lawyers to throw my trial all of those things came in the forefront through that article and just until recently they're still uh reporting on it yes wow so oh my god so i know that this affected your life in many ways but what's the major way you think that the abuse that um you received from this coach affected you well i think for a long time i uh had a problem in relationships hmm. i had a uh i've been diagnosed being a uh, uh manic at times mm -hmm. uh, i have uh bipolar i've been diagnosed with being pilo bipolar due to things that have happened that's mm -hmm. been attributed to the abuse um mm -hmm. but going back to the relationship issues i had a big uh domestic problem abuse with my um with my paramours uh I found out once through counseling that I attributed sex and relationships with abuse, punishment mm. after. Uh, one of the 
things that I would do for a long time is after sex, I would always apologize and say I'm sorry after the actual sexual encounter, which was attributed to Coach saying that to me after he did the things to me. So some of the things that I wore, I had an issue with me and my mother. Uh, I blamed her for a while, saying that she should have known you know what I mean? She should have stopped this. I actually felt at one point that mom threw me into the lion's den, mm. you know? And I mean, uh, again, through counseling and again, through becoming a survivor, and I now understand that those things were not the case. Uh, me and my mom have an excellent, 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 super excellent relationship. I'm happy about uh, that. Me and my wife currently now, we've been together for about 22 years. My problem with uh, any physicality, anything like that is a long gone. Good. And uh, I just, I just again, thank that, thank, thank uh, the powers that be that I'm a survivor. You know, so, and I, that's pretty much what me coming forward is all about. Me being yeah. able to help other young men and yeah. women come out and understand and, 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 and know that it's okay that they can become a survivor and it's okay to share this story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, this has been literally the hardest story for me because it's, 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 it's so delicate because you never know what you may say that can trigger a person, you know? And I really wanted to ask, when did you start seeking counseling? Because Back in those times, counseling was a taboo for black households. So exactly. when did you when did you actively start seeking counseling? I know you said, did you do any counseling as a young man or was no. it just in adulthood? No. And uh, since we're being candid, you know, to be honest, the first time that I ever, ever, ever even thought seriously about counseling, because counseling to me, like you just mentioned, uh, sexual abuse is taboo in our minority communities. I mean, everyone tuned in, everyone that we speak to knows someone that knows someone that has been abused or even in our families, we used to say growing up, right? I don't like Uncle Jimmy or Aunt Betty because he be doing funny stuff. So I don't want to go over there or whatever, right? And uh, so the first time that I actively uh, solicited counseling because mind you i was i had a a, 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 a a fledging recording label i owned several nightclubs i owned several uh 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 recording studios i was in california so for me really even to come forward and even pay that any mind at that point was taboo right because as a black man i'm not going to ruin myself with that but uh i actually went to federal prison in the year 2000 for federal, uh, for a felon in the possession of a firearm. And mm -hmm. so in federal prison, I was having difficulty with authority, mm -hmm. okay? So at that point, right, I'm thinking that anybody also of authority was looking to abuse me. They had no good intention for me. I, I was having difficulty with that. Mm -hmm. And so one day I sat with a, uh, a psychiatrist in Ferriton uh, uh, Federal Prison System. And he's the first one that gave me the diagnosis of what he thought he was. Mm. Again, I felt too macho to go and actually sit down and participate. Mm -hmm. But fast forward years later, when I released from federal prison and I'm living my life with my family, I actually meet a psychiatrist who I sat with and I actually looked forward to going to sit with him. I could identify with him because here's the thing. A lot of the psychiatrists got enamored with my story. I mean, I had millions and millions of dollars. I lived the best lifestyle, you know, and so mm -hmm. they get caught up into that. So the actual treatment goes out the window, but this particular psychiatrist was different. And I, uh, he identified my problem. I went through the course with him. I did about two years with him and he actually, gave me coping mechanisms that enable me today to say that I'm a survivor. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. And I'm I'm happy that I'm happy that you found that because you you never know how God is going to lead you. 
you know, because you may not have found that person out here in the streets, that one particular person who was going to take the time and help you to work through your issues and help you to identify them. Because I think it is important for people to understand their pains and their triggers, you know, and I, I hope that's what he helped you to understand. So do you think maybe because of this abuse, you were in and out of prison? I, I believe that it played a part. I believe that it played a big part. Uh, but I also believe as well, me being a hard hit young kid growing up in poverty and growing up and trying to help my mom and get us into a better place, I made bad decisions. But to answer your question again, yes, it played a big part on it. Uh, later on in life, I found out how it affected me, actually how I wound up in federal prison. Uh, mm. uh, I, like I said, I, I, I suffered for a long time as a manic depressive. A lot of things I used to do, I can't do. I, I, I at one point owned 26 cars. Everyone with a price tag of like $107,000, right? So it had an issue with going into anywhere, not cars, jewelry, women, uh, just anything. I had an, an issue with going in places and I was a compulsive buyer because I had the means to do that. And this, because of the abuse, because of how he treated the abuse, how he covered the abuse, it enabled me to feel have a codependence and be able to feel like those are the things that I needed to to. to you have. feel like that was your outlet. That was your outlet was. for your pain. And yes. uh, we have a lot of people who have outlets like that. Some people who go through abuse, their outlet is sex. And I know that yes. sounds crazy. It's it's just something that they work on. Some people's outlet is drugs. You know, some yes. people they still lay in the ball like a baby just to cope. I know people go yes. through that right now. And so my next question in my panel, join in anytime because y'all yes. just got me talking. Y'all hey, just got me guy, talking. Uh, feel free. Feel yes, free feel free. I know this is it's just delicate and I know that they're just is it's, it's hard. Um I, I am very I'm lost for words. Like I don't know what the hell to say right now, uh, Mr. Holmes. Like, you hear about this stuff every day. First of all, I just want to give you, uh, I want to commend you for what it takes to come out and tell your story because mm -hmm. it, it there's no respect when it happens to us, to men. No. And it's considered weakness to go through therapy, is considered weakness to... Uh, tell your story or something your reputation's on the line when you do something like that you know so it's commendable that you would come out there and throw everything to the wind and say i need this so i just want to commend you yeah i don't have any questions at the moment because i'm just so flabbergasted <laughs> but I, I definitely do want to get that off and let you know that yes. you know your story exactly. is appreciated and i pray that this helps save somebody else Right. And to piggyback off of Shaka, um, that was actually going to be my next question. What gave you the strength to come forward? Because like he said, men don't have the same support, especially black men, don't have the same support as women to actually let their guards down and say, this happened to me. We've seen it happen to Terry Crews and he's a grown man. And people laughed at him. They ridiculed him. And this had to be the hardest thing that you had to go through. What gave you the strength to come forward with this? And what was your support system like? Well, I, th I think, thank you. I, I wanted to say thank you to Shaka King for, for chiming in. And I thank you because, see, one of the things that that is strong about our panel right now that we get a chance to be able to hear this we get a, we have a chance to pass it on to others and try to spread this message right but to answer your question um i think I, I i think that i woke up one day and i understood that i have to sacrifice uh my stature or my resume or my street cred like shaka mentioned or whatever it may be to give 
the millions, or hopefully I can get two or three or four to listen, but the millions of other survivors or people that this happened to, give them a voice or give them the courage to say that it's okay to speak about what's happening. I think that I, I, God has told me that I need to be the voice for this, especially in our minority communities, because we hear about it in corporate, we hear about it in Hollywood, but it never reaches down to where we're at. Right. And I'm feeling like I have to be that voice. As I say, I play basketball. I, I play basketball against some of the NBA greats. I've been in the streets. I mean, you know, I've, I've done music where I've got artists out of that. But I feel now that my journey or oh God has given me the journey now to be the voice of our minority community. Let them know and let the message reach down there to those people that I talk about underneath the soil. Right. So. I'm trying to make sure I word this correctly. Uh, you said that I don't even want to call him a gentleman. The predator that exactly. did this to you and so many others has passed on. The, I, I, if my if my memory is correct, because I've been interrupted where I'm at through this whole conversation, so there's some things that I miss. So if you can reiterate um, the asshole and passed on, and you still have a lawsuit. Uh, or criminal charges against the church or him still like how does that work what are you trying to gain from somebody who's no longer here and did i ask that the right way yes you did king okay <laughs> and no yeah well, that, that's what i want yeah to, to answer that um prior to ernest lloyd's passing away uh i had filed a lawsuit against both himself and Riverside Church. Mm -hmm. uh, that lawsuit was allowed to proceed minus Riverside Church at the time, but the lawsuit against Riverside, I mean, excuse me, against Ernest Lloyd proceeded and I eventually settled. He eventually settled that with me so that we didn't have to go to trial. Uh, the reason why we, Riverside had gotten precluded because they were the benefit at that time of the statute of limitations. Right. Uh, for years after that, I, along with the hundreds and thousands of others, got with the petitions and got with Mario Cuomo and got with all of the other foundations that were rallying to be able to remove that statute because we, along with I'm sure everyone else, thought that that statute was one protecting everyone. And to be honest with you, we needed actually the Catholic Church to start admitting to their wrong. Right, one thousand percent, because they have been at doing this disgusting. I mean, they're the kings of that. Yeah, and they're yeah. The kings, right. It's disgusting. So, it's so now we proceed to uh, uh, the signing of the Child's Victim Act, mm -hmm. and now I'm able now to go back in to go and uh, sue Riverside Church for allowing this to go home on and allowing this to go on in their place. Right. Uh, I'm currently now in court with Riverside Church. And I think in the next, I would like to say in the next month or two, we're going within the next six months, we should be going to trial with okay. uh, Riverside Church, along with 13 others that I've been able to, along with my attorneys, uh, to bring up. Mm. And for those who don't know, Mario Ma Matthew Como is, I believe he is the former governor of New York. Um, I believe he's Chris Como. And is he Chris Como's father? No, brother. his brother, but his father brother? also was in government as well. Mario Como Sr. Okay. Yeah. So when he keeps referencing to Mario Como, for um, our viewers, that is the, gov the former governor of New York. Does yes. that hurt? <laughs> Stupid ass question. Now he's you are been, from New York. He, he has been, <laughs> now Mario Cuomo Jr. has been acquitted, I believe, of the things that he was accused of. Uh, but the fact that he does have that on his jacket does right. that hurt or help your cause? Well, and well, it doesn't actually affect my cause at all because some of the things that he's been accused of uh, happened after. Uh, that bill was signed, but I think his thing didn't have to do with children. And I think it had to do with him uh, 
uh, uh, doing inappropriate things with some of his staff members. Mm -hmm. right. so it doesn't yeah. help or hurt us at all. The millions of people who file suit on all of these people who have done this to us, <laughs> it, 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 it definitely speaks volumes to just, uh, I don't want to minimize the, the accusers of Mara Como, but it, it speaks right. volumes yeah. over uh, yeah. uh, uh, those, those particular, and it was two different uh, uh, platforms, I think. Yeah, and I think your your case was out before he was even brought forth with this stuff, because that was just like recently, right? And also, we've been trying to get this bill across for years, and mm -hmm. you just mentioned the young lady's name. It was called Marco. This is Marco. It was the Marco bill, and mm -hmm. uh, finally, we were able to get a, a governor who had balls enough to sign it and say that let these people either get their compensation or let they let them get their voice or let them get their uh, 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 due day in court. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Holmes, there. So, I know that so far is New York and a couple of other states that have altered that law, the statute of limitation. Do you think the rest of the United States should follow suit and remove the statute or edit the statute of limitation against sex crimes against children and um, women and other, you know, men? Do you think that we all should get on that bandwagon, basically? Because when you think about sexual crimes, I think murder and sexual crimes, because I don't think there's a statute of limitation on murder, but certain crimes should not have a statute of limitation. I definitely don't think sexual crimes should have a statute. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree with you 100%, Queen. Um, sexual abuse and any type of crime against children should never have a sexual, uh, excuse me, a statute mm -hmm. of limitation. Mm -hmm. But even, even as an adult, to, to, to piggyback off of what we spoke about, now we've just been able to get the Adult Victims Act passed as well, which enables the adults to go back now and sue those people as well. So I don't. I think that the, the uh, sexual abuse should not have a uh, a statute, and this is part of my mission. I wake up every day championing that, so that all 52, like that. 53, 54 states should adopt this law. <laughs> Shaka, if you, I'm sorry, if you don't turn that phone off, sir. Um, nobody, me. nobody. Calls. I just told him that. I told him exactly. <laughs> nobody <laughs> calls me at all, all day except scam likely. And the minute I get on here, I become the most popular person on earth. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you better turn that off. No fight. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Holmes. Shaka, no, turn the phone vibrate, please. Um, so another question that I did, well, I, I love that you said that you're going to be champion for that. I love that. I respect that so much. And you know what? Not only were you brave enough to come forward, but you're brave enough to step into the light and fight and rally behind people who are going through this too. So you said something earlier to me that still sits in my soul because a lot of people I've heard this from, you said at first you blamed your mother because yeah. she didn't see it. What would you, what advice would you give mothers who are single? And they're the type of, when you, I don't mean to sound, I don't mean to sound, uh, I don't want to offend anyone, but predators usually prey on the women who are brokenhearted or they're struggling financially. And they don't always have to struggle financially because some women, often they want to look for love or they're just in situations and these predators they, they feed on that and they don't these women aren't paying attention that these men and sometimes these women are after their babies what advice would you give these ladies i'm not saying that was your mother's case but i'm saying that often when i hear stories and i hear stories about people who are survivors they go back to saying i wish my mother or my father paid attention what advice would you give them? I think I would give all the, the, the parents today, both uh, women and male, uh, uh, stop accepting the norm. And what I mean by that is for years, we've been conditioned to accept the norm, right? One of the things that we've been uh, accepted, uh, conditioned to accept was that when our youth, such as myself or others that have been abused, started exhibiting the abuse, and started acting out on it, we were conditioned to take our kids in and they'd tell us that we needed to be put on pills or medication or Ritalin or all of these different things, but they never wanted to address what it may or may not have been. 
I think that we would be, like to be a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more, a little bit more attentive into your children. I think that we should not accept the fact that it couldn't happen to my son, my son or my daughter because they're too macho and they're out there in the streets. It's okay it. to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so when he says we shouldn't accept the norms, what he means is what people say is that's normal behavior for a 12 year old. That's exactly. normal behavior for a nine year old. Kids are going to be kids. No, sometimes those kids are acting out the only way they know how. And they're trying to get through something is different about me. And if you have a child who does not normally act a certain way, you have people say, oh, they're hitting puberty. Oh, that they, they're going through some changes. No, ask your children, ask your children, what's wrong? And I, and I, and I, think, a, a, I think a great part of that is uh, establishing communication with your child at an early age where they're able to come to you and talk about things, maybe not know necessarily about that particular subject first, but being comfortable enough to be able to talk to you about anything that affects them as, as during their growth and development. Yes. Yeah, that is, that's a traumatizing conversation to have mm -hmm. with your parent as an adult. So I yes. imagine everything with a child like that's. Mm -hmm. That's true. So the research has indicated that Mr. Holmes, good to see you. Hey, how are you coach? Uh, can't complain, can't complain. Put the books down for a little bit so I can. But here's the thing. Hold on, Coach. Hold on, Coach. For those of you who don't know who Coach Magic is, we're working together on a book about her life. But if we could sidetrack for two minutes to give yes, come Coach on. Magic a platform, ladies and gentlemen, to give you guys who she is and let her introduce herself, that would be awesome. Yes, go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, sister. Go ahead and shine now. Well, first, uh, to address what you're saying, research has indicated that when boys in particular are going through trauma, they behave in a more aggressive way. Mm -hmm. And uh, girls tend to withdraw. And so that's a big indication with our um, brown and black boys in particular, because they always feel like you said, they want to put them on Ritalin or something else mm -hmm. because they're acting out instead of trying to figure out what exactly is going on versus putting a Band-Aid on it. Amen. Exactly. So that's something that parents need to really be aware of as well. I love it. Okay, Coach, go ahead and um, take your two minutes of your spotlight and tell us who you are and what you represent, honey. Go ahead now. <laughs> uh, I, rep I represent God first and foremost. Amen. I represent life, positivity, and love. Uh, I was the... I play basketball, of course. Uh, Mr. Holmes and I uh, met through a mutual friend. It's like a sister, so it was. It was. Uh, we we needed to meet. Our stories have a lot of similarities in them. Uh, prior to uh, basketball, saved my life as well. Come from, like most of us, a broken home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, single parent and just trying to make ends meet. I was blessed to use basketball as an escape. Basketball took me around the world, saved my life. I've been able to talk to young people in 23 different countries in all 50 states, including the territories of Guam and uh, Micronesia, uh, Rhoda, uh, the Marshall Islands. And uh, you don't forget the trauma that you go through, you push it aside and people don't see you, they see what you're doing. So they see that you, oh, they're doing this, so they're very successful, but they're not seeing the pain that you're carrying with you or why when you have nieces and nephews, you have them come sit with you versus sitting on uncle or auntie's lap. And you're like, no, you wanna play horse, you get on my back. <laughs> You know, you want to do this and so so on and so forth. So I was one of the first, um, that said, I was one of the first women to play and coach alongside my male counterparts. Um, I'm known as the queen of show basketball. I've played over 2,000 uh, entertainment basketball games around the world. And um, I'm just happy to be part of this uh, 
this discussion, learning more about what Mr. Holmes has gone through and how he's been able to be resilient, how he's able to display courage. And um, most people wouldn't do that. That's true. That is so true. Um, especially Thank in you, New, New Jersey. So uh, I'm, 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 giving you, I'm giving you your flowers while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. That is so beautiful. That's really so, beautiful. So y'all have some of the stories in terms of what happened to Mr. Holmes. Yes. And, and, and I say that to say this, like once you both found out about uh, your mutual stories, how was that uh reaction between the both of you how were you able to like were you able to uh connect connect yeah it, well, I, I, before I think, he told me think, the story i connected it's like somehow we're you're drawn to like people mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. soul is pure and powerful yes i'll and, give him that yes and he has a long reach his love is, is long so um, you see that you, it, most of us look at the physical, but if you listen to what's coming out of his heart, you know what type of man he is. Mm -hmm. I respect well, I that. Think, I, well, I think what drew me to coach was that I think basketball first and foremost was our thread. And I think right. hearing her speak and all of the different things that she's been through, what she's going through, mm -hmm. what she's going to pave the way for others to to maybe dig to detail from those were the things that wrapped around that initial thread as far as basketball to me and she's a sister and for that alone we 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 must manifest together all of us i love that i love that that's beautiful that is so beautiful um so <laughs> let me say something mr holmes i want to thank you so much for being so patient with me because um, as you guys know, I'm in school and I work and I'm running this household and Mr. Holmes has been so patient with me and so understanding. And I appreciate that because I know your time is valuable. So I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you being so patient with me. And I, you know, I've dropped the ball a few times and I'm like, oh, no, wait, I have to call him. I have to email him. And just you just encouraging me. And we just met. And I'm just like, I love that. And when she says your energy is pure and you speak from your heart, I, I've only known you for a little bit and I see that. And I love that. So, um, yeah, I, I want to give you a rose. So much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, so I wanted, because our slot time is almost up, I wanted you to go ahead and shout out your book and tell us what it's about. Um, don't give us too much information, because if they want more, they need to go out and buy it. But go ahead and give us a little bit of uh, information on your book. Uh, the name of my book is entitled The Dark Side of the Court. Mm. Currently, it's in print at right now. It's going to be print and sent out last week, so I should get it back maybe in about three weeks, my target date, to, uh, to uh, uh, release that book. It's March 26th. It's about a stolen, it's about a young man who stole, whose dreams were stolen both in the uh, basketball court and the court of law. Mm. It's a story about a young man who took being a victim and turned it into a, 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 a survivor. It's, it's giving you a story of what actually happened to me. Uh, what I'd like to do and what I will do is during the process of that, I believe you can let your readers know, and I'm, I'm thinking this here beginning relationship can build into something else yes. in regards to uh, your platform. Uh, your platform is always out to me, and I thank you for allowing me to have this platform again. And like I said, I was passing thank through you. and I saw, I felt the energy from your podcast. I did a little eye hustling and I feel as though that you should have this. Thank you. Thank you. I I appreciate that so much. I really, truly appreciate that. Um, so before we wrap it up, Mr. Holmes. Um, uh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Shaka, go ahead, honey. Um, Like I said, I've been bothered this whole time. Yeah. By, things going on here. So if I'm asking a question that's already been answered, let me know. 
Uh, do you plan on or do you have uh, any plans on opening a foundation or any type of help or counseling to people that's been through the same things that you and Miss Magic have been through? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Currently, I am now with uh, GK Venture Partners, and what mm -hmm. we're establishing right now is a uh, nonprofit that addresses mm -hmm. directly to abuse in all forms of fashion, all colors, creeds, uh, racial, ethnic, whatever it is. Uh, okay. As you know, with foundations, it takes a little bit of time, but that doesn't stop me from still doing the things and, 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 and serving my community. But again, I will be giving all of that information to the young lady, the queen here. And if you're on her show, you'll have that. And I hope that you would donate and support our cause. I love it. I love that. I love that. Um, Mr. Holmes, what, what what advice would you give someone right now who may be watching this or hearing it, or maybe even a year from now, they come across this video right here. What would you tell them if they were somewhere in a dark closet and they did not know what to do or how to vocalize? Please give them some words of encouragement. I would tell them to begin their process of becoming a victim to a survivor because it isn't until then that you consider yourself a survivor you'll begin to accept what happened to you and you'll be able to heal from whatever has happened to you but i would the advice that i would give them is pursue the path of becoming a survivor and not a victim amen amen i love that you so are much is not what happens to you yes 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 and um to add to that what i want to leave us with is no matter your story no matter your journey no matter what you've been through do not beat yourself down because often victims blame themselves predators have a hold on young men young women grown women grown men it is okay for you not to be okay. It is okay to break down. The moment you can break down and realize that what is happening to you is not okay is going to be the moment you can stand up and step forward and move away from your predators. I pray for everyone and to any survivors out there, please keep pushing. Never give up. It is never too late to seek help. If you feel like you want to harm yourself and you don't have nowhere to turn to, we always advocate for the suicide hotline on this show. Make sure you reach out to anyone. It doesn't matter if it's your pastor, your sister. Just talk to someone and know that you are loved and you are worth it. But this has been the Laura and Our podcast with Laura Dannon and Cass. We appreciate everyone. I want to thank my guest, Mr. Robert Holmes, for coming on. Miss Magic, I want to thank you. What is it, Lady Mag Magic? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming on. And I am looking forward to seeing great things from the both of you guys. And everyone, make sure you guys tune in to the Laura and Our podcast. Um, on YouTube, actually, it's the Lauren Hour Network on YouTube, and also check us out on Apple Music, Spotify, any major streaming services, and also please check out Mr. Holmes on Facebook and reach out to him and try to help his foundation grow because he is out here trying to save lives. Because you never know, abuse can push someone to the edge and make them not want to be here anymore. But we're all about saving lives. Everyone be blessed and have a great night, y'all. Thank Blessings, you so queen. much for being here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. Before you guys get out of here, um, appreciate you guys for stopping by, first of all. I always like to do this. Um, you guys were amazing. Um, great work with what you guys are doing. Um, again, appreciate you guys for coming through, sharing, being part of this event. Um, I cannot thank you guys enough. Um, it's, it's, it's great to see a lot of different faces, a lot of different people telling stories. Um, since this thing has started, we have had so many dope people come through and just share and open up and be able to tell their story. And I'm a firm believer in, uh, you never know who might be helped from hearing your story. So I always try to tell people, you got to keep it real. You got to be yourself. And you guys came through and did that. Um, Thank you guys for that.
appreciate you guys. If you guys uh, feel like coming back later on and hanging out, more than welcome. Um, this It was supposed to be like show after show, but a lot of people have been uh, just staying and, and hanging out and kicking with the other <laughs> shows. So it's been a uh, barbecue that has an end. It's a sleepover that I wish would stop, but people just keep coming back. So apparently they like it. So um, again, thank you guys. Thank you um, for having me. Laura, um, definitely. I, I was already following you, but I did not know. That's the crazy thing how uh, social media works. You follow a lot of people, you network, you see them, and then you finally get to meet them. Um, yes, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, thank continue you. to do Have what you guys do. Be great. Be awesome. And thank you. Thank you, too. Have a great night. Thanks for having us. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. All right, it's just me. Where is everybody at? Now everybody go. And it's crazy. So yeah. this has been, sorry, this has been, it's crazy because my camera's all messed up. Uh, but I want to say how crazy this has been because I've seen a lot of people coming through. I don't even know whose time slot I'm in, but I'm going to stay in it because I want to and I have to and I need to. Um, as Flan, no, nah, he's actually at midnight. Um, our one actually, he's at one. So Flan is at one. I think it's supposed to be up. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, nah, everybody, everybody. Uh, I guess it is Flan. Whatever. No, nah, it's not. It's not me. I was. I've been uh, you know what's crazy? Here's what's fucking crazy. So I every time I, drive, baby, I, I was cool. Hey, I was going to talk, but I was because I was trying to get everything moved over for to figure out who's supposed to be coming on next and also talk at the same time and also read the comments and also uh, I'm doing a lot. But uh, no, it, it, this has been fucking dope. Like I, I've seen people's work, but I get to see them in person. And I'm starstruck. Like I easily get starstruck, not with celebrities, but with real people. Who, uh, Draymo? I done seen your camera flip about four times before <laughs> you even got up on screen. Her yeah. shit pff, did a flippity do. Um, but no, man. Saying. Like I, I get to be around Draymo. Let me ask you a question. What What's part up? of secret invite didn't you get, girl? You wrote it on a public, <laughs> a public poll, a, a public. But oh. these niggas don't read. That's the shit. You <laughs> 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 no, I'm fucking around, but no, I was gonna ask because man, like the hundred episode, I was gonna try to ask more people, but you know, I want to try to get people rotating in and out. Nah, man, I'm talking shit, man. If you invite me, you invite me. You know, oh, I mean? are you already in for the invited? I just didn't tell you. That's how this shit works. But no, um, because I, I don't really. It's a hundred episode. I don't really care. I mean, it means something, but at the same time, it ain't about me. Um, I just want to have fun and talk shit. That's what I do. So I really don't know whose art is supposed to be. Uh, so we just gonna hijack this motherfucker. So I, I just popped in because I saw you were here by yourself, and I, I don't have anything to do yeah, for I another hour. So. I did the same thing. I said, look at look at that, time. friends. Well, how how many of us have them? I don't think it will make it after dark. I'm tired. Hold on, time out. So that's oh. the one sound bite you don't got. Yeah, what? no. Uh, I got a lot of them. Look, 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 but no, nah, man, um, I keep trying to go back to how dope this thing has been. Uh, I feel like Jerry Lewis doing a telethon for kids who don't exist. Uh, <laughs> he can't but say nah. that. No, I'm not talking about us. Like, we're doing it for a real cause. I'm just saying, like, Jerry Lewis, this nigga had a telethon every year, and I ain't never seen him help one person. But anywho, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's that was weird. <laughs> But no, because it's, it's dope, man. Like, Flan is actually here. Look at this, man. I done seen him more this week than I done this weekend. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> and I ain't even trying to be funny. But, like, I seen a lot of motherfuckers this weekend who I probably wouldn't have seen, you know, throughout the week. I'm getting tired of some of them, but, you know, it is what it is. He's getting tired oh, of me. Shit. Every time I put a comment and he's like, and nobody else is getting in the feed. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm trying to let people in, you know. I'm not. 
Because I, I, I really want to back myself out and let everybody else. I, like at this point, I'm like I don't even need to be seen. I just want to be heard every now and then. Like I'm letting. I want y'all to shine. Like that's what this was about. Who did you ran to so far? Who me? Ah, uh, five dog. I'm running. I'm out. <laughs> I've been changing hoodies like every every three four hours. I was like, you know what? I can't wear the same hoodie all day long. Niggas gonna think I don't do shit. Okay. So I tried to switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Wear my good hoodie out. My dude, uh, True Line, his clothing brand. But no, nah, like it's really about y'all. So I was really trying to make sure that somebody was here, so somebody can do something, so I can get the hell out of here. Listen, uh, I, I, I can launch up some questions if you want. Or sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Links to my um episode that dropped with Flan actually today. It was a pretty good episode. Yeah, oh, I, I, I didn't even get a chance to, to listen yet because you know. I mean, you know, after all this is said and done. Yeah. Hey, Draymond, so I'm not gonna lie. I might not pod hear a podcast Monday or Tuesday. I might not no, even see you. nobody. I if I see <laughs> any of you motherfuckers on Monday or Tuesday after seven. It's gonna be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, everybody, listen, make sure y'all hit this motherfucker up on please, Instagram. Please don't, because I, I, I get antisocial sometimes. Like if I'm around a large crowd, it's cool. But sometimes after a while, I just be like, man, I just, yeah, no, I gotta no. recharge my, you know what I'm saying? Because you can only do your person. Yeah, like so, I just be like, dog, I just need like 25 hours now. That's <laughs> not that long. <laughs> but now I just need some time to. To just, you know what I'm saying, recharge because it, it's this fun, lot, but at lot. the same time, it's like, it's sensory overload, like trying Preach. to keep the energy and trying to, you know what I mean? Because I'm big energy, I so once I... I think it's more so that 45 second rule that's fucking everybody up because it's like... Yeah. That too, because you want to try to gather your thoughts, but if don't nobody yeah. else talk while you trying to gather your thoughts, it's like, okay, now nah, I got to say something. And the thing and is, then everybody's jumping to talk all at once, so that there's longer. no space to talking all over each other. Forty-five See? seconds is longer than people notice. Yeah. But in your mind, as soon as you it's... go three seconds, somebody's like, "Oh, I gotta say something." Well, and here's the other thing. Um, I like this, and I and we were and I don't know if I can say this, but we were kind of thinking about you know making this an annual thing, like you know just a nice. annual, but not you know next year won't be for a record. You know, following that, it won't be for a record, but it will be. You know, 48 hours of, you know, a dope ass bunch of podcasters coming in and out and just talking about whatever. Cause there was, there's been no format. Like, I don't, I know people had a plan, but then get in here and be like, God damn, it's like six other people. Yeah. Fuck it, throw the plans right. out the window and let's just make it happen. After, after like <laughs> hour number four, after like hour number four, it's just been a free for all at that point for the most Yeah, cause I'm not gonna lie. I like it because here's the thing. It's so many creative people, so many dope ideas that you get to see all these creative energies just bouncing off each other. And elbow. So many fucking collabs that came out of this fucking broadcast. I guess that's, that's what I want. That's what that's what we want. We <laughs> want networking. We want like uh, again, I, it's supposed to be this way. Yeah, Fun this fact, point, Raw sent it? me the link. He like just signed up for it. I said, "What the fuck is this?" I said, "I signed up for it, but what the fuck is it?" I didn't even know what the fuck I signed up for. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people <laughs> were just like, "I seen it, so I signed up." I didn't even know what we was doing. Yo, it's a I record. Shit. Live. I, said, I, gotta go I heard Guinness Book of World Records, and I was like, yeah. "I need to be in that." <laughs> yeah, as soon as he said that, it was over for me. I already knew I was signing up. I mean, yeah, that, that was to entice people, but I really just. Uh, he brought me the flyer with like no link, no nothing. I was trying to figure it out. I, I was like, I, I guess there's nothing. And then uh, I was on the show with y'all again and uh, brought it up again. I'm like, oh, this shit is real. And it's in DC running. I'm like, yeah, let me get the link so I can get on it. Yeah, That's I mean, because if I was running it, he wouldn't even have did the shit. Ain't that about no, it? Absolutely. Right? At all. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is Queen Candy. I forgot. I'm oh, so shit. bad with who's supposed to be here. Um, I, I, cause now it's starting to just run into each other. Like everybody just pop up, but I'm like, is it you? Okay. Yeah. Let me check my, <laughs> let me check. But no, like I wanted people like, again, man, I'm big on networking. I'm big on like growing. Like I know I'm one person. There's only so much reach I can have. Yep. You know, I don't live in Philly. I don't live in Texas. I live in Ohio. So I got to make the most of my resources, but I know some people outside of here with some, you know what I'm saying, in those big cities. So why not collaborate those people who can move numbers in places that I can't move in? Right. Period. True. You know what I mean? If I can help you get some, get some, get some reach in Ohio, I'm gonna do that. So I, I share as many people as I can. Even with us, right? Watching, we've now 
even when if we've never seen each other's show or listened to each other's show before, now we watching this and we saying, oh shit, they are dope. Let me go check it. Let me go actually listen to more of their shit. Uh -huh. Or now your fans come in and say, damn, you know what? Flan just said some real ass shit. Let me go check out his podcast now. Like it, it, it works it's in every one big ass <laughs> open audition to just have fun and show right. each other, showcase each other's skills. You know what I mean? So many, like I said, so many big different. Because I I coach football. I used to coach football to get so many people in one room to unify the one thing, but so many different personalities and it work. That's a good thing. That that it's a fun thing. And then I feed off of uh, you know what I'm saying, dope people's energies because it's like you doing something dope, I'm competitive. So now I'm like, okay, I like what they doing. <laughs> Not like I'm trying to compete or be like, I'm about to beat that nigga, but it's like, okay, I like that. So now, you know what I'm saying, when the banter come, I I got I, I, I gotta stay with you. I got I can't go toe to toe with you and let you punch me down. Right. And not that that's what's going on, but you know what I'm saying? You want to be able to hold your own with people. And and you want to be able to show, like, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can hang with the big boys. I can hang with some of the good shit talkers. I can call myself one of the, you know what I'm saying, one of them people who talk to keep you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hard at work. But no, like, it's just, like I said, dope people um, excite me. People who create um because i know because when you know the process of creating something and going through it and doing it and also living life i have a better affinity and a better appreciation of those type of people because this shit ain't easy people think you turn on the camera and turn on the mic and just magic just happen you know what i'm saying like this like like, like, like creativity just fall out the sky my little cousin came on my show or like the mic connects the first time like it's supposed to he called me the Remember next day and was like hey i don't know that Say again. Y'all ain't for that magic when I just came up. Oh. I felt something, but yeah, oh. I thought it was gas. But oh. you know. <laughs> wow, I had I was it's too much coffee. I've been drinking coffee. Time for my dry salad. Oh, that oh, drought. Yeah. That that shit looked dry from here, and it's in a bag what still. A, hold on, what second night in a row. She gotta follow it up with the peanut butter, which is the worst thing ever. Well, I'm gonna take a nap, and if I'm if I wake back up, I'm gonna. I'm oh gonna shit! Come back I in. forgot you was here. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm tired. <laughs> he just, he I just, just came to do this by yourself. But I, you know what's crazy? Everybody was like, "I'm taking a nap, and I'll be back." Motherfuckers is taking cat naps to come back. Like that's <laughs> dedication. Like motherfuckers. I, 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 I was back <laughs> no, I left for straight like eight hours. I was like, "Nah, I'm, I was only here for like twelve hours off and on." I had to go to work, I'm but still, ass. like. I haven't taken a nap, so I'm thugging it out. But I, I could be because, but me, like I said, I get energized. Like anytime I can talk shit and be around dope people and I can stand them, I get energized. So that, like last night, I was fighting sleep, but I was like, at the same time, like, this is fun. This is awesome. You know what I'm saying? How, how many opportunities do you get to be on the same live with a bunch of dope people who. Bro, that's dope. You know what I'm you saying? That, that, that are, you know what I'm saying, on that level that you're feeling like you're at. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so I keep trying to not to go back to the sentimental stuff because, again, I got a reputation to keep. And if I start getting soft, motherfuckers going to try me and then they're going to be sad. So, but I, I, I can't not be real and tell, you know, how proud I am of, you know, being around all you guys. And you guys, you know what I'm saying, not only just stepping up, but you know what I'm saying, like I said, people are literally like, man, I've been here for five hours, but I'm going to go take a nap. I'll be right back. We're going to get it in. And I'm just like, damn, take your ass to bed. Like, you ain't got to do that. Like, I appreciate it, but at the same time, fuck. Give me, give me a virtual hug. Come on. I'm good. Anywho, but what else? <laughs> You didn't even get an air hug. Nothing. Yeah, I, I think it's like, high five, dude. It's like everybody fuck with each other, so it's like, why not show love? That's why what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, why not all we all supporting each other at this point? It is what it is. Like we, you know, we we creating a network at this point, and it's yeah. just gonna keep getting stronger. Exactly. Because yeah. next year, I'm making sure I'm going to sleep Friday <laughs> all day. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But anyway, I'm gonna let y'all do your thing. I get to go in the back and chill and be the voice of reason every now and then. But you guys got it. You got it, dude. We in here. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah. Queen Candy, ain't this your hour anyway? Sure is. Yeah. The next two hours is oh, gonna yeah, be so you, two. Ooh, yeah, you got mid you got midnight, you got eleven to one. But luckily, I brought some friends for you. <laughs> Thug it out. I'm about to say, if you want me to go backstage because I don't want to crash your hour, I'll go backstage. Oh, no, y'all can stay. Yeah, yeah. Did you have go right in the flame that hang out. If you could talk to yourself for two hours, you a strong motherfucker. <laughs> I could. I, I, have. I would drive myself crazy. I pissed myself off after about 20 minutes. I sat one night and literally just put my voice recorder on and I sat and did rhyming words like at the end of sentences for five hours straight. Because it helps my public speaking. You're amazing. I wouldn't say all that. Maybe insane. But (laughs) No, you have to have nicer words for yourself, sweetheart, because you are a sweetheart. Hey, insane is a positive word to me. I could have said psycho. Do that. Do that. Yeah. yeah, I like the rhyme words, so I sit and do that for like a lot. That's how I wrote my book. Most of them are rhyming words, and I do comedy, so <laughs> the rhyme helps me remember. Remember what? That what, is sign? Sign? what is your sign, Christy? So, I'm a Virgo, but I'm on the cusp of Leo and Virgo, so. Okay, I, I I I felt a little fire in there. Oh yeah, mm. feisty. You know, it's crazy. Every I time I had, in some form of conversation, everybody always bring up zodiac, and it's been like you really do. Yeah, I don't know a motherfucking thing about that zodiac shit. I guess I just never gave a damn. You know what? I'm sorry. I got into this. Then I'm gonna let Candy do her thing. I got into it because, like, um, I started when I got into date the dating scene. I couldn't figure dudes out. But then when I start reading there, it started by me just reading their characteristics, their signs and everything. And it was true because I can start, I just look at somebody and be like, oh, you explaining everything. You're a Sagittarius or you're the, and they be like, how do you know that it's real? You know what I'm saying? What am I? It goes deeper. What am I? What's wrong with Sagittarius is now? <laughs> Wait, well, there's nothing, wrong. There's nothing wrong with Sagittarius. It's just that y'all very thorough and explaining things. Oh, you're very- goddamn right. So what am I? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> the jury's still you out. <laughs> what are you? Say again. What are you? No, you said you could figure it out. I, I mean, that's when I was in the dating scene. I'm not dating you. I'm not around you to get like your full. So just by just by the few Ooh, times. if you don't tell me your sign. No, listen, just by the few times you've heard me talk, the way the way I act, because it's a lot of people that get on these shows and they instantly get it. Some get it right because some of them assume and some of them assume that they get it got it right. So what would you what would your first guess be since, you know, like Zodiac type of shit? There's two things that stand out on my hand. I might be right or might be wrong, but I'll get like a Gemini or a Cancer for you. Neither you can't one. be Taurus vibes. For real? Maybe a yeah. Pisces. She actually got it right. What Taurus? Uh huh. Oh, you yeah, right. Uh, he was a Taurus or a Capricorn. He is way too brick wall with everything. Yeah, see, I didn't <laughs> no, this is what it is, and you ain't saying shit. And I'm listening to it. I'm not listening to nothing. This is what it is, and it's my mother to a T. She's a Taurus. Taurus. You're not a narcissist though, so that's a positive because every nar- every Taurus man that I've met so far was a fucking narcissist. Through and through. They love they love kind of hard though. Really hard. And they're narcissistic. They love themselves kind of hard. Is what you mean. <laughs> and, mo- and most of them are good with money. That too. Mm. That, that, that too. is true. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm a Virgo too. So you're gang. a Virgo? Yeah. Gang <laughs> gang. Yes. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Aries, <laughs> Aries baby. <laughs> So yeah, I actually, I did an episode on my podcast on the cusp birthdays to like break it down for people. So that was fun. Um, Like the different cusps and what they, the traits they have and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'll just be doing random stuff on my show. (laughs) Sometimes that'd be the best fucking shows. It really is. Like I've had the puppet that came on earlier. I don't know if you guys saw it. I've interviewed him for my show uh, in the summertime. Um, The puppet came on here? 
Yeah, Rico with the cam. He he has a OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah. No, I He's missed great. that one. That must have been when I was taking one yeah. on that. He didn't stay long. I don't know if he came back after I wasn't here. <laughs> no, that was even yeah. before I woke up when I was so taking he has, one. Is he a ventriloquist? Yeah. If you okay. call it that, I don't. Puppeteer, maybe would be the term. I'm not really sure. But he's a comedian, yeah, and then the puppet has get... literally like his own. It's literally like an alter ego for him. Yeah, the ranch. That's your ranch tonight, huh? You goddamn right. Because that little packet ain't working. Oh shit! You say uh, you ain't choking yourself. Well, now that's why I salad. Uh, uh. That's so wild. Miss Candy, what you got for us tonight? I really didn't have anything planned. <laughs> I've been, uh, other than jumping on off here all day, been doing my own little live stream. I just did my jewelry earlier, did my podcast, and literally just jumped back on here. Um, so Same. I see a couple people I don't know plan and <laughs> how I say is why why is on all the table? You say raw. Huh? Just say raw. Just say raw. Well, okay. So I figure let everybody talk about their podcast because I haven't seen y'all two yet. I've seen um me. I'm, I'm pretty sure CA. I, just see sure at this point. Yeah, okay. Motherfuckers is tired of hearing my goddamn voice, but <laughs> I'm the world fucking ball raw sass. All on the table podcast. I my drop my show every Thursday at noon Eastern on all major streaming platforms and YouTube. Uh, all we do on my show is talk shit and drop jewels. It may not sound like a jewel, though. It may sound fucked up. But sometimes you listen more when it's actually harsh. Very you fucked up. When it's not harsh. Very harsh. Very. Yeah. But see, here's the thing. He said very harsh, but he's one of the ones that gives those harsh jewels. Hey, I just call it like I see it. <laughs> you ain't even give me no virtual hug, old gangster. Look, look, look. How you I will. Just, still talking shit? I will. It's just right now I'm in um uh, uh survival mode. I'm just trying to make it, you know what I'm saying, to the finish line. Want everybody, you know, keep the energy up. So if I start giving out hugs, people gonna feel loved and then they're gonna relax. You can't relax. No shit. <laughs> yes, a master. Yes, a master. But no, I mean, Brawl Bra Show is uh, one of the ones that I like going on because uh, it reminds me of my show. It's a lot of um, real talk and, and the message sometimes, you know, it, it can be because some people don't need it candy coated. Like some people, you just got to tell it like oh. it is, you know, and that's, that's the only way they're going to receive it. Because if you, you spoon feed them sugar, it, it won't work. I typically ask the type of questions that Either people scared to ask or they want to ask but don't know how to. Right. You know, it's always it's people go through shit every day. They deal with shit. They see shit. They hear shit. And it's like, oh, man, how do I ask the people around me about that? Well, I ain't about to figure out how do I ask it. I'm just going to ask this shit. Somebody's going to answer. All right. And I bring it's people that's going to be realistic about it. They ain't scared to talk. They're going to be realistic. Even if even if I ask a question about the single life, you can still talk about when you were single 20 years ago. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, that don't mean you wasn't, you've been in a relationship your whole goddamn life. None of us been in the same relationship our whole life. You had to learn through that shit. Bumps and bruises. That's how you got to where you at. So for the most part, that's what my podcast is. Just picking up jewels, dropping a little bit of game, uh, men and women. If y'all want to join the conversation, all on the table or on Instagram, hit me up. Y'all can anybody could join the conversation. Just know that you ain't gonna come on my show and sit in the corner. No, nah. you damn sure gonna do that. <laughs> nah. I try, I try. Yeah. <laughs> you damn sure gonna sit. I will call on you every 30 seconds. You will not sit in the corner of my motherfucking show. Oh, well, no how show. long you been doing your show? Uh I started the end of 2019, early 2020. So I've been rocking for quite a while now. Um, I started strictly on YouTube. Um, shit. We started out, I started out with five members. It was me and four other guys. So we started out, we, we wanted to create kind of like a, a, a channel, not just a show. So 
we had the All on the Table podcast, and then each member had their own show on that channel that came out on a different day. Dope. Okay. That's dope. So that we, we kind of created a network. But as we all know, life catch up to people sometimes. So the other four, one by one, they had to drop out for various reasons. I'm still here talking my shit. That's just me. I ain't going nowhere. So yep. I turned my podcast into... I started off as a panel, so I wanted to keep it that way. I can't do like flan and sit and talk for 45 minutes by myself. It, that should drive me crazy. I'm just it's saying. An I can't. It's an arc, bro. Say it again. It's an arc. Yeah, yeah I can't. It's, it's not for everybody. Like, I feel like I'm rambling after a while. I feel like I'm just way off course. So it's like, oh, if I don't want to listen to it, I'm not going to put it out for other people to listen to it. That's just me. I definitely ramble. Every episode I put out, I stand on it. I'm not putting out nothing that I don't stand behind. And I feel like if I sat and talked to, talk to myself for 30 minutes, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be saying. That, saying that shit going to be everywhere. <laughs> say again, Kiki? I said you had something to say. You- yeah, like I can't. Yeah. That's, it's, not, it's not me. Is that? She who is who is that? Your, I, I don't plan either. I just have like a topic and kind of ramble a little bit, but try to stick to Whatever the topic may be, but um, the I, way I, my do, like, I don't mind up, having yeah. somebody else on, you know, like a panel. Or, and I do a show with my husband too every Thursday, so that helps as well. So I think I keep my show on the tip an hour. But yeah, mine music, it depends. I ain't so the, talking the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah, ours is, we try to keep ours at 30 minutes. When the show originally came out, it was a four hour show. It went God, down to three hours. I try to keep it to under two hours, but for some reason, motherfuckers don't like to shut the fuck up. So we pretty much always go over two hours every week. My show used to be two hours, and then that was like an hour and a half. Yeah, I started off what? like an hour and a half, and then people told me they ain't had the attention span for that. So I try to right get like yeah, a tight thirty short. minutes. That's why I drop down yeah, thirty minutes. But then when you get when you get into good conversations, you can't just cop it. Um, you know, cap it off at thirty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and that's pretty much every week. Hours. The harder I try no, not to cross over that that limit, the more I end up going over that limit because everybody just start going going crazy and going crazy and going crazy every time. Especially when you have crazy people in there. Facts. That's why we don't <laughs> let the other on the show. Invite us crazy people. They yeah. good shows though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I try to bring yeah. I, I try to only bring on people that's gonna actually want to talk anyway. So that's what helps. Right. Yeah, listen back to audio, just the audio part. Say again. Do you ever listen back just to the audio, like just for yourself to listen to? Uh no. every week, every week I watch my show like I'm a fan. Yep. Okay. I, I started doing that recently. Like that. Yeah. In order to know, in order to know if you're putting out a good product, you need to be able to enjoy that product the same way. So I look at my show and I critique certain things about myself. I critique things about my guests, the way that I put the video together. I critique all that as if I don't. If I look at it as if I'm not the one that put it up. Sometimes, some weeks I listen to just the audio. Some weeks I'll do audio and YouTube. Some weeks I just do the YouTube. And it's not mm-hmm. necessarily about the view. It's about me judging myself to see how can I make the next episode better than this one. Yep. Well, I was just asking because, like, with my show, it's always a bunch of people. So when I listen to the audio back, I be hearing shit I never heard before. And I was <laughs> on the show. Oh, right. It's always like that. When you, when you listening, I had a guest. It's funny. I had a guest, and I dropped the episode. I'm listening to it. And I text her something that she said in the show so during the show she was like yeah i got some long ass titties and that shit (laughs) no it caught me off guard that shit was was funny as fuck so i text i said yo what's with you and the long ass titties so she texts me back like what i said watch the episode when she watched it she was like yo i don't believe i fucking said that shit like she didn't even realize because she said it while other people was talking so she didn't realize that she actually said it I guess into the microphone. That shit was uh, fucking uh, hilarious. I just and started going back and watching mine because I used to just do it live and just let it roll. And I just didn't yeah. care. But now I go back and now I'm since mine's moved to Patreon now for video version, I like to go back and mostly edit it too, but I'm also clipping 
old episodes to use for reels and stuff. So that's another I thing. Too. Some gems on my show. Another thing that I tell people all the time: if you come on my show, whatever you say, you said. I don't edit out nothing nobody said. So if you say some shit that you don't want people to hear, you fucked up because I ain't I'm taking that shit out. Well, like for me, for example, like one part I edited out, I had a girl and a guy on for an episode on, um, I think it was like relationships or something. I don't remember what the type topic was, but um, she goes, hold on one second. I'm going to hit my bomb. <laughs> Gets up and turns around and hits her bomb. Like that, that'll cut now because it's not necessary for in free audio. And I was like, did, did this just really happen on my show? Because I'm like, girl, this is live. This is not like, you know, me FaceTiming you. This is like live. So it was our first time. So. Hey, Raw, you ever had somebody uh, been listening to your old episodes and they run up on you and start talking to you like you said it yesterday and you have no idea what the fuck they're talking about? Yeah, All, the time. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. All the time. And, and they look at me like, motherfucker, you said it. And I'm like, all right, you asked me about some shit from... 37 episodes ago, right, like right. that shit just happened yesterday. Right. I don't remember that. And mm -hmm. I talk so much shit, I'm not gonna hardly remember none of the shit that I that I remember. Most of this shit is freestyle. Yep. Yeah, I get the I get the weirdest text. Let me get text messages like nigga, McDonald's is delicious. Like, what the fuck? I don't <laughs> <laughs> real shit. Like, I don't I, I don't it throws me off. But I also do it to people myself, so I can't really say nothing. Because I'll go back sometimes and I'll listen to old episodes as well, just to, especially like if I'm thinking about something like certain certain topics, I'll rebring them up with completely different people. Because just because you brought up one topic with these group of people, don't mean it won't be different with them. But right. I won't bring it up like a couple episodes next. You know what I mean? So it might be something from like season one, and I'll go back and listen to that episode to hear how how we reacted to it and something will still be funny to me and i'll just text them like yo blah blah blah, blah. and they'd be like man what the fuck is you talking about so what's the benefit of breaking it down into seasons like i've just been on one i'm on episode 279 or something like that I've, I've never stopped and tried to decide when a season starts or stops like so for me for me it was just to for me it was more so an evolution thing so at the end of season one, I felt like I grew a lot more. So I'm like, all right. And before I start a season, I take a break. I'll take off. Like I took off the whole last last year. I took off for the whole summer. So when I came back, that was season three for me. But I feel like what I'm doing in season three is better than what I was doing two. And I felt the same way with season one. No, I get that. I get that. Yeah, yeah, me, it's make... more of an evolution thing. It's not a timing thing. Like how you see how everybody keeps saying, oh, my 100th episode, my three. I don't know how many fucking episodes I, I've done at this point. I have no clue. 279. I just be randomly exactly at the seasons. <laughs> nah, I know I'm at more than 79 episodes. I know for a fact I'm more than that. I know, Sue, but I got to go ahead and take my nap because I got to be up at 6 to take to go to work. So I'll be back in a couple hours. I love y'all. Night-night. Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Look, now, to answer your, your question, Flan, the reason why I do seasons because I was on, like, a network, and they had broke it down. They was like, okay, so you do so many episodes, we'll put it out, and then we'll do whatever with the next one. So I was like, well, in that case, I'm going to do, like, 15 take a two, three week break just to recharge. You know what I'm saying? Get everything mm -hmm. back together mentally. Cause I don't want to just keep, cause some people just do like three, four episodes a week. And I'm like, damn, you, you a soldier. Cause I don't like talking well, that much. Well, while we was putting out like five different shows every week, wow. sometimes more than that. I had a wow. show, I had a show called the raw reaction. What I would, and I was doing like reaction videos to videos. So, in one week, I could possibly do 10. In one week, I could do two, depending on how I felt and what videos. Because pe people would send me videos so I could give, give my reaction to them. I would. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, it was. It was nice. Some of them I really liked. Some of the videos people sent me, when they start sending me the fucking TikTok fucking uh, videos, I was kind of like over them. Because it was like, I don't really watch TikTok like that. And it, a lot of them so-called viral TikTok videos, they really don't be nothing worth being viral for they won't be funny they be boring as fuck so but i still did it if that's what the people wanted i gave them what they wanted it is what it is but then somebody kept sending me like these fights 
those are the ones I was get I was into. I was into them shits. Mm-hmm. Watching people get knocked the fuck out. I like that shit. <laughs> but that's what I be doing as well. Like I'll take a break probably like the end of December, recharge, you know, saying rest mentally. And yeah, I do seasons too, because I'm in season four of my show. Um, just to like who said something about evolution? I don't know who said that, but um yeah, that that's what I be doing as well. Uh okay, when I come back next season, we're gonna do this bigger, better, whatever, whatever the plan may be. I don't plan nothing on my show. Like I said, I just do a topic, whole nine yards. I do love having guests on, but yeah, that's December. That's my time to sit, chill. I don't put I don't even promote, I don't do nothing. I, I used to January. I used to go and walk into the show with a list full of questions. I realized that I only need about three because ain't nobody going to get off of those questions most of the time. Right. In about 30 <laughs> minutes. Are they going to take so that you, question to another question? Back. <laughs> you their own question? Back. That part. And, and that's why I tell people, like, my show is about conversations. Like, it's all, everybody that come on my show, it's a big conversation. It's not one of those... I'm going to ask you a question and everybody's going to answer and then shut the fuck up. Cause it's a question. Everybody going to have some rebuttal. Mm. Everybody going, somebody going to disagree with somebody at all times. Look earlier, I, I oh. asked one question and that shit went 40 fucking minutes of everybody ready to cuss each other the fuck out. Damn big smash ready to go on a fuck everybody podcast tour. Oh, yeah. big smash still out here fucking, huh? Oh yeah, no big. They big pissed Big Smash off earlier. He said, "Fuck oh, everybody." Really? He about to he about to go on tour and talk shit about everybody and a podcast for a whole week. <laughs> Damn, what they do to him? Talking shit. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna come back when I'm done smashing because my uh, I'm getting it in right now. I don't want y'all to see that. <laughs> you got some lettuce on your and you're stuck in your teeth. Right. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Going to work. I see it though. <laughs> oh, you, you probably see- can't see it, can you? Oh, nah, yeah. I can't see it for real. Oh, you set them up though, bro, man. You threw that out there, let them drown, and then you just sat back and watched the shit. I was looking at you, I was laughing too. Like you just watched the shit. Like you just no, but see, that's the thing. Don't. I kept trying to reel them back and he kept you know you, you know you can't reel them back though. No, he you know kept cutting that line after a while. It was like, all right, bro. <laughs> I can't help you at this point. Like you doing it to yourself at this point, bro. I'm I'm trying to help you. I threw him a life raft. I threw him the fishing the, the fishing string. Yeah, he kept getting rid of all that shit. So it was the draw for him, the EBT card, everything. Like, Facts. Know. And wow. between just me, CL, and Annie, he should have knew he oh, was had no wins. Yeah. <laughs> between all three of, uh, he knew he wasn't gonna have no win, but he still tried it. Even Kira. She tried to throw her shit in there after a while. Like, nah, fuck that nigga. Mm. <laughs> you ain't getting away with this one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, that's great. So, Flan, what's your uh, podcast about? So, mine is the the What Is TWS podcast. Um, it started originally. I had a group of people, and uh, I moved here to Texas from DC. You know, back home in DC, Chocolate City, it's easy to just be around. Uh, your own folks, you know, and I really had to interact with other people. I moved here to Texas, and all of a sudden, like I'm, I'm surrounded by white folks and everything else, and so uh, I had to like adjust and like you know, and I had a group of friends that got cool, and we could get together and we could discuss stereotypes and ask each other, you know, why you wear shorts and sweatshirts because that shit don't make sense, and they asked me about chicken and watermelon or whatever, and uh, and nobody took offense to it. So that's how it started. Um, everybody then dropped off. It's just me now. So it's uh it's just my perspective on life. I'm a I'm a black dad, I'm a recovering alcoholic, I'm a washed yeah. up rapper, and I just you know I use that to give my unique perspective on on uh on the world in general. And but yeah, I go on raw show and say whatever, and you know this is the person that was making fun of me about being celibate. So yeah, oh. the C, C playing do show. I remember you, I remember I seen every last one of them. Nah, I remember you, you're not celibate, bro. That's right. That's right. I'm not. I'm absent. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. Wait. So that means you don't play with yourself. I, which you one know. is which? Yo? Which one is which? No, being celibate means that you don't touch yourself at I, all. So no, I'm absent. No sexual contact. On abstinence, right? Yeah, I'm about to say now. You, you a strong person. You do that abstinence. Well, I tried. 
I really that's try. Just, that shit's not an option for me. I I made it for a whole week, but I tell you one thing: waiting for a whole week to touch yourself, my head almost came off. I said yes. <laughs> Yeah. If I had to go a whole week, I'd go crazy. Fuck that. Right, so how long you been doing your show? Man, uh, almost embarrassed to say it, but like six years. I had to take a break, you know, went through some things. I did a, a stint in rehab, you know, came back. So I, that's why I'm trying to figure out the whole like season thing. Cause uh yeah, like my, my break took me away from it, and I'm just trying to get back on just being like consistent. So I think last year my goal, I dropped the episode weekly. So last year my goal was to hit 52 episodes, not miss a week. And I did that. Um, so I don't know when I'm gonna take a break. Like I just like I don't wanna I don't wanna get in the habit of missing one because I know I know I'm an addict. If I like it, I want all of it. So if I miss one and I have fun, I'm like, I fuck next week too. Like hey, big, ups, big ups yeah. to you on that fight with the alcohol, man. Appreciate you, appreciate yeah, it. It'll be uh, God willing, it'll be four years uh next month this time. Amen. Let me ask you this: Do you not drink at all anymore? I don't do nothing at all. I drink, smoke. If I if I'm around something and I find myself enjoying it too much, I'd be like, Nah, I might need to cut this off because I know how I go. Like I'm going oh, all shit. the way. I had a battle with the right one. So, so I see I see why you asking it now because you can't exactly. be enjoying no pussy and then you gotta get away from it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like fuck work. Exactly. Where you going? We could just chill. I <laughs> I got problems though. No, I only yeah, ask because I know a lot of people who went into recovery and got to a point in their life where it's like, all right, I can still enjoy it from time to time, as long as I don't. I they had to learn how to not overindulge, if you will. Like, after yeah. after three years, after almost four years, like, do I really think if I had one drink, like, I'm gonna go fall all the way back to what I was? No, nah, not really. But there's nothing about alcohol to me worth risking it. Like I wouldn't risk it. Yeah, like once you once you once you beat it, once you beat it, it's like it don't make no sense no more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I've built a life that don't require drinking anymore, so yeah, it, it's not yeah. attractive to me. Anymore. Right. I just I, it I, used I, to be. I don't like who I am when I drink. Yeah. Oh, you don't drink? You don't drink either, Kiki? Yeah, I had to beat it. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Congratulations, yeah. both of y'all. Yeah. I don't drink liquor, but I have um like every here and there, you know, I have some wine here and there. I can't drink yeah. that shit to say I can't drink that for nothing. I don't care what kind of wine yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. That shit give me a headache and make me thirstier yeah. than a mother. It make me I, sleepy. I don't drink that shit at all. <laughs> my mom drinks like, oh, non-alcoholic wine. Right. I don't understand that at all. What's that? I said my mom drank non-alcoholic wine, and that shit don't make sense to me at all. She like, just like you could have just had some grape juice. Yeah, that's like milkless much. milk. Like that's just <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> sorry. Like non-alcoholic juice. wine. I didn't even know that was a thing, yo. Yeah. I mean, people drink non-alcoholic beer, non-alcoholic beverages, mm-hmm. all that wow. type of shit. So I get it. Listen, it's more so that they like the taste of it than they the, the taste of the taste and the experience versus the actual alcohol portion of it. When I was drinking non-alcoholic beer, and I, I don't, I don't anymore. But it was more to shut people up. You go places, and you don't have a bottle in your hand, and it'd be the yeah. same dude that asked you last week, "You're not drinking? Nah, you ain't drinking you on that? <laughs> nah, like I, right. now you don't know. Like, you turn you the know label what? to the other side, you don't know." When you I was know. young, I used to smoke like fucking Snoop Dogg. So now I don't smoke at all. Well, we, I don't smoke weed at all. And the same people that knew I stopped smoking in 2000. That's how long it's been since I quit smoking weed. 2000. People still be like, damn, man, you want to hit this? If I ain't smoking that part, three years, what the fuck makes you think I'm going to smoke right now just because you smoke it? Right. Like, I'm good. Yeah. Like, so I, I definitely get what you're saying, but I'm not about to sit here and pretend to hold a fucking uh, uh, a weedless L just to shut you the fuck up. Nah. <laughs> fuck all that shit. Right. Mine was, um, mine was basically because. I was like, if you knew me, Kiki was at the bar drinking, and every time we drink, we gonna kick it. You know what I mean? So it became like a, um, like just a social thing. Like if I'm, I had to learn who I was around people that drink without drinking. If that makes sense. <laughs> no, I get it. I yeah. get it. I mean, to a certain degree, we all change a little bit when you under the influence. 
You know what I mean? Some people come become freakier. Some people become more boisterous. Some people want to fucking sing. Like I'm the dude that the more I drink, the less I'm probably going to talk. Like people know when I'm a little bit drunk because now I ain't really saying too much. Like I ain't, I can crack jokes and, and, and rebuttal all day long. The more I get drunk, the more I'm like, yeah. yeah I'm, the life of, I'm the life of the party. Yeah. Yep. Period. I want to enjoy my buzz, so leave me the fuck alone. That's just how I feel about it. Like I'm dancing all night. I'm just doing it all. Oh no, I never been a. Da- I'm the Wally dude. I I, I, <laughs> I can, I can do Wally all day, all day long. I'm great at that. Any other dances? Shit. Nope. <laughs> wow. You won't okay, set me yeah. up. Kiki, you done? What's your show about? Um, everything from dicks to politics. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, um, it's called Deep Throat Conversations, and I was a part of uh, a uh, QWOP that's supposed to be coming back. So we literally talk about anything. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, get on there, have a good time, socialize, and um, my main um, I know the host. He likes talking about relationship or men and men versus women you know i'm saying to get the thought process and sometimes that's like kind of hard for me to talk about because men and their perception of women sometimes be off base and it's like it's like it ain't nothing you can do it's just like how that person grew up and how he thinks of women and there's nothing i can change it all i can do is say something where's it coming from no Sorry. Yes, my mom. (laughs) (laughs) Give me me one second. (laughs) Okay, sis. Well, we'll hear from you while she uh what's your show about? Thank you. Um you said earlier, did you? Me? Yeah. I have two. So I have a mental health platform uh called the Mentally Kill Project. We do a talk it out Tuesday live. Every Tuesday, we pick a different topic about mental health. It's open for anybody who wants to join, just to get their perspective. Um, I also do interviews. I've been doing them since like May or June of last year with people around the world with different mental health conditions, as well as advocates and mental health professionals and friends and family of those who have mental health conditions to give a fully rounded perspective of the different conditions. And then there's a podcast that goes with it. It's informational, goes over the disorders, the phobias and all 12 of the main mental health conditions. And then I have Hell on the Go, which is a variety show to make it like oh, wow. the easiest way to explain it. Um, I actually just filmed my, um, I filmed three episodes this week for my new season because it launches mm-hmm. February 3rd. But the one I shot today before I jumped on here was uh, my season opener, which is on human trafficking. So I'm really like, my brain is like sad. <laughs> Yeah, I I know. Know. Beautiful, man. I get into some serious shit on my show. <laughs> yeah, uh, mental health. I went through, I think, every last one of them growing up. Uh, bipolar, anxiety. Did try to commit suicide a couple of years ago. Was in a real, um, make long story short, bad spot going through, through some things with family. And they can be the worst. Pretty sure y'all know that. Um, Absolutely. Right. I'm glad you're still here. Well, as I am to see, I can still show you. I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see that. No, I'm blind. I can't. I can see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Tried to do that a couple of years ago. Uh, family member had my kids taken away from me by DCF and falsely accused me of abusing them. And as if I wasn't going through enough at the time already, y'all do that. So I found out who it was, and I was just like, you know what? This some bull. I, I, I tried, but it didn't succeed, obviously. So made long story short. But that mental health is very real. Very. Very, very real. Yeah. I mean, I it's mean, not I'll play it and get over it. You know, why are you still don't? Who the hell are you to touch my outside of here? Who, who told you that? I don't care if it's going to take you 10 years, 20 years, whatever. As long as you at least trying to get out of it, don't be everybody like a butthole got an opinion. 
about your life. Yep. And what kills me is they don't have their stuff together. Yeah. Those be That's the main not, ones. Even if people they off. do, who cares? It's not you. Yeah. But those it's, be the main ones. Life. Don't got their shit together, but they're going to tell you how to live your life. That's why I stopped doing How you life. supposed to live your life, rather. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> like trying to hear that. Ain't nobody perfect. We all out here struggling. We all done messed up. We all, for those that's trying to get it right, shut up, sit down. It, it, yeah, it some people don't. Sense. Some people don't quite understand that concept. They feel like how I see it is how you see it, motherfucker. We two different no. people. No. My mom's like that, because I I made an attempt in April of last year, thankfully failed, but I also got diagnosed with mental health conditions. I've borderline personality disorder, being the most extreme one. Um. And I was on a lot of medications because I basically had a psychotic meltdown. Um, I gave myself a heart attack the week before, crashed my car that February. Like it was a whole thing, a whole bad downward spiral. But um, when I got out of the hospital, my mom was like, all right, go back to work. I'm like, literally on like almost the highest dosage you could give a person of lithium and a bunch of other stuff. And I had no idea. I didn't even know what reality was at that point because, you know, your brain has to adjust to new medications. And I was like, I'm not coming back to work right now. And it was like, suck it up. You'll be all right. You need to go back to work. You need to do this. You need to do that. Like, bitch, you go back to work and worry about you. All right? Yeah. Like, don't worry that about what I'm doing. You make you fucking worse saying that, telling somebody that type of shit. They, yeah. they were good for that. Uh, my family has a tendency to say you need to have a thick skin, uh, which is basically a nice way of saying we're going to bully the fuck out of you constantly. So deal with it. Like, that's, yeah. That's how they were and are still. So I don't talk to them now. So, yeah. so basically, you just described every man on the planet how we supposed to live. I mean, I will talk to them eventually. I just right now, I'm, mm -mm. no. What I'm <laughs> saying is, as men, we grown from youngins, have thick skin. Get over it. Let it go. Get past it. Don't worry about it. Motherfucker, everything can't just be gotten over that easily. Some things stick with you. They sit in your head for a little bit. Right. I mean, for example, my mom told me to suck it up my entire life, and now I'm a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't go I no. it. I'm sorry I had to. When I just got off the phone with my mom. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and she mom being Duke real, though. Same, same, Kiki. Huh? Mom Duke told you and the same thing, real. Huh? Yeah, she good. Usually, I'm like, she know I'm at work. She on call. She, I got an answer for moms. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, but um, y'all hey, know how yeah. parents is. She called somebody hey, my age. My yeah. age group passed away. Kiki, yesterday, uh, uh, C. Ellen was saying on her show that uh, if they mom Dukes, and everybody was saying it, which was blowing me the fuck away, if their mom swing on them. And they swing it back on their mom. Is that not probably, my mom would probably hit me and I'd probably restrain her, but I ain't hitting her. Oh, Roger that. I would just restrain her, restrain her, and walk away. Ain't no way I'm putting my hands on my mom. Man, it was yeah. even dudes. It was even dudes saying, fuck that. I'm swinging back. And I'm like, what? My mom's from Kensington. Mom's? Kidding me? Fuck that. First of all, if I, when my mom was alive, had I swung on my mom, she had five brothers. That's a whole lot of rumbling I would have had to do at that point. And all Period. the motherfuckers, all the motherfuckers was in the military and carry knives to the to the day that they either died or still to this day. That would have been a whole lot of ass whooping I'd have had to go through. Swinging on mom deuce. Then I had my brother. Then I had other motherfuckers. Yes, yeah, I don't know it was crazy. I don't know how they grew up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe their parents wasn't parents, but my mom was a parent and she was a single parent and she made it work. Ain't no way I'm putting my hands on my mom. I don't give a fuck what she do. That yeah. part, you know what I'm saying? Now, have Even I have I had some words? With, I had some words with my mom because I had to get her together. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not no saint in that because I believe in holding people accountable. And I will if it's words, it's words. But I won't call my mom out her name or nothing like that. But we are going to talk about it. I don't know. My, yeah, I think I'm white, I've seen... but I'm not like call my mom by her first name white. So I just want to put that out there. Okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm 41 guy. years old and I still say mommy. <laughs> yep. Mom. 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 Mommy. Yes, like, ma'am. Like when I see people, 
when I see people, it used to blow my mind. As y'all can see, I cuss a whole lot. But when I was around my mom, not one of them motherfuckers ever slipped out of my mouth. Oh. Ooh, when I'm mad, my mom used to always say, just let, like, if I come in the house and I guess she know I'm very passionate, she would be like, just go ahead, say it all. And that's when I would go in. Like, this bitch done sit up here, put her hands on me, and she'd be like, okay, my child ain't got them all, but I love her. <laughs> but nah, no, it I, ain't, um, it's not, I'm, I'm like one of the people that got expressed, but yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? My brother, my brother, no matter how mad he is, like, would never cuss. You know what I'm saying? In front of my mom. Was the option for me. But it's like, if I am going through something and I have to express myself, my mom allows me that space to get everything out and vent to her. Hold up. I slipped up one time talking to my son. And I slipped up and called. I said, man, you little motherfucker. And I turned around and looked at my mom like I was about to get in trouble type shit. Like, mind <laughs> you, I'm 30 years old. <laughs> and I'm still looking like, oh what? shit, what the fuck did I just do? Like, that's just what it was. Like, I don't know. I think the respect factor has changed. Speaking of respect factors, let me ask y'all this, right? And I know I'm not the only one who sees it or has been through it. So as we've gotten older and we've become those adults, as we can see, the family dynamic has changed. So now aunts and uncles are <laughs> not looking at them the same way. You see what I'm saying? You can't just because you're my uncle, you can't talk to me how you feel you should be able, you could talk to me at 30 like you did when I was 13. How do y'all feel about those family dynamics now? Do y'all feel like you know aunts and uncles need to relax, or they still get that same respect that they got when you was 13 now that you're 30? I'm gonna keep it all the way one thou wow. You know what I'm saying? Because I grew up. My mom is a different, my mom is a different creature in herself because that's where I came from. But I grew up with um, aunts putting their hands on me in the wrong way and uncles and treating me crazy. And I gave them nothing but the utmost respect throughout my whole life. You know what I'm saying? But then when I grew up and, and, and you know, words, I, I, I don't put myself in a circle and I let them feel, I let them know how I feel like seriously. But now I do have one uncle who's never treated me wrong or dirty or out of the way. Those aunts and uncles, they do get my respect until the day I die. You feel me? But anybody who's harmed me where I couldn't, especially when I was younger and couldn't um, fend for myself, then they could get it just like anybody else. You know what I mean? And I hate yep. to say that, but you know what I mean? For you, like me, I would never do nobody's child dirty because a child is a child, an innocent being. You know what I'm saying? So that's to me, that was like you a bully. You know what I'm saying? Because now you ain't going to do it because I'm grown. You know, I can handle my own now. Do it now. You feel me? So mm -hmm. it depends on how people it depends on how your aunts and uncle treated you. You feel what I'm saying? That's that's had, that's my take on it. I had an uncle. Well, I still got an uncle that. Uh, always respected him my whole life. And then one day, you know, he drunk and a situation happened that with me and my, my wife that me and her don't even think about. It wasn't even that big of a deal to us. I mean, at the time it might've been, but we got over it. We stopped thinking about it. And he was like, every time I seen this dude, he just kept bringing it up and kept bringing it up and kept bringing it up to the Excuse point me. where one day I'm like, all right, listen, bro, if you bring it up again. Like I'm ready to punch you in your face at this point. He and I actually said it to him. Now, mind you, like I said, I respected this dude forever. So he brought it up. And when he brought it up around his other brothers, they all looking at him like, yo, what the fuck do you care for? Why are you worrying about that man's house? Like, a yeah, grown-ass man. That's his wife. Why are you worrying about his house? To the point where, like I said, I had to tell him, like, yo, bring it up again. I'm going to have to put these paws on you type shit. Like, and I really was on the tip, like, you wasn't about to get these paws like you was my uncle. You was going to get these paws like you somebody that I don't even know. Right, like on because, that type of like I, if you brought it up once and we talked about it, I can respect you, but you keep bringing it up. That means you judging me, you ain't moving on, so you can't be a part of my future. Still now, mind you, this was over the course of like three years, though. It wasn't even like and like if it got something to do, and if it got, if weeks. you got something to do with my uh, my significant other, like what the fuck you want to fuck him? Like, because yeah, I don't understand like, exactly. So it was just like and then I think at that moment when he brought it up, it was almost like he was trying to impress somebody. Like it was another a random chick sitting there. We was at like a party and it was another chick. Mind uh -huh. you, I don't know the chick. I ain't worrying about her. But it was almost like he was trying to impress her 
as he was saying it type shit. So it was like, all right, you're not about to sit here and get shine off me, motherfucker. Like, I ain't nah, that. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's what it is. He need his own stories. Tell him, tell his own stories. Yeah, like that shit was crazy. So then after that, for the next two years, every time I seen him, he won't walk up to me apologize. And it was like, damn, bro, you just don't let nothing go. You gotta move on. <laughs> yeah, like you just, not like, I'm not even thinking. You piss me off, and I'm not thinking about it. But you keep bringing it up. What the fuck, you? You the first time you apologize, I said, "All right, don't worry about it. It's all good." You know, that was months ago. I ain't thinking about that shit. Six months later, you bringing it up again. Oh, I just want to apologize. Like, damn, nigga, like you must you thinking about me way too hard at this point. Like, that part. <laughs> what the fuck is going Wait. on with? You? Like, what you got going on? You got a job? <laughs> you got something to do? <laughs> yeah, something make the fuck right here. Something, something about this situation <laughs> just ain't working right. Oh, wow. Hey, what's good, y'all? What's up? Y'all Y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right, man. We just hey. here, baby. Yeah. Eric G, what's going on with your player? Hey, what's going on with y'all, man? You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry I'm lagging. I... I just got off of work, man. And I put on my titties first. What's going on? I put too I put too much lotion on my toes and I got socks on and I can feel it when I rub my toes together. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> feel like you Ooh, about to swamp feet all at any moment, huh? Yeah, I hope it don't stink. I hope they don't make them stink. Shit. Man, they're gonna be sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> gonna wake up with them soggy socks. What kind of shoes you got on? Crocs. Oh no, nah, you should be all right. They're gonna dry you up. <laughs> if you had on like some boots, Ooh. if you had on some boots, man, shit. Them yeah, that would have probably like been a, a tragedy. Hell yeah. You'd have lit I'd have probably had to like take them off in the, the, the privacy of my own home. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Eric G, what's going on, baby? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how, how everybody been? Ah, uh, man, we still yeah. alive, man. Trying to be rich yeah. like you when we grow up. That's Same all. Right, well, y'all lines, y'all damn self, y'all trying to be like me. I'm trying to make it. You got that karate. You got that karate movie right. stuff going on. <laughs> he got the karate movie shit popping. He like, yo, what's up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> that was me earlier. Mine was lagging like that. Feel like we in a Shaw Brothers hey, movie. Oh, look, I'm still on. I'm still on that damn um, Obamacare damn line. So it's fucking me up right now. It's catching up. Give it time. We're gonna fuck yeah, back up. That shit got a super lag. That's crazy. Usually it's like a yeah. second off. This shit like three minutes off. That's crazy. <laughs> I'll be right back. I ain't never seen a lag like that. Holy You're shit. You're probably saying something real inspirational. We ain't ever going to get it. Facts. Hey, it sounds like he's traveling at the speed of light. His shit trying to catch up. His words trying to catch up with him and shit like a cartoon character. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Now his voice get- his voice didn't got Thanos snapped, but his video still here. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back, guys. Okay, I'm gonna leave you. Right, I got, I got a, I got a question. Um, raw first, just because I feel like he gonna give something to this. So, is it fair to not? feel like you have to conversate with everybody who jump in your dms yeah i mean like do you because as a, as a well because i asked because like a while back i was it was like six in the morning i'm up i ain't had coffee yet and some dude just hit me up with like a five second song and was like hey tell me what you think it is and i'm like dog first of all it's five in the morning you ain't said hey hello nothing my nigga you just oh, hit me with five oh. seconds of a song so then i'm like well it's not much to go off of you know what i'm saying but I guess it's cool. He's like, well, nigga, if you was a real fan, you would have already listened. I was like, first of all, my nigga, it's six in the morning. First of all, G, it's six in the morning. I ain't had coffee and you jumped in my inbox. Don't forget that. So then, so then he was like, yeah, it's cool. Hold on. He was like, hey, yeah, it's cool. Don't worry about it. I just know who my real fans are and blocked me. And I was like, nigga, 
You block me after you jump in my inbox on some bullshit because I didn't respond like you wanted me to. Now you mad at me and I'm not a real fan. First of all, nigga, I don't even know you. So majority of my story is other people's shit, right? There's music, podcasts, all types of shit, right? So I share this chick's, um, she did like the one mic challenge and that shit was dope as fuck. Like she went hard on that drink. So I shared it. So ball, uh, you know, when somebody like your story, it goes into your inbox. So he liked it. And then he sent like a couple fire emojis. And I responded. I said, yeah, she dope as shit. So she, he was like, uh, what do you say? Uh, he was like, yeah, why you don't never share none of my stuff? So I'm like, bro, I never knew. I never seen you post anything. I didn't even know you did music. So I don't know what to tell you on that. He's like, yeah, you be acting like you don't fuck with me. Now, mind you, I've never had an actual conversation with this dude. I really don't even know who this dude is. So I literally said to him, I said, bro, I'm going to assume that you thinking I'm somebody else. And I'm going to just leave it there instead of getting upset right now. He's like, no, that's corny as shit. You'll never share none of my shit. My music better than hers. And I'm like, bro, I've never seen you post any fucking music. So I can't judge how good your music is or good your music ain't. Man, fuck that. You ain't no real fan of mine. You don't fuck with me. You don't even like me. My nigga, I don't even know who the fuck you are. I don't even know you. Like, how can I be a fan of you when I don't know you? I did not know you did music. Now, here's the... Here's the bad part about this whole scenario. Later on that day, I get on Instagram and I see one of his music posts. This nigga was doo doo garbage juice. Garbage. <laughs> oh, he, he, he did you a he, he did you a service, but so you ain't have to keep it real with his ass. You know, I was I was upset. <laughs> I was mad at that point because it was like, bro, you went through all that and you Ashley corny. Like you fucking kidding me. After Come all that, you man. fucking suck. Damn, it's cold, man. But they got like the air conditioning on in the wintertime. Me personally, I'm the dude that I don't. I'll depending on what you say in my DM. Nine ninety percent of the time, I'm going to respond just because I don't like to be. I hate when people leave me on red, so I try not to do that unless I know like the conversation is over type shit. But if it's like you asking me a question or trying to get feedback or. Anything of that nature, yeah, I'll respond. If you say some dumb shit, I'm not going to respond at all. That's just me. But 90% of the time, I usually respond to pretty much every DM that I get. Like, I don't feel like I'm that I'm that big where I can't talk to a motherfucker. But I want to say this, though, because some people get in your DM. All right, like, especially me, I'm not that. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm not pity, so to- I ain't getting those type DMs you probably get. Yeah, but I'll speak to anybody who speaks to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not that person. But like the one, okay, the one dude, it's like dudes like this that I, I don't understand. Hey, beautiful, how are you? Oh, thank you. How are you? Are uh, you single? Uh, yeah, I am, but I'm not right now. I'm just working and trying to build myself up, so I'm not really hollering at nobody. But you know what I'm saying? You my, um, you, you my friend on here, so we'll just, you know, speak on, uh, you know, our timelines. You feel me? Yep. Okay, so uh, two days can go by, and it's like, hey, beautiful, I would really like to take you out to dinner. So yeah. at that point, you become creepy to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I give you a piece of my mind, and then I block you because we're, I mean, it's giving grand rising energy that part. <laughs> but other than that, like, if you in my DMs, I will answer it. It's just the weird stuff that make me be like, okay, wait a minute. Okay, but here's my other thing. So I have somebody who constantly, no names, please, like send me videos of their stuff. Like I'm like supposed, I don't know what you want me to do with this. Like, why are you sending me your posts? Like, I like you want me to share it? You want me to comment? And it's just like it feels weird because I'm not ESPN. I don't nah. know what you want me to do with your sports it, clips. Now, is they tagging you in it? Okay, or they, yeah, I'm gonna say no. They sending me. They probably want you to share it because of, because of your platform, real talk. Yeah, but see, you got a platform too. Are you sharing my shit? Like, oh, they never do. They never do. Never. So it's one sided. It's like you want me to share your shit, but if I, because here's the thing if I see it and I like it, I'm going to share it. You ain't got to send me your stuff. Because now I just feel like you forcing it. 90% of the people who shit I share don't share mine. And I don't really think about it. But me neither. I do. Like certain people, like I know they might get a kick out of this, or 
they might be in it. So I'll tag them in it. It's not necessarily that I'm asking them to share. It's more so like, I'm going to just tag you. Mainly, especially if you in the video, I'm definitely going to tag you in it because I feel like people should know who you are as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I get. You know, I don't share well, nothing. In the 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 was that? No, you was in them. You just didn't say nothing. So the camera switched off you real quick. <laughs> Nah, but I just I feel like it's weird because again I'm not used to the whole quote unquote I guess celebrity status or this and that or I'm the guy that you can send your stuff to and my name carries enough weight that if I share it it's gonna be seen by I guess the right people but it just feels weird to me that every day you send me something I haven't shared nothing I don't even like open it you know what I'm saying because okay. now it's at this point where it just it feels day. weird yeah like do you, every do you know them. Sometimes people look at you bigger than you look at yourself. Right. Too. That's what that's what I was gonna say. But do you know them? Uh, I mean, we friends. We had interactions, but it wasn't like we, you know, what I'm saying, talking every day and. Okay, so maybe your uh, maybe your opinion means something to that person on some real shit. Yeah. So is it their also, is it videos of their shit or they just sending you random shit? Not nah, videos of their stuff. Yeah, they might just want to get you. Yeah, they just might want your opinion. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, you should take it as a compliment, real talk. You know what I mean? But to them, uh, you might be that dude. Right. Uh, they must not know me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Well, I get they well, might I hope they're watching this so they can yeah, understand they might look it. At you bigger than you look at yourself. So you may still see yourself humbly right here. Small time potatoes. Yeah, where them, they look at you like, oh shit, man, fucking DC, he that dude, like. If I could get on DC level type shit, they might look at it. That hey way. man, I'm on the ground. Okay. I'm just uh -huh. saying. I mean, it, it, like I said, it, it still feels weird. So I'm still trying to get I used mean, to it. I mean, say you on the ground, but that's that's your opinion of yourself. We all on the flow. I ain't even made it to the table yet. Hey, I'm still in the basement, <laughs> baby. At least you're on the floor. <laughs> hey, I'm sitting. I'm sitting at the day. I'm sitting at the table waiting for my big entree to come. Yeah. Man, I'm I'm still in the basement and waiting for somebody to open the door so I can come back upstairs. Damn, I'm making my own table. You want me to open the door? No, Please. I'm gonna be leaving soon. I'll be Please. back later, but even if you crack the door, I will figure out my way in that motherfucker. I'm just trying to be like y'all when I grow up. <laughs> you don't want to be like me. In the basement, though. I'm like at least. <laughs> Now, I feel like all of us, all of us have our specific little statuses or platforms or, or where we at or whatever. And sometimes we look at ourselves as this is where we at. But there's somebody out there that looks at you and they say, yo, like your opinion matters. Like what you say matters. Again, I've been coined with a fucking phrase that I didn't even know I was saying, because apparently every time I say it, it makes people want to hear <laughs> what I'm about to say. What's I that again? Listening to me. Shut the fuck up. No, I'm just <laughs> nah, I say that a lot too, but nobody wants to coin me with that one. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Here's the thing. Oh yeah, nigga, you did. Oh man, I, you know what? That's when you what put the hand saying. with it, like here's the thing. Like, <laughs> especially it's when funny. I'm, especially when I'm serious and I ain't got time to play, I will hit yeah. you with that real quick. Here's the motherfucking thing. Now nah, Ross said a lot, but you know what he said because he if he he be like boom he either say boom so here's the thing or he just be like here's the thing uh, I be like boom? oh he about to say, say boom yes yeah because yeah, he'll start he'll be he'll be like all right so here okay boom so say you and I be like okay this nigga about to say something crazy because he put boom in front of it yeah, I know it's about to be means profile some shit. Yeah, it's like you can't be wasting right booms right out here. It's so <laughs> like saying so see what had happened was. Yeah, you but know, when yeah, he say you know, he be like, but he be like, here's the thing, you know, you got. I'm like, he about to be some Stephen A. Smith shit when he say that. I already know it's coming. That's the crazy part. I literally did not even realize I was saying that shit like that. But you every, are, you do. But like two weeks straight, everybody was like, "Yo, as soon as you say this, we already know what's about to happen." Just all I can say to y'all is that y'all have a platform, and there are people who watch you, and you never know who's watching you. So therefore, feel. <laughs> you should you should put yourself on a pedal stool so that uh it could be what it is not trying to say like be like i'm that ish i'm this bitch that no it's just yes you should yes you should 
Just one second, please. <laughs> I'll finish that because yes, you should feel like you're that shit. First of all, you should believe in your craft and you should believe in your work. And you should think that people look at your work that way. And that, I'm saying that, but there was only like, I started my podcast in June. Now my book's been out for 10 years, but I never marketed it. So no one knew about it. But my podcast, as soon as I launched it, because I'd been doing my comedy around it, I went to a venue once and it was like, it's the hell on the go. It's Knubel. And I'm like, these people fucking know me. So I say that and like in my head, I think that, but then people like recognize me or something I've done. And I'm like, you people know who the fuck I am? People are watching my shit. I only hope my haters are. Like, that's all I make my stuff for. I'm like, please watch my shit and talk about it with your friends so that I know that I bothered you that way. So that years much. ago, I had another show Daddy. called The Random Show. And it's funny. I went to a barbecue at my aunt house one day. And I'm sitting I'm there so eating. And I, and I hear somebody say, oh, shit, that's the dude from The Random Show. Now, mind you, I don't know everybody watching my shit, but when I heard right. it, I'm like, hold up, wait, what? Who the fuck said that shit? Like, it threw me off guard that somebody was would, would know me as the dude from the random show. What? You never know who's watching your shit. You never know who's influenced by what you're doing. You never know who's checking you out because everybody not going going like your shit just because they watched it. Everybody going to share it because they watched it. But some people just watch it. They don't really want you to know that they watched it. Oh yeah, which yep. I had to. Oh. I had to get used to that too. I've only caught yeah, one I, of those so far. I don't know what just happened. All right, yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, no. Too. I it, it it's it's cool, and um, it just I don't know. For me, it just feels different. But at the same time, it feels cool because you, like you said, you never know who Kiki always got business going on. <laughs> I just don't like because I wanted to come back when I heard her going in and talking about. I want to explain myself, but it's clearly she's gone. She'll be back. No, I'm here. I'm here. I wasn't saying uh, the way I was giving it the context. It wasn't like don't put yourself on a pedestal or anything like that. What I was saying was don't think you better than the next person, but just be there oh, as because you might be an example for somebody. You never know where somebody's mind space is. So they're probably looking up to you. And even though you probably feel like you're not that person to be looked up to, God put you no God model. put you places for a reason. That's why I was saying it. Okay, and that's all I had to say to you, uh, Christy. <laughs> now, the, the, cool thing about this, the cool thing about this podcast thing is like just getting out here and, 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 and saying, you know, telling my story or telling like real shit. Like you find out all these things you thought was just like, super unique about you or like shit that, that you was going through that nobody else could relate yeah. to it's a million yeah. motherfuckers that can relate to it you know and you as soon surprised. as you start talking about it everybody yeah. jumped in with they with they shit and you're like oh you know i'm i'm not alone you know i'm or i don't you know mm -hmm. i'm not that different i'm not that weird <coughs> so this, this i think we got to get to the point where like we're transparent really so listen, like if you're going to be if you're going to be on a platform be transparent because yeah, like I said, I, it goes back to you never know why you're here or why you even had the idea to even have your own podcast. You never know why God is using that and you never know where it's going to go. So Thanks. transparency yeah. is, is is it's a reason why you went through what you went through. No matter, I don't know nobody else's story, but I know mine's and I know that I'm here to tell mine's. You know, it's not a it's not an easy story to tell, but I'm here to give it. If I feel yeah. that my spirit if if God say to speak it. I'm going to speak it and I ain't going to be embarrassed of nothing I've been through. You know what I mean? So transparency, that's why I was just like big ups to you, Flan, because me, um, I just recently about last year, you know what I'm saying? I just gave up the alcohol and everything. So like just to hear you say four years this time, I'm just like, thank you, God, for giving somebody I could look up and say, yeah, I ain't going to touch liquor for the rest of my life. If he could do it for four, I can. You know what I'm saying? So it's... um. I appreciate you sharing that. You know what I mean. So it's a it's a lot of ways that you touch people that you don't even know how you're touching them. You know what I mean. I, I feel like you could give up. The, uh, you could be abstinent like him too, right? <laughs> um, I already did that for five and a half years. I don't see myself doing it again. I'm not. But I'm not getting any right now. So I mean, I guess that's abstinent by default. I got faith in you. I think you got like a good ten years that you could do. Oh really? Ooh, no, no, no. You don't have the only thing that gives me faith is my toys. 
Hey, all right, I'm back, y'all. I'm sorry. I had to delete some. I had to delete my favorite porn, but I'm back. <laughs> okay, oh, not, not the favorite. Not the favorite. Favorite, bro. Oh, that one was lacking, man. Big oh, that motherfucker was what five hundred megabytes. Big booty oh, holes by the beach. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Here's the thing: you can't, you can't say that you have a favorite anything until Draymo writes a review on it. Because we need to True. make sure that shit is official. <laughs> oh, damn that, man. Damn that. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I, I I need Pinky to be up on her toes. But anyway, y'all, I'm back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I apologize. I have some down for Mr. Stone. Say, say Stone. I said Misty Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and and, 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 and Misty, Misty Hello Seven is right. It's right. I bring back memories. <laughs> No, Miss. See, Missy was the type of woman we used to, to watch late night. You know what I'm saying? That's she could. Missy would do. She would do them HBO movies and then go back and do the horror stuff. Oh, Who I used to watch? Who's Who's everybody's favorite porn star of all time? Riley Reed. <laughs> Janet Jack me. Wow, you went all the way back with it. Yeah. 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 Swallow, she can swallow the hell out of it. That's what she is known for. Yes. I don't know. I was a young pup when I first seen her. My uncle used to uh, dub porn. You know how you had to take two VCRs and you would have to turn the TV off and record one to the other. <laughs> but every now and then I'd go down there and sneak and turn it on while this shit was dubbing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> hey, I can't even laugh because you remember how, okay, we, we was in the hood, but it was that one person in the hood that had a satellite. And so you can like get like channel 60, I think it was 69 or 96. Oh, the, the blurred ones? Hell, yeah. It'll be nasty stuff oh. going on. But every so often it'll just come in clear and you be like, hell yeah. Yo, let me tell you. Nah, let me tell you. That shit fucked I me up. Live, I used to live with that green titty. It was a green titty would always pop up. That's how I yeah. know that, that, yes. that damn channel was right. A green titty? So yeah. I mean, like because it was wavy. No, because it was wavy. And yeah, I know what he's talking about. But yeah, it was wavy. But you could every now and then it'd be coming in clear, but it was just green because of the fucking color. But that's what me up because you because that's how people got their imagination because you had to be like, is that a leg, a titty? What is that? Yeah, but that's the reason why I'm wearing glasses now. My ass can't see. <laughs> he was face to the screen. <laughs> yeah, your face is to the screen. They're like, there's something gonna happen here. No, you trying to focus? Yeah, I remember one of the best days of my childhood is when we finally got like cable, and I could finally hit the back button to find the action porn channels but like the last one was like cartoon network in case anybody walked in best time of my childhood because other than that it was sneaking the city oh. in, the, in the static you know i'm about to say the porn was you get the channels but if your mom got cinemax all you gotta do is stay up at night oh yeah stay up at night and it gets nasty see, see i was lucky my mom I was, was a single parent we didn't have that shit no nah, see see we, we can afford the, the big cable I just watched BET Uncut come on. I'd be happy. Oh, man. BET oh. Uncut was yeah. some weird shit. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Like, my brother and my cousins and I'm going to be up, and they just beat me up real bad until I go to cry and go to bed so they can uh, watch I, it again. You guys, I got lucky. Do you guys so remember Room Raiders? I should ask, just make sure I rewind them <laughs> back to where I put it on at. Oh, yeah. Room Raiders, I remember it. Uh, Because there was this one weird episode where a dude had, like, a stack of magazines in his fucking closet and shit, like way at the bottom underneath a bunch of dirty clothes and shit. And the girl seen it was like, uh-uh. You got yeah. too many porn books in your room, nigga. You ain't reading that much. <laughs> hey, yo, man, that was a foul, that was a foul TV show for kids, man. I don't know why we was watching that. <laughs> as, as, as I was like said, that time I was watching, I had to be about maybe like 12. But that's the reason we fucked up right now. Watching yeah. shit like that. So just imagine what the kids is going through now, what they see, because it ain't mm. nothing that they cannot see and watch wow. and not deal with. That's why YouTube everybody's so crazy. Woke. My seven year old is on YouTube, and every once in a while I come up here, you know, what the fuck, what the fuck is you watching? What is what is this? Yeah, no, put, I put, got my, my son's all been to my YouTube. Fuck around. I can see everything you're seeing. Don't play with me. <laughs> Yeah, you oh, gotta God. be like that. You 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 literally gotta be like that with the kids nowadays because if not, it's it's gonna get in their head because that is the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, he's in fourth yeah, grade yeah. now. He knows how to spell, <laughs> so he yeah, could be searching shit wife, now. We the random. That's why I'm scared. Record. I'm scared to have kids because of that. I'm like, oh, no nah, hell. Well, 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 I will random just ask you. Let me get your phone. Put your code in. Yep. I don't need your code. I'm gonna ask you right there in your face. Put your yeah. code in. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm checking everything. My wife do the same motherfucking shit. I don't care how mad you is. As you should. You pay the bill, people, right? I was about to say, people kill me with that. I pay the bill, but that's his. No, motherfucker. My uh, son told me one day, you in my room. I said, my nigga, you ain't paid an ounce of rent near one time in your life. You ain't got no rent, no room in this bitch. I allow you to sleep in this motherfucker. It's a big difference. Go off the hinges. Now, let me tell you though. Let me no, tell you. He that. almost lost that door. He let almost me, lost his door after saying that bullshit. Let me let me tell you. Though, I got a smart ass child, man. I told my son that same shit. I was like, look, but this is my damn house, yo. This is my room. He's all right, cool. Period. I had a, I told him one day. I told him one day he need to clean the mug up. He talking about, but ain't this your room? I'm like, no, nah, look, motherfucker, we ain't got time. Oh, he'd have got backhanded. Oh, oh, like that's, that's, that's when the yeah. judo chop becomes real official when yo. you get like that, baby. Yo. Mother, yeah, I'm putting your Adam's I'm apple in the back of like his neck. When I finish, boy. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have no, put his right. Adam's apple in the back of his neck. He'd have said that shit to me. That's why I understand. Like, I get it. Some parents don't whip their kids. I get it. I don't. I think. No, I don't. But I, I, don't. I, I swear, if I wouldn't have got my ass whipped, y'all, from my mom, I would be real bad off. Real bad off. I had to learn how to respect elders real quick. How old and that's probably, you, and you know what? My butt whoopings is why I would never put my hands on my mother because my mom installed fear to answer your question from earlier. She installed I'm, fear in my ass. You feel how me? How old were y'all when y'all got your last ass whooping? <laughs> 16 for me because I, I called myself staying out all night. Oh, shit. Oh, Man. you was having big fun. Oh, yeah. Home and, and listen, because here's the thing. Like, Queen, let me know if I'm right or wrong. Okay. Somewhere in my head, I'm like, okay, I got titties now. You know what I'm saying? So I know my mom's not gonna hit me or whip me because I got I got titties. Like she knows that's delicate, you know. No, I got no. home. My mom had an extension cord and whooped my ass like I was like three years old. Yep. With titties and all. No, titties that was and all. That was that was she made sure she my mom damn titties too. My mom never made me afraid of her like beating my ass. My mom was literally insane. So, like, one one time my sister snuck out because we were each 15 months apart. She chopped their motherfucking hair off. They were bald the next morning when they got home. So, my ass stayed up in the house. I was afraid of her beating my ass. I was afraid of her chopping my shit off. <laughs> she was crazy. Well, serious. Well, it worked. Yeah, she was. She made us eat a pack of cigarettes when she found a cigarette butt in her ashtray. Like, all that shit. Yo, we, yo, we done crossed over. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't smoked them motherfuckers. Y'all ate them. Yeah, she gave us like a certain amount of time to smoke the whole pack, and whatever we didn't smoke in that amount of time, we had to eat. I think I got through like one, and I vomited everywhere. When and then she went inside to answer the phone, and we like ripped them up and threw them in the neighbor's lawn. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be, <laughs> you wouldn't pay me to smoke now. <laughs> That's the case. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> and yet I'm still a smoker. How old was you when you got your ass whooped for the last time? Me? She never got. Flynn. Um, I don't know how. Oh old my god! Three years uh, last year. <laughs> I don't know how old I was, but you know, I, I've been on your show uh, a couple times, and I've uh, I've never I don't say the word bitch like I just not it's not, it's not I said it right now, but I call a dude a bitch in a second, but I don't I don't use it toward women. Oh, and, I like you. But basically, it's not for, it don't come from a place of virtue. It come from trauma. Uh, I think I was quoting some Ice Cube lyrics or something, and I called my sister a bitch, and I got my mother whooped my ass. Then uh, mm. when my aunt got home, it was like, guess what he did. And then she whooped my ass. And then for like a week going on after that, it was every female relative that heard the story. I got another ass whooping. So I got Basically, like trauma. Your ass that. went on a, on, a, on, on a whooping tour. Yeah, it was an ass whooping you know revival. They, 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 they kept going. Mm-hmm. I get a big ups to my brother, man. I, he never called me out my name like that. He beat my ass, but he never called me a bitch. That's yeah, I've never I've never called my sister out her name either. Um, I was some rap even when she got on my fucking nerves, I still no. Do. But it's 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 just refreshing because nowadays the word bitch is used so loosely. It's right. like girl, bitch, 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 and I like that's the first thing I let females know when I come around. I don't I don't do the bitch word. But you know what's crazy? Because I only use the word bitch if I'm real upset. So it's, it's I'm gonna crazy. take it that way. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't. I'll like use it. the word bitch in a conversation, but I won't directly call a woman a bitch if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like I and if we all in conversation and and I might say it, but for me to like call Kiki that I wouldn't do it. You know no, what I mean? Like right. that's just not. Yeah, me. like I don't I don't like it. Like, but females do it to themselves. It's, and they're like, bitch, it, bitch. It I know it's different. You know what I'm saying? I got to give them the benefit of the doubt. I understand that, but don't do that towards me. 
because yeah. the only time you'll hear the B word come out my mouth is if I mean it in a way that we about to fight. So therefore, I don't want you to say it to me because I'm going to take it in the way that I give it, if that makes sense. Hell yeah. Well, let me say this. I think it's weird for me, though, because I kind of I kind of do the shit like backwards sometimes. I call a dude a bitch in a minute, but I call a female a nigga. And, I'll, yeah. and it, 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 it kind of like in a it's just a general conversation. Cause I don't like I said I'm raised around a lot of women. I can't I can't call a woman a bitch. It's just it don't even sound right coming out of my mouth. I can't just say it. But we but me and the dude talking, me and the dude talk like man, bitch, fuck you. Like, but I just can't <sighs> say it to a female. I yeah. don't think a female should say it to no man either. I hear yeah. I'm hearing a lot of that. I don't think a female should ever Ooh. disrespect a man oh, and call him a bitch. I just yeah. don't I, I just don't see man. You call a dude a bitch back in the day, you might as well say oh. it's over. But what if he got bitch like tendencies? Mm. Oh well, you know what? It is nowadays. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of men out here that like to be called bitch. You know. What so I'm what is bitch like tendencies? I was actually about to add something to that effect. Getting bent over and walking Ooh. with a purse and switching. I didn't mean that, but yeah, she <laughs> went over the bridge. Like she's gonna start something. <laughs> like I don't mean to start you because I don't judge nobody. Like you do you. Like. By all means, I mean, you. like, you but know, pillow just, talking. The men or... out there, you can ask them, the, the ones who are that way, they like being called that name. Mm. So basically, so basically, you feel like if a dude getting pegged, then he's he's a bitch. Um, I don't the know, ones, who, the ones who like to be called it. that name, you know what I'm saying? Because no, no, no. there's some, is, because there's some gangsters out people, here. There's some gay gangsters. That like being Huh? I'm saying like like if a like if a woman pegs a man, is he a bitch? No. It peg me put something in their butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna keep it all the way one thousand. To me, he is, but I'll never call him that, and I would never do that to a man. Yes. So, see, I, I, I about to say, as you sound like you with it, with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there ain't shit I haven't done to be fair, but I don't consider him a bitch. Everybody likes to have their own separate tastes, you know. But do you consider him your bitch? Oh fuck no! I don't consider anybody my bitch. Toy, yes, Got bitch, you. no. Got you, Roger. The fuck that, Miss nah. uh, Queen Candy. When's the last time you got your ass whooped? How old was you? Oh, I was actually gonna piggyback on what Kiki says. So yes, I do agree with you, sis. That was the last time I got whooped. I was around 15, 16, ate my mama cookie. No, I ain't had no business doing it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we was watching TV. I remember me and my sister was in the room. Hold on, was TV. it an edible or just a regular cookie? Oh, it was a regular cookie. It was a chocolate chip All right. cookie. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you want to know what? You couldn't touch Crunch and Munch in our house. My mom's Man. Crunch and Munch. Mm. Yeah, my mom ain't play about that. Like, I'm, I, I don't care. I'm still scared of my mama to this day. Like, I respect her. You know, I ain't gonna. I I don't exchange words with her. That's as far as I know went. But I ain't never put my hands on my mom. But I had one of my kids throw hands with me, and my husband had to check him. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, because mm. the little man was walking out the house with an attitude because he couldn't eat what he wanted to eat. Uh, said some words. I came behind. He turned around. I popped him. This little nigga picked me up and body slammed me on my back so hard. I thought I was gonna go to the hospital. And I hear my husband come out knowing like what the what the hell wrong with you? And I, yeah, I I'm get on your up. ass, cuz I get up and I look down. I guess it's the reason why my husband nickname was Superman before I met him, because he had came in there so fast. I got up and looked, I'm like, how you get in there so fast? He had my son in the chokehold. The boy couldn't breathe. He wasn't trying to kill him, but he was trying to straighten him out. So let him know. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, now you're not gonna put your hands on your mom in front of me. Like hell no. no. Big ups to your big ups to your husband for (laughs) acting that fast for real. He was in the bathroom. I don't know. He came out there fast and I jumped up and I'm like, and that's why I believe that men are needed in the home. Mm -hmm. Period. Especially when it comes to a woman raising a man. Because let me tell you, my nephew is six five. Six five. Okay. And he's, he, you know, he kind of stocky. So he stood over me one time. I guess he, I guess he got to that stage where he can, he's no longer the little guy. So he's standing over, you know what I'm saying? So he tried me, you know what I'm saying? He like, I, t- I had to speak to him five times as it is. I don't like repeating myself. Mm-hmm. 
So that fifth time, I'm like, hey, you know, I, I cuss when I get, if you can't understand me speaking nicely to you, I will cuss. I'm like, hey, sit the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? So then he kind of like go like this and then start cracking his knuckles. Now me, I took that as uh, let's get it. Yeah, rumble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But luckily, you know, my brother was there before I could say Amber saw and handle right. that. But I'm just like, nah, you don't, yeah, you know, he my, never did it again. Well, my boys know even if your chest swell up just as an uh, ounce too big uh, mm. against your mom, we got a problem. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. You pretend right. like your chest swell up. You better right. let the air out that motherfucker before I get there. Quick. Yeah, but that was the last time. Quick. Uh we was watching TV and she cut the extension cord. She's like, Who ate my cookie? I'm like, Damn. Mm. Oh, I'm about well, to get my cookie. I'm like, Mom, what cookie? Damn. Like, what oh, right. See, that was one of them times where I'd have shut the fuck up and we no. all sharing the ass whooping. Fuck it. Ooh, no. Man, I ain't snitching on myself. I, I couldn't because my sister ain't had nothing to do with it. So I had to take that L. I, I I we still that. sharing the ass whooping that day. <laughs> We still was gonna share that motherfucker that day. I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing, I and I don't know nothing. We going down I didn't together. Know where she was when I ate the cookie. She wasn't nowhere around, but she ain't had nothing to do with it. So I, I had to take that. One. I can't remember what I did. Things. I can't remember what I did, but I know the last time I got my ass whooped, I was about fourteen. My mom swung the belt, and I grabbed that motherfucker. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, what? Oh, I was I a belt grabber. I regretted that shit. She went crazy after that. Nigga, you, you, how dare you? She went crazy. But after that, I guess she figured, like, all right, he gonna keep doing this shit at that point. Ain't no point whooping his ass. Like, it is what it is. I'm gonna just let you, when you do dumb shit, I'm gonna just let you pay for it. I'm gonna help you out. Take something from me now. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, that was the worst. Sometimes I wish I would have got an ass whooping and then been put on punishment. I'm like, I'm not about to sit in this house in the summertime. And what watch everybody play. How old was you? You got your last ass whooping. Uh, eleven, cause I stopped getting caught. Oh shit! <laughs> Smart guy. <laughs> that and I said uh, I I knew how to put the evidence on other people, so they got fucked up. Wow. Okay. Uh, damn, you grimy. <laughs> hey, if you had the idea first, you would have got me, but I got you, so you got to get the getters before they get you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's true. Like my girl. Okay, so my grandfather was blind, but for some reason he was like a Shaolin ninja because he was blind, but he could play spade. I mean, he could play solitaire, whoop ass, and still cook breakfast. But he was blind. So one day I did something. I just seen him slowly get up and bring his belt out. It's about me and three other cousins and uh, our one of our friends. So he get up. He about to get starting to whoop ass. I pushed dude in front of me. Sorry, what the fuck got to go? He got his ass, and he wasn't even family. Like it was my brother's friend. He got his wow. ass whooped. <laughs> so as you know, I'm going out the front door. I look back, and I just see this motherfucker getting whaled, boy. I'm talking about slave whipping. Like he I beat that motherfucker like he ain't picked cotton right. Your house again after that shit. Hey, friends no more. Fuck you, cuz. Hey, that's dope though. It's either you or me, and somebody got to go. Wow. I mean, hey, we fight right on the streets after that, man. <laughs> 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 hey, you ever get? Hey, you ever get a whooping and just get mad as hell and just go outside and be a badass kid to everybody else? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. See, I ain't get that privilege. If I got, I used to fight. Ass, if I got my ass whooped, I know I was in my room for the next week. That was guaranteed clock. Mm -hmm. right. That was and that was back oh, when you ain't had shit in your room, so you was bored as a motherfucker just sitting in there staring at the walls. Yeah, you must have did. You must have did something bad, bad. No, I'm no, I, I, I had a mom, parent like that too. My mom felt uh, like if I gotta whoop your ass, then you sitting in your room for a minute afterwards. Right. I yeah, got a whooping and got sent to the streets and was out whooping people ass. <laughs> no, my mom ain't play that shit. You gonna sit there and stare at them four walls? Yeah. And, and think ain't, about I ain't have a TV. She taking Ooh. the toys out the room. I'm just in that bitch. Yeah. My imagination was the shit after that. I tell you that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get whooped by the syllable. I used to, don't you ever in yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I got one more smart track. Hey, hey, first of all, I'm not grimy. I was smart. See, now somebody, and it's inevitable. Somebody gonna get their ass whooped. We was all fucking around. Somebody he didn't know who it was. It wasn't my ass whooping to take, first of all. Second of all, you, in front of it, hey, he should have been faster. 
<laughs> How old is everybody? See, I'm 41. I'm 40. Huh? Okay, so like back in the day, like if you didn't have a cord or a belt, like my brother had these race car tracks. Mm-hmm. And we got a wet whooping, they were orange. <laughs> and okay, hot wheels. And they yeah. left two oh, yeah. wheels on you. Uh-huh. So hey, hey, y'all, look, what was your what was your parents' go to weapon of choice when whooping your ass? Hey, I, the I, shoe, I, the sketchers, the thick ass sketchers. Well, let me tell you this right. My grandma, I, I raised by my grandmother. I raised by my grandmother. And what my grandma would do was she was old school with the ass whooping. So she'd be like, she'd be from slavery times. So she'll see me out there, you know, she'll see me to get my own switch, right? Yeah. She'll see me to get my own switch. But then what I do is I go to I break out the damn switches on the trees, right? So she like she like I come back like a little switch like this damn bitch. I'm just all I can find. She had braided. Yeah, bitch. nigga, I did that. No, braided so look, bitches look, together. He took her ass outside. I swear to God, she brought back a damn a damn damn whip. <laughs> this goddamn long. Duh. She had like three of them. No lie, she said that and she braided right? the motherfuckers up. Oh yeah, to braid the motherfuckers together. That's yeah, that's yeah, southern. Yeah, My yeah, grandfather yeah, did that yeah. shit. Yeah. You know how psychological fucked up that is that you got to go, not only you know you about to get your ass whipped, but now you got to go grab the weapon that you're going to get your yeah. ass whipped with. Oh, shit. Look and at the this. whole time you crying, <laughs> that's a different kind of ass whooping. Hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that psychologically fucks you up, man. See, no, see, My favorite. And you can't, hey, you can't be pulling that out with all these black folks around when you get flat. <laughs> <laughs> too, my guy. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm in my oh, head. Like, you know, I didn't even think Ooh, about that. Come to Kitty. Hey, look. As soon as she would have popped up, the Now you got to figure out a safe word. Oh, to this day, <laughs> I don't have no metal spoons in my kitchen. Oh, shit. My mom used to get the metal spoon that got the, the wooden ladle. No, no, no. A metal spoon. And it, you know how you got the ones with the holes in it? The slots, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the man. So yo, every time she hits you, your skin kind of suck up in the motherfucking hole. Yeah, that motherfucker snatch back wasn't no joke. Yo, no I know y'all remember joke. paddling in school, right? Yeah, nah, I had I over and no, I brother. Know. I had a music teacher, big black dude. He had a fucking paddle. This bitch is like a motherfucking um. The, uh, the Magna Carta fucking oar, and it had holes in it. So when he what? motherfucker swing that motherfucker, it was aerodynamic. This nigga was like a fucking engineer before engineers was engineers. This nigga. <laughs> uh, when I was in school, we had one hey. teacher. We had one teacher that walked around, and she had that shit in her belt every fucking day. Oh yeah, she had everybody in school nervous and shit. Ain't nobody want to take her class ever. Nah, this nigga. It kind of brought the freak out of me, I think. Like, <laughs> I wasn't coming on here. I wasn't coming on here until I seen the white girl with a whip. All I, all I heard was kuta. Girl. <laughs> white, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Kiki was getting in trouble on purpose. Ooh, <laughs> see, Mr. Brown's class. Hey, hey. Hey, she knocking over pencils and shit on purpose. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> Bending over on the desk. <laughs> Ooh. I've been bad. <laughs> Ooh. Been bad. Almost, oh. <laughs> Spank me. <laughs> over. <laughs> I think it's Michael <laughs> You can't. But no. <laughs> like, oh, you supposed to be taking a nap. Who, hey, me? Hey, Andy. Now, here, how old was you when you got your last ass whooping? Yesterday. Uh, oh, I was shoot. like 14, 15. My bad. Uncle Buck, what you say? Nah, I'm losing my voice. Son. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even went to sleep. I've been Damn. watching TV. I'm losing my voice. Oh, shit. Yeah. But I was 14 or 15. So that's probably like the average age. For, yeah. for women's ass whooping. <laughs> Yeah. The police try to beat our ass every day. But uh DC didn't tell my coming up. I don't know. My mom used to throw crutches at oh, me. My bad. Crutches. She used to throw her crutches at me like torpedoes, bro. My mom in the Damn. wheelchair. Line darts. She used to oh, throw yeah, crutches yeah. at me like a fucking torpedo. Damn. Hey, wow. the, the crazy wow. shit, the craziest shit I think my mom ever done with her being in a wheelchair is she trapped me in a corner. 
Yo. With the wheelchair, you know what I mean? So Yo. I, I have no way to run and nothing. I jumped over her ass. Bitch, you not about to get me in this corner. <laughs> here. I, I hey, got yo. going real quick. Yo, I'm going to say about the people in the wheelchair, though. They'll sneak up on your ass. You won't even see it, man. Yo, They'll... and they move fast as fuck, They move bro. fast as hell with them damn wheelchairs. Bro. Yo, when they mad, that wheelchair move at extra, extra, extra fast speed or something. Motherfuckers move like Sonic when they mad. <laughs> like, how Yo. the fuck you get here? You yeah, right, my man. mom used to be on some wicked shit, bro. Yeah, I had them. Yeah, my, grandma, my grandma was in a wheelchair, man. I remember one day I was sneaking some food out the refrigerator. Late night. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, know, you don't do that at no grandparents' house. Yes. They, they shit is closed. Their kitchen shut shut down. Hey, that shit shut down what? at what? nine o'clock. No, you lucky if that shit was open at nine. That shit. I'm about to say it was like about seven o'clock. Right. About, about, about Once that last swipe of the slow hey, get clean and that motherfucking overlight go with, on, I yeah. I don't play with people in wheelchairs now. When which uh, CL was asking about your parents and what uh, fight your parents. Let me tell you something. My mother rolled up on me as an adult in that mm. motherfucking wheelchair. I had the front of that wheelchair wheels in the air. Man, I will drop you. Please don't do that. Mm. Like, bro. Like, and you call me, Grammy. I, I think I was so traumatized <laughs> about it. I, listen, I had PTSD of wheelchairs rolling up on me. I, I did too. And yeah, that nigga, it was either his ass or my ass. Yeah, hey, I know this one's still fucked up, but was she like a turtle flipped over on that shelf? Damn. Yo, she wasn't on the floor. Oh, she wasn't fuck. on the floor, but I had the front of that bitch flipped up. She like, I'm gonna call the police on you. I said, What well, shit, you attack me first? What you want me to do? Call them. She like, but I'm on a wheelchair. They you, you they, they gonna see that I'm man. You attacked me out self defense, nigga. Call them. Yeah, yeah. And wheels are faster than feet. Don't get fucked with Exactly. You protect me. <laughs> the fuck. Nah. Mm-hmm. And I was called grimy though, and she got her mom looking nigga, like a Ninja Turtles break ask dancing. Ask look for no reason. She no, first, first, first again, first of all, this it wasn't my ass, ass whooping to take. Yes, the two wheels in the front of the wheelchair was in the air. She but first of all, it wasn't my ass whooping to take. I didn't do nothing. I happened to be watching TV, uh, chilling. Yeah, that's what. But they the all fact said. that the nigga that don't even live in the house got his ass whipped for that's you. again, you, you gotta be quicker than that. My, my question is, he got he got his ass whooped by the blind man. God damn. Hey, yeah. Blind, bro. Like, bro. Yeah. My yeah. grandfather was blind, man. I guess y'all don't watch anime because the blind motherfuckers. The blind motherfuckers, the ones you gotta watch out the first. Them niggas is masters. Hey, what's what's crazy is though the shit happened in slow motion. Like his belt came off and swung in the air a little bit, and he just started walking like towards people, time. and that motherfucker was just swinging. He's so swinging some samurai time. shit, huh? No, like some samurai shit. Like, you know how a samurai take that sword out and they hit the air first and then he starts swinging? That's what happened in slow motion. So I look up, I see that motherfucker go in the air and he start walking towards people. At that point, I had to make a decision executively. I said, it's his ass or my ass. There's four other people in here. I wasn't the only one pushing people. I was just the strongest one in there so that I was able to... That was at this very moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like he was uh that motherfucker he wasn't he wasn't bad that bad, but that motherfucker definitely was uh skilled with that belt. So oh the was, nigga on the boondocks was so oh. he wasn't stink meaner then. Nah, he, he was <laughs> Nah, but yeah, like I said, it, it was either him or me. And in my mind was he was he was he he had to get initiated. <laughs> Part of the eat part of the family. You eat the hey you know hey you eat this food. You watch this TV. Yeah. You gotta take an ass whooping for somebody. Yeah, I ain't never coming to your house. We ain't even friends no more. We, I'm never fucking. Yeah, hey, what's crazy is the same dude I power bombed in at a uh, block of ice. Bro, what? <laughs> so I was like, you know, it was snowing one day and it was like raining. And so the fucking snow was like hard as fuck. So it was like, damn, they're icing over a glade. So we was like playing wrestling in the backyard. So again, bigger, stronger, faster. So this motherfucker came. I kicked him in. He ran at me. He charged me, bro. He can charge me. In my mind, I hadn't seen too much wrestling. That was back at the height of the attitude era. So I was watching wrestling all day long. So he charged me. I kicked this motherfucker in the stomach. Boom. He doubled over in my head. I seen Kevin Nash. <laughs> I was like Big Diesel. So I'm about to just powerbomb this nigga. 
I power bond this nigga. That shit look like Goku when you knock a nigga down to earth and he make that fucking splat. And all you see is like his body in a fucking crater. I, I wow. cratered that nigga. Don't ever charge me, bro. <laughs> Yo, I remember back in 95, we got a blizzard, right? I think it was 95. We got this big ass blizzard. I think it was like six or seven feet of snow. So the streets was like kind of paved off, but motherfuckers still wanted to walk around. So everybody on my block, like we used to have like block wars type shit. Like everybody, you can't walk down nobody else's block without either getting cussed out or fucked up. Like that's right. just what it was. What it was. Mind right. you, we all was cool with each other. Even to this day, we all still cool with each other. But one motherfucker, he came down the block, and it was a bunch of us like standing up on the roofs and shit of the houses. So he got tackled. He got speared by one motherfucker. So as soon as he hit the ground, everybody just came off their roof, fucking. Elbow slams, leg drops, all types of shit. Oh my! He walked down our block for like three years after that shit. He was jumping off roof. That nigga was taking Max. the long way. Everywhere. Yeah, I remember it's like seven. It's like six, seven, eight feet of snow. So the the snow was up high as shit. So, so y'all macho man that nigga. So y'all, man, oh y'all, yeah. Y'all he put walked down our block for like two years after that. Because that nigga had down PST. Down that yeah. motherfucker was scarred. Was that nigga so didn't even weird. watch wrestling after that. That nigga that was like, nigga fuck wrestling. That nigga took the long way everywhere he went after that. After that, <laughs> after like a motherfucker. Hey, for he some reason, I was thinking like Michael Miles for Halloween you said that shit. <laughs> Say again? Uh, for some reason, I was thinking about Michael Miles when he got beat up by the whole town. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so they did Mike Dirty, man. Even though that movie sucked balls. I ain't even seen it. They did Mike Dirty at the end of that joint. Oh, that was the <laughs> stupidest shit. <laughs> I ain't seen it. I heard a lot of bad no, reviews. Don't even waste your time. That was that, that was the weakest one out of all of them. But the last one? Yeah, that shit was super weak. Uh, yeah, I didn't watch it either. Yeah. My son, he was like, oh, he wanted to go on a date with his chick, so he wanted me to go with him because they couldn't get in. And in my mind, I'm like, fuck, like, why do I got to go see this shit? Like, out of all that you picked, you had to pick this shit. And we sitting in there, I'm looking at him and his chick face. They both looking at the movie like, what the fuck? Like, we really picked this bullshit to come watch? <laughs> and you know movies is $20 a person. Facts. Facts. And I made them pay for my ticket. Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck. I wasn't about to pay for that bullshit. You want me to go? You pay for my ticket, guys. Fuck that. Yep. Kiki, where you get the learning tree from? Huh? Yo, that shit definitely look like <laughs> that tree of wisdom behind you. <laughs> <laughs> like a oil paint behind you. What the fuck? <laughs> the tree of life. Like this motherfucker in Eden. Simba. <laughs> Yo, man. No, but it was only fair, man. Like I'm not. I wasn't grimy. Nothing fair no, that about was grimy, it. Nothing fair about it. You it was fair. You be fucking thinking if it was somebody that lived in the house, but nigga, I don't live here. Like. You eat this food, you watch this TV, you suck up this air conditioner. You gotta take this ass whooping one time, bro. Nah, that's fucked up, bro. It wasn't fucked up, man. I ain't hey, y'all can say what y'all want, but again, it was him or me. Uh, like I, I had to make a decision. Um, Somebody, somebody in my family would have had told, to get your ass told, after that. I'd have figured that shit talk. out. <laughs> hey, we figured it out. He got his ass whooped. I got out the house. Hey, Problem Lord. solved. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, how am I wrong? You wouldn't have did it? You would have took no. the ass whooping for no reason? I don't live in your house. I ain't supposed to get my ass whooped at your house. Man. Hey. Uh, it takes a, it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> it takes a village to raise a child. Oh he was supposed God. to kick me out before he whooped y'all ass. Hey I man, to see that shit. Right. But Yo, but again, my grandfather didn't know. Hey, when you blind and you whooping ass, an ass is an ass. You ain't asking. Hey, who? Who? Wait a minute. Whose ass is this? No, the fact that he was blind, he had to be stink manner because you can't be whooping motherfuckers' ass. You can't even see him. Yeah, yeah, he was he whooping got, their ass. Like, like your belt got sonic range on it. Like his shit was serious. That motherfucker swang hey. first and asked questions later. Y'all ever had people at the house and y'all did some shit or somebody got in trouble and your parent be like, if you don't motherfucking live here, go to fuck home now. 
Yeah, yep. plenty of times. Because yep. hey, you know what? I almost walked out the ward door one time. I was like, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> get up out of here. All right, John. Hey, hey, you walk out like, all right, John, it's been real. Nigga, you live here. Sit the fuck down. Well, you guys, it's been real, but I'm going to go ahead and head on down the street now. <laughs> I don't know how much. Why you go get, you done, go, you done went get sexy on this. Who, me? Yeah, you. I only touched up my eyeliner, actually. I was cleaning up while I was listening. Oh, okay. It was something about that whip that brought it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that whip brought it out. Uh, I mean, I mean, I can tell something clear, but I ain't going out Kiki for had flashbacks of Mr. Brown's office. He got the leather pants on. We just can't see him. Maybe, maybe I still oh, be sitting by a tree. And I'm sitting by a tree. <laughs> she about to braid her on wigs. Just know if I show up a few hours later looking disheveled, then I had a great time. That's all. Oh, oh shit. Would you say, hey, Annie, she got on assless chaps? Assless chaps. <laughs> and they leather. Hey, I do not wear assless chaps. First of all, that whip is used on me. These aren't there, okay? Oh, he had the assless chaps on. Boom. Oh, this oh. town ain't big enough for the both of us, partner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could have sex with a man in that chap, honestly. All right, oh, it's too okay. cold out here. I'm good. Yeah, if you listen, hey. when I see you pull that, yeah, I'm just saying I, I might pop out in a little bit and I'll come back later. I'll just be looking a little say, disheveled. That's all. I was gonna say her smoke got smoke coming from it, right? But yeah, no, that's that's her, that cold stuff. That hoodie up. Yeah. Yeah. It just looked cold out there, and I was out there earlier. Yeah, no. It had the sun out earlier. I just ain't. Like, I slept Where? all through that. Everybody has. <laughs> whooping ass, whooping ass. God damn. Man, hey, I got y'all, you don't judge me. Judge yourselves. We I'm definitely just definitely got PTSD from ass whooping. Straight up. What? Hey. The ass whoopers made us all who we are today. Yeah. See, what and and, and, a, and a dude who got his ass whoop is an upstanding citizen. Yeah, I bet he so is. I feel like I helped him. You get your ass whooped. <laughs> I feel like I did him a service. He was reformed after that ass whooping. Oh you got your God. ass whooped at somebody Ooh. else's house. You ain't got no choice but to be different now. You got your yeah. ass whooped at somebody else's house by a blind man. Right, yeah. Blind man, right. Yeah. Blind man. Almost you almost remember his parents about it. You're embarrassed. Right. I bet you if y'all. Oh, he told his parents, and, he, and his parents came over, and I was like, "Hey, hey, you it is what it is. It's, it's wrong with." Best whooping you ever got in your life, man. I got whooped by my homie Ooh. blind granddad. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Did y'all say this? He got a story to tell for the rest of his life. He do. Yeah. Did y'all hear about that joke? That 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 pirate joke. What do you call a pirate that pee on people? Oh god! Oh shit! Nope. Never mind. Nope. We ain't doing that. Nope. We ain't doing. I know it. Nope. We ain't doing it. I know what it is. Say it, Kiki. Nope. Nope. No, nope. No. No. Wow. <laughs> that was good. I tried to tell. I tried to warn y'all. Joke. I'm gonna take that one. It's a bad joke. Dad. Dad joke. No, a dad, dad joke. joke. A dad joke. What's the Damn. difference between a dad joke and a regular joke? I still a dad joke. It out. Dad, dad jokes joke are corny bad. as fuck. Yeah. Oh yeah, but they be funny. But they always make you laugh. So how can it be that corny? Nigga, but the corny is <laughs> you laughing at the fact it's corny. Though. Yeah, right. corniest jokes be the funniest. Like they do, for... and they're usually one-liners. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just I'm gonna be a comedian saying shit like that the whole time. It's a couple of <laughs> you're not Corey gonna get very Holcomb far. Corey Holcomb used to do that. <laughs> Especially in the beginning. Well, Corey Holcomb is the best. Yeah, that was Corey my dude Holcomb right there. Corey Holcomb is a clown. The drunker he get, the dumber oh, he get. You got Craig to do that. A new comic? Yo, no. When he, when he used to pull that sheet of paper out, you knew that shit was about to get real. Every Yo, fucking time. Did y'all hear the one where he was talking about the girl? Like He, he just be saying crazy stuff that a the normal person wouldn't say. Oh, yeah. I guess they talk about the lady who had an abortion. And he had to act like he cared, and I had the baby fell out the toilet. Uh -huh. Oh my god! <laughs> he said, I, "He said I had to act like I care." And did he hit the? Uh, he act like he hit the uh, flush to flush, right. and he started turning around in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, that crazy. Oh. Or he came out the one time. He was like, "Hey y'all," um, he was like, "Big ups to all the men who." I had to make sure there was nobody around. 
<laughs> who fucked the, he's like who fucked the fat bitch with a t shirt on? <laughs> you make that, that would be me. Take that t shirt off. That, that would be me. He is like he just say stuff that the normal person wouldn't Earth say. That that would be laugh me. at his jokes because you're like, oh, he off the chain. Like he's he's funny though. Eric said I done hit a few big bitches with t shirts. With t shirts on. Hey. Who didn't? Who didn't? With t shirts on. My hey. bad. My bad. I don't want Boom to see this shit and think I'm talking about oh, him. Oh, Lord. Me. I'm not keeping my fucking t-shirt on you. Even before I lost all this weight. No, nah, I don't give a fuck. I like, I like the titty dance. You taking that motherfucker off. Take don't, worry, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, you uh, got, you got, you got, you got fucking clothes on. You knew what you signed up for. I don't give a Big fuck. Big facts, though. I, I enjoy the titty dance. That's one of the reasons you can't have eight cups. Because one of us got to be dancing, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I offended a nigga one day. It wasn't that I didn't want to take my shirt off. I just didn't feel like it. I'm like, nigga, the ass but, out. But like, you ain't gonna like, want to take it off. I'll take that motherfucker. But you have, but like I said, you have one of the greatest sites for a man. One of the greatest sites for a man. One of the greatest sites for a man is watching them titties drop when that bra come off. What the fuck are you talking about? Let the beat drop. Hey, this bedroom sound like a motherfucking rave. Niggas, that nigga in there fist pumping. Fist pumping like a champ. I'm done with him. Oh shit! Hey, this is cool, man. Yo, I pay the raw that motherfucker like, yeah, take it off. Hey, when he first did it, then y'all picture tit, then y'all picture titties dropping. <laughs> nah, the only thing I pictured was you know in the cartoons when they drop the bomb and the fucking shit drop in the big ass. <laughs> the whole smoke shit fly up in the air. Mushroom cloud. <laughs> nah, if your titties dropping, yeah, it's a mushroom cloud. Like you gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> if your titties dropping, it's a mushroom cloud behind that motherfucker. You gotta no, get the fuck no, out. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's a right. cloud behind it. I That's what I just like, though. Like, uh-uh. No, no. That, see, 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 bro. No, you talking about, you talking about, you talking about them ugly chicks and you put them out in between them titties. What are you talking about? Throw that bitch out. Kick her Wait, out. Wait, what, Eric? I said, he talking about them chicks be putting powder between them titties. That's what he talking about. <laughs> nah, oh, I yeah, ain't. baby powder. If you, guys, baby, if you, I got to go got for a little bit. I'll be skin. back later. Oh, oh, take the whip. I'll be oh, back shit. later. Hey, hey, Eric, that shit look like LeBron when he getting ready to do his... <laughs> 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 like LeBron when he get ready to <laughs> titties drop like, <laughs> no, I like I like sucking titties too much. You can't put no powder on them motherfuckers for me. Oh that's my so god! Old, you just fucked the whole mood up. Though now, like that's yeah, crazy. I think powder cut uh, it, it gives you uh, what um, yeast infections and shit. No, um, room. it's cancerous. Yeah, the but most, that powder shit is no more women. They give a damn. You can they use got, gold, you can use gold bond though. But they oh. have a actually they have like a a deodorant for breasts, so you can put it on there to stop the chase. Yeah, they got titty like deodorant that. now. Lumi, so you could put just put that deodorant. On there. Uh, uh, he Ooh. know it. He know about his titties. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm a titty yeah. man to the to the. Hey, but not nah, like for real, real shit. Like if you got big ass titties in the summertime, you better figure that shit out because not swamp titty. That shit is chasing, bitch. <laughs> That shit is chafing. If you ain't, if you ain't titty you know, sprinkles, yeah, mm, mm. Mm. I do I'm love me like some that. titty sprinkles. I fucking hate it. <laughs> in the morning Yo. when I have my pancakes. I've never seen y'all motherfuckers so much I done lost my voice. And that what happened when you put them damn powder on them titty sprinkles. Titty sprinkles. <laughs> I'm blaming Yo. my voice. I heard I heard y'all I heard y'all made big smash just like uh say F oh, everything. Man, listen, I'm blaming this right now on Big Smash because I was going to fuck off during Definitely that time with Big Smash. Cause he was really pissing me off. Cause I'm like, bro, you you're giving little dick energy. What are you talking about? Like you can't do like 
Uh, fuck it. I'm not going there again. But anyway, <sighs> the nigga just was really on some other shit. Like, he kept saying, I'm not, we not talking about you. We talking about niggas in general. He took it to heart. He took it to heart. Like, I ain't got no side bitch. Nigga. No. <sighs> Yeah, I, I was on the road during that one. Yeah, let it go, man. That was raw shit. Raw, raw started that. Yeah, man, he, be, he, be, oh, he be lighting raw. the match and then just sit back and let a nigga get roasted. Yo, Flag, didn't, didn't he, though? He lit that bitch. was like, all right, yeah, watch this shit happen. Watch this, guys. As and long as it wasn't me, is, I just it's all good. The crazy thing, DC, is I started talking, then the nigga smash started talking. I muted myself like, nah, fuck this shit. I ain't even about to argue with this nigga. But the more he kept talking, I had to come back and go, hey, man, now nah, fuck this shit. I got to say something now. Listen, I kept I kept trying reeling back and save him, and he just wouldn't let me. He wouldn't listen. He wasn't trying to hear it. Mm-mm. He wasn't no. trying to hear it. He, cool. kept, he just kept that shovel digging. After a while, I'm like, all right, listen, bro. You yeah. made your bed, you got laid it at this point. Then he had you, Just Be, and CL going at that point. He, he was dead. He was dead meat with that one. So, oh, Eric, uh, yeah. February 10th, I'm having a homies episode. So you gotcha. got it. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yo, we hey, hey. talking about um, yo, great also, love yo, songs. Y'all having the battle of the sexes, too. Uh, get, oh, when you oh you already know. I already told you I'm coming to that. Yo, the hey yo. So we I had a I had a um I had these two different podcast episodes where I, had, I interviewed just straight guys, and then what happened was I asked all, women of all ages to uh, submit one question that you want men to answer, like 100 percent honest. And then uh, so the so the guys questions the, the question that the women were was asking was wild as shit. Like, oh, like, you want to know something, Eric? What's Remember up? I told you I gave them questions to somebody already? In yeah. the raw, I gave them to. Oh, you in the raw? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I y'all did. both asked my questions on y'all panel. Yeah, no. I did. Ladies night. Ladies night was the fellas at the ladies asking questions from the fellas. He did the same thing. And I did the exact not, same thing. The exact cross same thing. Band, it was thing. the ladies asking questions to the fellas. Yep. Now, let me say this. The women was wild as shit. <laughs> oh, Yo. I, I could barely talk on my own motherfucking show when these month when I asked the question. They yo, was CL, yo, CL told me to shut the hell up on my own show. Oh, wow. well, she tell everybody shut the hell up on their own show, nigga. Yeah. That, that's what she do. <laughs> that's what she do. She tell everybody shut the hell up. She came on my shit uh Friday. She and she loved to just pop in. I was like this. Don't fucking say nothing. Don't talk to my guests. Don't do nothing. Just sit there. Damn. But it was a good show. We, but yeah, the battle of the sex is gonna be good. I know. Oh yeah, it. we gonna be lit. The battle of the sex is gonna be off the chain. I can't wait for that. I wait for Raw to do his battle of the sexes too. Yo, I mean, hey. technically, I did it already. Ladies' night and the green and the cross eyed bandit. No, but we gotta be all in one thing. Yo, all. In. Yo, put oh, me okay, on for that. we can definitely do that. Put me on for that. Fa- See, the only thing, the only thing show. with that is, it's only certain to y'all that I can have come That's back. That's what to I that. said. Pick, pick your favorites or the ones you know gonna bring it. And then go to See, it. See, that's the thing. Some of y'all that bring it don't know yeah. how to let everybody else talk. That's the problem. You gotta have a mute <laughs> thing. You gotta be able to mute niggas. All right, what well then doing? fuck it. Don't invite me. <laughs> I'm gonna invite I'm gonna mute the hell out your ass. You be like this the whole yeah. time. <laughs> oh no! Every, everybody that everybody that come on my show, no, I have no problem muting a motherfucker. Yeah, I, I I'll mute a fuck. motherfucker in a heartbeat too. I'll shit. mute the shit out your ass. I had a homie every time he came on my show, I muted him like four times within thirty minutes. But Yo, for some reason, he still kept saying, "Let me come on the show, you nigga. You know I'm gonna mute the shit out you." And that, but that last time he did all right. He just was flexing. He was capping like a motherfucker, but he did all right. He was high capping heavy. Yo, but yo, this I got an episode coming up, um, probably next week. It's the uh, the true stories episode. I'm gonna tell like true stories that happened in my life, but I'm also reading like stories from other people who they oh. they, they, they submitted anonymously. So I get to I get to tell like stuff that happened to other people, their their confessions or whatever. Oh, these are my confessions. Just so like if any of one of y'all wanna be on, she she carrying a bra. That's what I saw. Nah, she ain't carrying the bra. I didn't know what was going on, bro. I just didn't want to say nothing. Strong. Oh, oh, like yo, I thought you were carrying a bra. I like that. (laughs) Big big titty. (laughs) No, but yo, I'm doing a confession that like the episode, like everybody, this is true story episodes. I got a lot of crazy experiences and stuff that happened to me. 
so I know I know other people got crazy stories. So I mean, if y'all want to come on, y'all welcome to come on. Hey, by his beard and his soul patch, you know he had a lot of crazy stories. <laughs> oh, I'm light skinned, man. Don't, don't, don't let that shit fool you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get used to this beard. That's why I keep touching my face, man. I'm not used to this shit. All this hair on my face is fucking. Getting used to it. Leave it. Leave it. I encourage. No, I had a beard I, since I, I was savagely humble, and I endorse all beards. I had a beard since I was a full beard since I was 13. When you I went in the what? Navy, when I went in the Navy, and I had to cut all this shit off, man, I felt nasty for four years straight. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know what though? Like, so you, I, so you ain't even have to eat no coochie to get it. He was great. I mean, he was, but now you for two minutes. I think it's weird when men cut the beards and cut them off. Like my brother, he grow a full beard like that too. His shit be long. And one day, uh, we lived in the same house, and he cut his shit off. And I came out of my room. I was like, "Oh shit, nigga, what the fuck?" I was like, "Hey, bro, you look like a pedophile. Come on, bring your kid back." I don't even like that shit. You look like you about to go touch children. He was so mad at me for so long. She said a pedophile. <laughs> he did. He looked like a creeper. I'm like, bro, nah, grow your Yo, beard. Every, once a year, once a year, I cut my shit all the way down. And every year, at least one person be like, "Yo, you look like a fucking perv." Like, yep. damn, I'm just because I cut you, my shit there, and it ain't like I'm bald face completely. I just cut it all the way down. Nah, like, this what? nigga be bald face, and that's why I really make him look like a pervy. I'm like, nah, bro. See, and I got, I got, got a ball, and he got a bald head, so it makes it worse. I'm like, bro, nah. Bro, bro, I, 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 I oh, that motherfucker like a penis. I gotta keep my stream. <laughs> yeah, man. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, man, I, I go from 30 I go from 33 to 47 in the damn middle. I got to get my shit, gotta get my shit together. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got to keep my shit cuz I look 16 without this shit like. Yeah. You know, be getting approached by the wrong motherfucker. Like, <laughs> That's you know, how my kid's father is. He shave all his shit off. You be like, "Yo, is he 12? What the fuck?" Well, I, I shave like my shit off. I look Mexican. <laughs> Boom, all that shit. like a dirty Arab. Facts. I look like I'm about to come mow your lawn. Fuck all that shit. Oh, man. I think it's supposed to be my hour real quick. I mean, I ain't yep. got much, but uh, I got a quick game that I play on my show every once in a while when I have a guest. So I was going to see if y'all was interested in, in rock and roll. Hell yeah. <laughs> what they do? All right. So I, I do this thing. I call it Guess the Ethnicity. Oh, where basically, I look for like uh, crazy crimes and shit like that. Oh, this and is then, some uh, racist shit. Oh, y'all yeah. about to do the the game now? Go ahead. You, you, you got work to do. I know, right? <laughs> you were carrying big bra or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got to set up for breakfast. I just wanted to do it real quick so I ain't got to do shit until like uh, for three to five o'clock in the morning. Girl, you uh, sound like how it was. I was when I used to work at the hotel. Okay, get it all done. Get it out the way. Right, so I don't know how this shit gonna hit, but we're gonna uh, we'll try it anyways. Basically, I'll, I'll give you the, the headline of the crime. You know, we get the guesses on what you think it is. You only gotta do white, non white. I'm not, you don't gotta get too deep in the ethnicities. You only tell me he's Ethiopian and no shit like that. You just my boy white. got the whole logo pop. Look at me, I'm the captain now. <laughs> I, did, I did some prep work for this shit. I was trying, I, I was trying, okay. trying to get my, my uh production game up. Word. <laughs> Me. <laughs> All right, so the first one I got here is a man wearing ankle monitor robbed a bank of seventy uh, seven black fifty four dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's black. a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get the whole headline. You gotta get. The oh whole yeah, right. Yeah, my bad. He robbed the bank, but he wrote the demand note on the back of his own birth certificate. Black. No. White. White. Why I why you say white, bro? Why 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 you say white? Because white people don't give a fuck, and when they hire shit, they do dumb ass shit because they ain't think about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else got a, an opinion on why they think the person is whatever? Black people ain't got this birth certificates. That, that's, that's a true fact. Yeah, to go get it from his mama. Oh, whoa, yeah. Tama, I got my birth certificate. Bro. But you don't carry it on you, though. It's in the house somewhere. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's in the house. Every black birth certificate's in the house somewhere. No, I have to get I, a new I, I, like every every three that, years when I gotta go get ideas for shit. So, so based off that logic, I'm gonna go with white man. You going white? All right, so I'm gonna go give away. you a little bit more. This happened in uh Missouri. Uh oh, took boy. place July 20th of last year. Dude basically went in the bank, approached the attorney. Hey, hey Flan, what city in Missouri? I ain't get that deep. Oh, oh cuz St. Louis I say black but anywhere else outside of St. Louis. <laughs> now, it's a lot of niggas in all parts of Missouri, but keep going. 
All right, he went in there, he went in there, gave the teller the note. The note said, Give me your money now. Don't say anything. I have a partner outside. It was written in pink highlighter and it was on the mm. back of his birthday. Okay. Yeah, it's a high ass white dude. He high as giraffe pussy when he wrote that shit. Mm-hmm. In a pink highlighter for sure. Oh, yeah. Pink highlighter. Uh, let's see. I think the worst part about it is that it wasn't the note that actually got him caught. Uh, authorities were tipped off by his roommate's boyfriend. He, yep. said he, he said he did it to prove a point to his girlfriend and told investigators that uh, he expected to receive prison time and was ready to take his responsibility. Yeah, that was Bobby. Oh, White. he was gay. White. White. Oh, yeah, this is uh, that was Paul, but black because yeah. it's a lot of black gay dudes. Oh, Michael oh, shit. <laughs> he was you. high as a giraffe. Was. You're right. I, told you. <laughs> I fucking told you. Uh, you was right. You was right. You look crazy. Why is why is why is neck look like that, man? <laughs> is it a tattoo? It's a it's a blurred tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I didn't know. Hold on. I didn't know uh, niggas could pop up shit on their screens. What the fuck? I'm going to uh, hold on, hold on. First of all, Flan is the only oh, nigga that OBS. has ever came okay. on here that's do IT. So you might want to just let that one go. No, I, he, I I just heard what he said. I know why he could he able to do it. Go ahead. My man got pubes on his neck. <laughs> they do look like that. They do look like that though. All right, all right, that's 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 round one. Let's do another one real quick. Go back to the level. What the fuck is all that? Right, uh, headline is bus driver arrested after woman claims she was locked inside luggage compartment. Damn! What? <laughs> so the real, fact that real crime, sir. Black people don't really want to kidnap people unless they absolutely have to, and they don't want to spend as much time with bitches that they don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna say that that's white. You going white? Anybody else? Anybody else got to guess? You got D. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say the same because, yeah. I think that's a non-white. Non-white. All right. You got some, Eric? I'm gonna go with. Yeah, non non white but not black. All right, I'll give you some more details. This was a a New York bus driver. A Q oh, he's definitely of black. He's definitely non black. <laughs> a Q was a locker All passenger white. in the vehicle's luggage compartment. Um, that's Puerto Rican. The lady pretty much had to call nine one one from inside the luggage compartment. Passengers on the bus say they could hear the banging and somebody screaming for help. Oh my god! <laughs> when they finally pulled the bus over. Uh, the, the lady wasn't even driving at the time. She had done her leg and was a pat- and was sitting with the passengers while another driver was taking the rest of it. They was going from New York to Boston. Ooh. A Greyhound? This was a, a Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Oh, okay. Does that make a difference for you? No. Uh, yeah, Thanks. I'm going to definitely stay with white. I'm going to stay with white. white. I'm going to say non-white, but not I'm black. still go with non-white, too. Still going now. DC, you still staying white? It's a woman? Oh, she definitely was white. <laughs> oh, you, you said she just sat down with the. You said she just sat down, with and the, she just oh, sat down with the customers. Yeah, yeah. Nah, they could be black now. Her feet could be tired. Nah, nah I ain't let no black girls sit down on the job. Nah, she fucked some. The, the chick fucked her husband. I hear right, yeah, Graham reveal her name is uh Wendy Alberti. I ain't never heard this shit, but uh, we got. Oh no! I miss Jenkins. Oh, she was, Wendy. She was Haitian. She was <laughs> Definitely Jamaican. Haitian wow, people lock, lock motherfuckers in, uh, in luggage compartments and shit. I ain't never heard that one. They crazy. You ever seen Shadows? <laughs> That's oh, Jamaican, shit. nigga. Same That's difference. Jamaican. Same difference. Oh, you better not tell them that. They will fuck you up. I, I know. The passengers <laughs> was pissed off because they said uh, the bus company just whitewashed the shit. They ain't mention it when they got to their stop. They ain't even what? say welcome to Boston. Or nothing. They ain't tell them what the fuck was going on. They just heard this lady banging and crying for help from the luggage compartment. Police had to come on, and the but, bus company ain't even mentioned. But, but did nobody tell her to stop? Like <laughs> for at least a four. That's a four or five hour drive. Ain't nobody say stop. Like hey, we hear something. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, I got wow. I got one more. One more, and then we'll just get back to the random shit. Uh, man who posed as special needs patient, so home nurses would change his diapers. Sentence for perverse deception. That's a white man for That's sure. That's white. That is white. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, don't know. dog. Nah, dog. I see, nah, I could he might have. If he was black, he might have tried to uh, masquerade as a health inspector. But yeah. a motherfucking this this nigga in the health inspector. I could see a black dude try and get some extra Philly feels on his Woodson, so he did that shit. I could see that. But, I don't believe it. But I could also see an Indian dude doing that too. I can see <laughs> 
All right, some more details. A Louisiana man pretended. Oh shit, he black. black. He, he white. Never, never mind. Louisiana he man black. pretended to have special he needs in order to have women he hired as babysitters change his diapers, and he got probation for this. Baby, I'm white. White. I'm gonna he say black. white. He black. He hired him as babysitters. I'm gonna say white. That's white. He black. My question is though. Like, did nobody realize like he was getting off to this shit? Like, what he was changing right. diapers because he was Who's hiring the though? same. One of these ladies said she did it uh at least ten times. Oh, she lied. Oh. Get the fuck oh. out of here, bitch! You no, 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 no. He was paying her good as shit. She was the down money. It down. made her ignore the red flags. Right. Right. I'm right. tired of changing Jerome's diapers, but I'm gonna do it again this weekend. I'm just. They got services for everything. I gotta believe there's some sort of sex worker that's out there willing to change diapers. I didn't see it. You can't just pay a regular. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But he black. That's a white. Nah, shit. I think that's some white shit for sure. That's some white shit for Where sure. Where we going? We still sticking with the Louisiana black. Louisiana kind of gets me. Oh. There's the Louisiana that's throwing me it's off. Nah, it's, 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 me. it's a lot of it's, it's a, lot a lot of white, white folks in the bayou. That's cool. I live in Louisiana. It's a lot of white people here. Uh huh. Right. Yep. His name is Rutledge. Oh, you said, oh, said babysitter in Louisiana. White. Ah, uh, he and then did. His name is Rutledge. You don't know. Yeah, him. fuck. But you, if I would have known his name was Rutledge in the first place, I would have knew he was white. I didn't get you, Rutledge. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying that motherfucker looked like he liked to do I weird knew that shit. That was a white cracker yes. ass cracker. God. Yes, his eyes are symmetrical. I'm scared. You got, yeah. you got it. First of all, black people will get their cousins to do some shit. If they fucked up versus hiring somebody to do it if they can. Big fact. And the fact that you was hiring people as a babysitter, not you getting some chick to come over and rub and tug you. You hiring these motherfuckers as a babysitter. So you Black got money though. You got I'm gonna money be always honest with you. I'm gonna be always honest with you. I think that's too that's too much work for a nigga to be doing. We ain't exactly. gonna have all that. Niggas don't like I said, niggas ain't <laughs> gonna that's think too much hard. That's, that's too, too much, much work. Sport. We gotta, we gotta put a diaper on too. Oh, and he had money to blow though on that. Show. That was that was his thing. He liked being a, like wearing a diaper and getting motherfuckers to change that. That nigga was the adult version of Tommy Pickles. Well, hold on, wait, 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 so that lasted all of what, like, uh, two minutes, five minutes. Anyway, yeah. that was, that, everything I planned for my. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big plan. That was the whole plan. Now nah, that was my, dope, though. I, I like. My daughter that. wasn't giving me no no time this weekend. I was when I was talking about dropping her off at Big Smash House. That was real talk. I was I was ready to get rid of your way. I was done. <laughs> Driving your ass nuts, huh? Man, she just drove me crazy. Spinning all, all, all over the place. I ain't gonna hold you. My my youngest is fourteen, and motherfuckers be like, "Yo, y'all gonna have another one?" Fuck no. <laughs> I like being there. I like being able to say I ain't got to worry about you today. Right. I like that shit. Now, I'm mind you, I'm gonna make sure you're good. But I, I like yeah. the fact that yeah, I don't have to 14. cook for you every day all day. I don't gotta yeah, cook all your meals. Yeah, my youngest fourteen. My oldest sister. I, I wish. Fuck. Shit, my oldest just turned nineteen. My youngest is fourteen. I am done. No, we had oh, at this age. At this age is a weird. It's a weird ass age. I didn't. I didn't realize it until I got kids. That you know, what I'm saying they they horny all the goddamn time. That's one of them. That's first of all. <laughs> like, like every damn day they trying to holler at some damn girl. And I, I swear to God, then they then they want to talk to talk to chicks living other states. I'm like, this, this oh yeah, that's that new shit now for real. They love them out of state things. I don't yeah, this, I said, ain't this some how to catch a predator type shit you doing? What the hell we doing? I'm like no facts. You got no, Chris Hansen. I ain't here for no little kids. I want a man. I like man's butt. <laughs> you got. I like you, you and I want like you. Man. We can do this the easy the way easy or the hard way. Hard way. I see you. Oh, you I see you like All right, cut the cameras off. Yeah. Booty warrior. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, Booty that's is actually one of my favorite more. episodes. But listen, yeah. did you actually see the interview of the real dude though? Yeah, Fleece yeah. Johnson. Yeah. 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 Yo, it was like now booty is more important than drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> it's also more important than breathing. Uh, booty. You I'm get man. you a nice piece of booty. You do Yo. anything for it. <laughs> and that motherfucker was dead serious. You ain't never hey. see that shit, Andy? Uh-uh. I'm at Look at that. Yo. Please do. Hey. Yo. He had the camera people scared. They thought he was going to be them. Do you know how much name? this bug? 
Fleece Trump Johnson. Was that nigga was real? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah, he was real. I seen the interview before I seen the Boondocks episode. Oh, I, I seen the Boondocks, Boondocks, Boondocks episode, and then somebody told me it was real, and I thought they was bullshitting. And mm-hmm. then I looked because he was on uh, like, like scared straight and all that shit. They like, took oh. it word for word. They ain't even yeah. No. <laughs> But whoever yeah. the characters were playing him in real life. Boondocks did a lot of shit. That Tyler the Perry Boondocks episode was wild. Was, uh, Yo, yeah. yeah. No, that, that Tyler whole, Perry the episode. The whole season about that fucking slavery, uh, goddamn slavery theme park, that whole season was crazy no, as shit. Let me tell y'all, the best ones, the one when they did, one when old dude uh, lost his wife to Usher. Oh, yeah, uh, Tom. I can see if it was a... Uh, if it was one of these hard rappers, but you lost your wife to a sexy, flexy ass R and B rapping ass nigga, like uh, that, shit was hilarious. <laughs> that nigga said, "I'm a pimp named Slickback." He said, okay, "Say it with me, Tom." <laughs> Say it with me, Tom. A pimp named Slickback. He's like, "Can I just call you a pimp?" No, nigga, it's one like a tribe called Quest. A pimp <laughs> named Slickback. No, Say it with me, Tom. Yo, yo, That's wait, the yo. one nigga I do though. <laughs> yo, when old girl, when old girl was whipping his ass. Oh yeah, she's like, now you get black man in self defense. <laughs> Come on now, Tom, she whooping your ass. Has not calling her a bitch work. <laughs> <laughs> yo, when that motherfucker was doing the uh the confessions in the motherfucker raid with the other people, that shit. <laughs> oh no, it's let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Nah, that drink oh, when uh he was selling chocolate bars. Oh yeah, fuck hey, the fuck prince, you, fuck the young queen, fucking shoes with the buckle. Fuck guy, rich <laughs> nigga said, I don't want to get anally raped. <laughs> oh, Tom, I was like, not my booty. Oh, my <laughs> nigga, Tom was booty is mine. It belongs to me. Hey, hey this is the booty is mine. It belongs to me. The booty is mine. It belongs to me. <laughs> Yo, Tom fear as a black man. Like his thing, the only fear was going to jail and being anally raped. Like, that's right. a fucked up fear. I, don't, I ain't gonna lie. I did like thirty six hours when I got my DWI, and I ain't used the bathroom once. I was, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking, cause y'all ain't making me go over there. I had to use the bathroom in here and had to pull anything down. It's not happening. So, I'm with Tom on that one. Fuck all that. Said, but Tom was having damn nightmare fantasies. I don't know what the yeah. fuck was going on, man. Tom, <laughs> Tom had it bad, though. Real bad. They call Tom's, him in a, health Tom's in a big black nigga with a long wood. <laughs> she was ready. <laughs> he keeps trying to figure out what the fuck she just walked back in on. The Luther was my shit. The motherfucking <laughs> itis. Um, uh, MLK episode. When MLK. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The damn Popeye's chicken one. That oh, one chicken, too. The chicken, chicken flu. Yeah. yeah chicken flu. Yeah. yeah. The bone dogs. My nigga stink meter wasn't no fucking joke though. Uh, oh crew. yeah, nigga. <laughs> that, <laughs> whole crew. Right there. that nigga had a squad. He had a whole squad. Came Red right. Fox. Esther, fact, ain't nobody ever got their ass whooped like when Stinkman whooped your motherfucking ass. That dude no. was no fucking joke. Dude came back from the dead to whoop his ass. You understand that? Yeah, you know fact. how angry you gotta be to come back from the dead to whoop a nigga's ass. <laughs> and not only that, but you whoop his ass in front of people. <laughs> like that shit didn't make no sense. How you die in the middle of an ass whooping? <laughs> Facts. Oh man, that's sad. Now I tell you the, the funniest ass woman story I got. Like, in the, I had a kindergarten teacher, and I still remember this shit because it was that traumatic. Damn. She had uh, she had two yardsticks that she taped together, and she named them Officer Friendly. What Dang. the fuck? Yeah, and so you know how you had like cubby holes and shit in kindergarten. So like, yeah. I know it's a yardstick now. I know it was two yardsticks now, but back then, all I knew was that if you fucked up, you had to go in that little cubby hole with the teacher. And you had to go meet Officer Friendly. And when motherfuckers came out, they was crying. And nobody ever said what happened to them when they went in there. Nobody <laughs> talked about that shit. You just First of all, in that's a room. real ass whooping when you can't even talk about it afterwards. That's all you knew was they went in the room. They was making see yardsticks and had flashbacks. And they came out fucked up. I legit thought it was the police officer that lived back there until I was like in the sixth grade. Like I thought it was a legit officer until I had to meet the motherfucker and then I found out. Nah, it's just two y'all. See, she about to whoop my ass. That's all that's happening. But I thought the police lived in my damn school and was fucking kids up for no reason. 
that's that's how they traumatized us when we was young. It's fucking yeah, I got trauma, but mine was just with a regular ruler. They fucked my hand up. Ooh. And I'm I, good. Then I got real bad and I had to go bend over and touch my ankles. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brown's glass. Ooh. Yeah. Spank me over. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I didn't like it because he had he held the smile of my back, like he stood on the side, held the smile of my back, and then was just like, boom. Oh, he was professional. Oh, man. that was more for him than you. That was uh, was, Fifty yeah, Shades yeah. of Black. He was yeah, and you like you got to be careful how you hit little girls because you can feel it in oh. like you can feel the vibration in your cooch. The feeling on your balls too. You hit the wrong way too. Yeah, you hit the balls wrong. It's blue. Man, shit. <laughs> I mean, what's I mean? How long ago was this right here? I think we can still have a case on your right. I yeah, we need it. Like hey, in five years, it's gonna be one of them uh, lawyer hey, commercials. Hey, well, you got years later, you probably got a case still. Hey, can yeah. you, hey, hey, you better call I'm JG Wetworth. This is like in fifth, sixth grade. Oh, you still got time? Call JG Wetworth. No, no, yeah. Eight seven seven cash now. Yeah, yeah you can get a settlement. You can't touch these kids now. Yo, y'all know that's the one commercial that is played everywhere. Yeah, because they want that cash. I want my money, and I want it now. <laughs> and that's pro- I think that's the longest running commercial now too. Yeah. Oh man. Because them motherfuckers used to interrupt prices right back in the day. Still do. Facts. Hey, bro, do they have the Eastern Motors commercials in Philadelphia? Eastern Motors. Eastern no. Motors. I don't think so. Oh yeah, at DC, at Eastern Motors. Your jobs, your credit. That shit, they just come on every day. I had all the red skins and everything in it. Can I even say red skins anymore? Is that still offensive? Uh, Apparently so. I guess. DC, where you stay at? Where you to be in Young Canton? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That ain't far. Uh oh, she got a second win. Is your collar up? Oh. The pimp name slip back. Say it with me, Tom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like try to call quest. I got my ass out the bed. Yo, so I, am I the only one that was really waiting for that Uncle Ruckus movie? Yeah, I really wanted to see I wanted it. That shit, yeah. I wanted I'm to good. see that shit so fucking bad. Like I'm Uncle Ruckus, no relation. I'm going back. to see Megan by myself. Fuck it. Don't trust mm. them new niggas over there. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> that Uncle Ruckus episode was fucking crazy, man. Oh, which one? Oh, the story of his life? Yeah, with his dad Uncle whooping Ruckus his ass. Oh. Uncle Rook is the one that got that weird. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I felt bad for him after watching that episode. No, the hell I don't. Like, what was it? He was like something like he was. He had revealed Lago. <laughs> you just get darker and black. Yeah, he had the reverse black, the reverse. Yeah, white. he had the reverse white. Reeving Alago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> hey, yo, his mom came running. Right Who do y'all think was worse, Uncle Ruckus or the boy from Life? Mm. Tell him about the gunline, boss. Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus. You gonna eat your cornbread? <laughs> I feel like Uncle. I feel like dude didn't have enough in the movie for me to feel like he was, you know, what I'm saying that bad off. But like Uncle Ruck is that motherfucker hated everything black. That nigga right. thought he was church. Like he, he was like Bernie, 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 Bernie Mac. Because they black. Because they black. Cause they black. <laughs> Speaking of black, boy, you were eating hell of that damn chicken wing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No word. She can't talk, but she can she lost her voice. <laughs> she ain't lose her eating. Oh, I can't hear you. She's still trying, but yeah. fuck this shit up right here, though. <laughs> you know you're a professional when you <laughs> took all the meat off in one in one swipe. She had to look down and pray for it. That's what he said last night. Damn. <laughs> They've been showing the skills, man. Her and You on baby. mute, baby? You on mute? You on mute? They've been cleaning bones this week. This weekend. Right. CL was working the shit out that motherfucker, wasn't he? <laughs> Yo. He had everybody in the comments like, God damn. In five years, they're going to think you and that chicken had an affair. But he was <laughs> DNA ingrained in that bone. Uh, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. You don't say. 
At some point, we're gonna Word. understand. We're gonna be able to read lips, but <laughs> Roger, because I can't hear nothing. Facts. Oh yeah. yeah damn it. I was yeah, no, damn what the me. hell? That is gristle. <laughs> Hey, you know there ain't no meat on there because you got to do like this. Who on here eat the tips of the wing? Hell no. Oh, no, no, we good. That's just crazy. I just knew you was gonna say you too. That's the crazy part. No, I'm good. Like I'm black, but I ain't black black. That's, that's just too much. Like that's just that. There ain't even no meat in there. It's just like fucking finger. When I ate meat, I. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you, can't, you can't just come out like that. <laughs> okay, when I ate chicken, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's better. When I ate chicken, I, I never really cared for it being on the bone unless it was from Ponderosa, but I always had chicken fingers, I never liked it on the bone. I don't, I'm not a fan of chicken legs, I don't know why it's something about a chicken leg that just makes me because you gotta I'd rather eat the drink because you gotta break it apart like and that's not even that I think it's because when I was a kid we was poor so all we have is like legs and now that I'm grown and I got a little money I refuse to eat a fucking chicken leg like I just ref yeah I, was, I refuse to eat a fucking chicken leg I feel the same way about them oodles noodles I swear I can't stand eating shit now oh like you gotta upgrade man you gotta get actual ramen baby no, no, no mine was bologna. Like I remember when oh, we used bologna, to eat bologna. Yeah. I'm cool with bologna. I eat some bologna. bologna. Sandwich in a heartbeat. Fried or regular, but fucking chicken legs, that just make me feel it give me flashbacks. My agent that orange start a, acting up. That was our poor man meal, like fried bologna with mustard because we ain't had no man. Right? Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Hey, give me give me a bologna egg and cheese all motherfucking day. I'm smashing. I can I can rock that. Fried bologna, fried egg. Oh, yep. We down, we down the south. We get a damn bologna burger in a fucking minute. Bologna burger? Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I'm out, baby. Bologna south, yes. burger? Oh, that's the biggest shit going on down here. The damn, damn thick ass cut of damn bologna. Look, oh, wait. Real quick hey, before you get in there. Where, from, where are you at? North Carolina. Okay, never okay. mind. I'm, I'm trying to either move there or to the West Coast. Now, I'm listen. To to when I said something about yeah. somebody from North Carolina and I said the South, everybody was like, that ain't the South. That is, that is, is the South. South. That's but that's what I feel about. I, I feel the same way about Maryland. Maryland is the South, but I don't feel like it's part of the, it's, it's part of the South. Now I don't yeah. think Maryland is yet. Like Maryland, I don't, I don't even look at that as Maryland. Below, I look at below the Mason Dixon line, DC. Yeah, right now, Charlotte. I stayed in Charlotte, and yeah, that's straight Southern. <laughs> that's yeah. South. Yeah, but bologna burger. This what the hell? Research it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing, and then uh, I'll be down here will tear that bitch in half. You hear me? Damn, that shit. I've sense. seen, I've seen it. It's like um, but I've seen it. Oh, I've seen the white people make it. Like <laughs> she gotta keep looking behind. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you said that shit like Jason was behind him. I see it. <laughs> no, nah, man, I seen the um post. It's people in Mississippi that eat like um fish sandwiches with um Oreo McFlurry on it. You know where um you know where the um fish salads came from from the south? Fish, I remember fi they, whoa, 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 fish salad. Yeah, fish salad. I remember no 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 Kiki. You keep saying yeah, fish salad, but you gotta explain what the fuck it is. Yeah, what the fuck it's, it's basically salad with fish cut up over it. It's like a, like how you would do a chicken salad, but it's fish. I mean, I had salmon like that. Oh no, salmon. you got salmon. You gotta try it. It's the best. Like fried yeah. fish on top of a salad. Listen, I, I don't. I don't eat shrubbery, so that wouldn't be an option for me. I don't eat that. I don't eat nothing. You gotta break. It feel like they still alive, and you gotta break and suck in their leg and stuff like that. Like crabs and lobster. Like ew, no. I mean, hell, I'm married. I'm, not, I'm used to breaking the legs open, sucking something out. Look, like I was saying. It is what it is. Hey, and y'all say I'm nasty. Hey, you. Girl, this ain't nobody as bad as you. <laughs> yeah, still ain't on your level yet. All right, let's let's settle this one real quick. Grits, sugar, or no? I don't, I don't need grits. Depends, I don't like grits. All depends I don't like on grits. how I feel. Grits, I don't eat butter. grits. You want you want the fence? Grits, butter, and salt. But yeah. exactly. exactly. grits is how I feel. For the most part, I haven't put grits in and sugar in my grits in a while. I do cream cheese and cheddar. Cream cheese. Try it. Before you say anything, try it. That shit gonna change your motherfucker. I'm not eating grits. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not well, maybe eating, I shouldn't talk because spaghetti. I put ranch in it. I put ranch in my spaghetti. 
Uh, for what? I put ranch on my pizza. <laughs> so that shit is popping right there. <laughs> no, she came in ready. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I dip my ranch pizza in ranch. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Don't knock it till you try it. Maybe the seasoning. Not the, now, not I the, put, uh, now I like put the seasoning no. yet. The seasoning. I had grits and cheese, but not grits and cream cheese. Like you know what I mean? Try it. Okay. Try oh, what? That shit would change. Y'all motherfucking toilets. Y'all motherfucking toilets must be made of solid <laughs> gold to process all that shit. Yo, that shit. <laughs> Y'all got industrial fucking prison toilets. Try that shit. That shit pop. So, okay, so run me through that, though. I'm going to try it. Like, how, yeah, like, run us how to have, run like, us how run to make through it. that. Yeah. Like, when do we put the cream cheese in? Because, like, you got to mix it with water and stuff. Nah, man, when your grits is basically done. Mm-hmm. Well, right before they get done, like you know you how you add your butter uh-uh. or your cheese or whatever at the end, you drop your cream cheese in, mix it all in, make sure it's nice and smooth. Don't be out here eating no granny ass grits. Nobody wants. What to else be, you put in nobody it? Nobody wants to be crunching on grits. Uh, for me, I had I grits do, one time in my man, whole life. Delicious. I could eat them shits every day. Why he always got to sound like a, a, a narrator? <laughs> no, no, no. Because I'm fucking tired. That's why. Shit. <laughs> there was one time in Brooklyn. Yeah. My boy said, I'm Ron, where you at? Come back. That's how uh, Annie going to sound in the morning. I think she's she she catching a little nap in for a minute. Cream Annie. cheese, cheddar cheese, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some uh, Italian seasoning. That's the Damn, that's a lot. On wow. your grits? At I'm this point, it ain't even breakfast. That's lunch. If I make that and it's disgusting, <laughs> just know I'm coming on your show for you. Uninvited. Hey, you gonna come on the show and say, Raw, you know what? I am never mm-hmm. gonna uh disagree with anything you say, no matter mm-hmm. what it is ever again. Because that shit changed my motherfucking life. It, it, I guarantee it, 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 Jesus, Jesus himself come there and season them damn grits. I ain't gonna eat it. I can't do it. I'm cool on grits, man. It just well, remind me of sugar in it. I can't put sugar. You must just, time, you must just have to eat a wheat. Exactly. My wife, my wife what the fuck is the somebody. difference? My wife worked with somebody. I, I, I have to have sugar in my grits. I'm like, what? I ain't even hey, getting it. I can't tell you the difference. Hot. Cream of wheat, grits. I thought cream of wheat was wheat. grits. I love cream of wheat, but I got to have cheese and sugar in my grits. I like oatmeal. I'll take oatmeal. I'm cool I like oatmeal. oatmeal. I, know. I do. I put a little bit of sugar, like brown sugar, on my spaghetti. Yeah, I do that, I put, too. Well, I, do that too. If you I put it on my own. If you use sauce out of can, you want to put a little sugar in it anyway. Yeah, but I don't put it in my pot. I put it on my plate. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody. I put it in the pot. Everybody got to get it. Yeah, brown sugar, brown sugar. (laughs) We know how you do, DC. You throw niggas in front of ass whoopings. You force people. Hey, man. Hey. Force niggas. Hey. I treat everybody fairly. (laughs) I don't play no favorites. Equal, equal opportunity. I'm yep, just yep, saying. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> now that motherfucking cream cheese, I'm telling you, that shit gonna change your life, yo. Real shit. And you ain't gotta put, you ain't gotta put a whole lot. You just putting enough in there. It makes your grits creamier. It gives it a little bit more flavor. Trust me, that shit pop. Yo. All right, bro. Yeah. Listen. All right, listen. I reupdate I'm gonna try it though. I'm about to. The guests they just try to go into the pool. But they the just walk, they just walked around the pool. I thought it was about to get in. I'm about to say now I gotta go. And tell people, but you're a lifeguard too. God damn, girl, you got a lot of jobs in that motherfucker. Breakfast, no, security. auditor, security. lifeguard, security. security. Hold on, let me see something. Can y'all see the security camera? Hell no, that bitch looks small as fuck. Girl, right. put that camera back in front of you. <laughs> Hippa, you can't see it. We can't see that. Shit. Oh, it's, me, it's me. big to me. You mean while little Johnny swimming like here? We don't see Johnny. Little Johnny, face, face up. up. <laughs> you you a lifeguard too? No, no <laughs> you're supposed to be something like a security guard, but like I don't say nothing to nobody long as they ain't fucking with you. Right. Yo, I don't muscle care muscle if I see like up. 80 people come in and go in one room long as I ain't nobody calling me or I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck about that. They're having a full blown orgy upstairs right now. Huh? You can they they knock on no door. <laughs> I didn't even see him come in. Yo, let right. me tell y'all. So I used to, um, when I first went to Louisiana, we lived on the military base, right? And it's a holiday in on the base, so that's why I used to work. So one night, this lady and her son What's came in. It had to be like, what? What the fuck is that? It's, it's not my boxer this time. <laughs> this time? 
<laughs> this time. I'm about to say somebody doing construction I work. It. I missed that part. There it is. It ain't doing it's it no more. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's but anyway, go ahead and finish yeah. the story. I don't know what it is. Okay. But, I think uh, so Kiki's Rose trying to talk time. to her. This lady and her son they came in. It had to be like Don't forget me. two, three o'clock in the morning. Don't judge me. And they're like, it's a guy laying out there on the floor. The little boy was like, I think he's dead. I'm like, bro, he dead. Bitch, I'm not about to go out there. Y'all got me fucked up. What the fuck Yo. Is so, so last year, last year I was standing in the hotel. I pull up in the parking lot. I see this dude laying there. He, he's trying to see him. Go ahead, see him. <laughs> 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 no, you made me think about something. So I see this dude right. laying there. So I'm sitting in my car. I ain't bothering nobody. I ain't worrying about nobody. The lady knock on my car. She says, Sir, I need your help. I said, Listen, ain't shit that I can do for you. The only thing I can do for you, the same thing you could do is call 911. And I don't see the point of both so of what, them calling when you already called already. She's like, Oh, but. You can help him. Lady, I don't know CPR and I'm not touching that. <laughs> I don't know why he fell out and I don't want to know why he fell out. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. She got upset. That's fucked up. People don't want to help people nowadays. What the fuck you want me to do? I'm going to do everything you don't know, I don't know. <laughs> we both here don't know shit together. What the fuck you want me to do? Y'all like, know me. Up. My heart, my, I'm going a, I'm to a be all around trying to see what I can do. Are you in pain? Let me know. What's going no, on? Was like completely so, passed out type shit. Like he was sleeping. Look, look, so that's the kind of shit that so I. So Kiki know. won't no, make no. sure a little dude don't drown in the pool, but she gonna make sure a dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they was just in there. You can tell they probably just went in there. I guess probably to be loud. They're not in the pool. They're just chilling in like the. It's chair. an indoor pool. Yeah. Hey, okay. so what what time is it? Like where y'all at? Uh, yeah. Almost two. Yeah. You on the same time as that's what 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 part of North Carolina? No, no, I'm on the he I'm, on the, I'm here, he on the same time. Yeah, I'm on the same oh. time. Yeah, I'm on the oh, same time. Okay. playing on the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm on. I'm trying to act like you on the West Coast, dude. The what? West side? Oh. <laughs> Yo, that Texas time threw me off. Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. It, it fucked me up for this show. I asked Raw. I, I went from eleven o'clock to I'm going to midnight. <laughs> one o'clock. I didn't know what fuck time my slot was. Bro. No, I went to Texas, it was man. For that you. shit threw me off. Midnight sure. for me. Yeah. Um. But no. So the little boy was like, yeah. So I'm like, damn, I gotta go look. The little nigga was like, shit, I'm coming with you. His mom was like, no, Tommy. Yeah. I don't know if that was his name for real, but she was like, no, where you going? He's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. I'm going with her. And he woke up with me. And I come and hit the corner, this nigga stretched out. So I get over next to him and he just gone. Bitch, I start kicking his foot. Hey, hey, get up. Nothing. I'm like, yo, get up. Nothing. This nigga was so motherfucking drunk. Now, mind you, he was sitting outside of his room, chair from inside there, cans of beer all over the place. He get up, he like, yeah, I'm, they sent me here to fix this. I got to take this down and do this. It's a fucking concrete beam or something he like yeah I got it. i'm like what the fuck then he start getting built buck with me i'm like nigga i will beat your drunk ass hey, why the hell you backsplashing what the hell's going on here they are getting now check this out this morning right it sound like you backsplashing what the fuck is that listen yeah, like we hearing you hearing certain parts of you in reverse oh she trying oh to that's 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 that that's that bitchy yelling. If you don't feel any man yet, <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. I'm saying it's the ghost of that nigga running around. Hey, room. right. No, but listen, check this out. So at six thirty a.m. yesterday, when I about thirty minutes before I got off of work, this dude come in drunk. His pants is down. He almost bought the Earl. You know what I'm saying? And his he got throw up all over his shirt. He's like, Ew. all he could muster to say was, give me a room. I was like, okay, you do know you got to leave at 12 p.m. though, right? He's like, give me a room. I said, fine. All right, we're going to get you in. He paid $149 plus tax for six hours. For six hours. Wow. He just wanted to sleep yeah. it off. But That's safety. Hold on. But they, they never went to, I told them the story of him. I was like, so please go check on him. Nobody went to go check on him. And he was here. I don't know if he's gone now, but I know when I came, like, um, did a, I asked her when I checked in, hey, is dude still here? She was like, yeah, but nobody wants to go check on him. My man, yo, my man what kind of shit is that? 
So y'all just charging that nigga another one forty nine. Yeah, that's why I was like, and then he he supposed to um go knock on the door anyway. At yeah, 20... most people don't check out. Right. So that's why I'm like, what the hell? That's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think somebody might, might want to send the ambulance. Then the nigga might be dead. All I know is he from Sharpville, PA, and I do know his name, Kenneth. So if something happens, <laughs> <you'll>... <laughs> damn, Ken. <laughs> you have a family member named Kenneth from Sharpville, PA. I'm like, what was you doing to be drunk at six thirty in the morning? That drunk? He was, he was coming from a party. Night. He was up all yeah. night getting it the fuck in. He was watching us. Hey, at least he was smart <laughs> enough to come here and not drive the rest of the way because he. Who said he drove there? He That's probably true. walked. Facts. That's true. First of all, he didn't think he was going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> he was lucky he got there. Damn, this is this ain't the big wiggling shit. <laughs> he thought it was after hours. Nah, that, that just happened to me. I done woke up downtown, middle of the day, middle of the night. Yo, okay, so I never told this story. Uh the one time I went to the um county. Um, story time. Yeah, I went to the county. I ain't go to. I ain't go to big boy jail. I just went to the county. So, Nigga, that's it was Saturday night. Um, I remember because it was spring bling <clears throat> back when uh BET used to do spring bling yeah, and shit on TV. There. I remember Pretty Ricky was performing. Um, so we had Christian Brothers, which right. I will never oh. drink that shit again. Christian Brothers, Bumpy Face, Singham's Gin, and uh, oh. something else. Yeah, hardcore. So I remember the last thing I remember was drinking, taking a shower. I ain't had no socks on, no shoes on yet. And next thing I remember was waking up in front of a, a sheriff answering questions. Um, but peep this. So it gets better. So my dude told me what happened. Nobody knew I was in the county. Everybody thought my car was still down at the club, parked in the parking lot. Um, everybody thought like I went to, went and left with a girl. So I guess what happened was I was drunk. I drove to the club, was cool, got in. It wasn't nobody there. It was still early. So, you know, 11 o'clock, ain't nobody really on the dance floor, but like five people. So we was chilling. Apparently, I was dancing with this white girl so hard, like I was knocking her over um, doing a hump dance. <laughs> so, so, so I guess the bouncers, you know what I'm saying? I guess I did the Michael Jackson, um, James Brown, where you, you know what I'm saying, get down on one knee and put your head, you know what I'm saying, your hand on your head. You know what I'm saying? Like I was waiting for somebody to put the cape on me. So the bouncers come pick me up, take me outside. So apparently after that, I tried to fix my hat and my shirt and try to get back in. Um, so at the time I had an Impala and, you know, the cops here in Akron, they had Impalas. So apparently I went to this Impala thinking it was mine trying to get in and it was a cop car. Wow. Um, oh, shit. oh, wait, there's more. Um, so <laughs> I was in the intake throwing up on people. Um, oh my god i was wasted that was the drunkest i've ever been in my life and you ever you ever um come to from a stupor and you don't know what's going on so i'm in front of the uh sheriff answering questions and shit and i'm like nigga i don't live there and then i finally come to and i look around i'm like this ain't home where the fuck am i nigga that was the longest weekend ever i ain't get out till monday night i had to go through circuit uh court judge and shit but the part that fucked me up because like I knew some people that was in there. So they in there playing basketball and shit and playing cards. Then I sat in my cell that whole time. And it was fucked up about jails, nigga. The toilet is right by the door. So if you take a shit, everybody can see you. Oh, God. <laughs> and then they steal. So it's cold. Well, that was a story. <laughs> so kids never drink Christian Brothers and Bumpy Face Jen. First of all, the fact that you was drinking both of them together, you knew you was dead wrong. At the time, I didn't. We was experimenting. I was young. First of all, it was gin. Fuck the Christian brothers. I don't want to talk about nothing with liquor and experiences because I had too many. (laughs) I ain't trying to keep it real right now. He said we had a time last night. I had a time with liquor, boy. I tell you that. Hey, hey, Gary. Don't, don't, don't. Hey, it happened. Uh, I wasn't proud of it. And nobody knew. And that's the crazy part. Nobody came looking for me. So I fucking was pissed off at that. I'm like, none of you wow. niggas like came and looked for me and see what we thought you left with some girl or something. My mom didn't know. How, I told my mom, I was like, yeah, I was in jail. It's like jail. Then we thought nobody knew where you was at all weekend. This is Saturday oh night. Hey, yo. Man, I remember I didn't know I, w- I was in jail. Like, I remember I worked for Cedar Point. All I know is I went out with, <laughs> I went out with a whole bunch of white people, right? <laughs> 
the fact that you the keep looking around. Hey, we drank blue motherfuckers, right? That was oh, my hell no. I mean, and mm-hmm. they kept feeding them to me, feeding them to me. And I woke up on a hall. I had like a, a pillow with cotton balls in it that was plastic. And I had like this cover oh, that was like oh that little raggedy sheet green and I yeah and I was sleep on this hard thing and everything was um silver and I'm like what the hell and then when I as soon as I start waking up like where the fuck am I a cop came in he was like yeah you don't know where you are do you I'm like oh here we go but yeah that that was, was the best time of your fucking life hey, I had a good night but yeah, after yeah. that like I'm hey, like how the hell did I get I ain't gonna lie. Hey y'all, I was out the next weekend after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, hard headed like a motherfucker. The best time Terrible. you'll ever have in your life is when you party in with. Hey, hey, that remind me. She remind me. What's that? It's the motherfucker that was doing that shit. This motherfucker look around me. Oh, <laughs> yo, that's that Key and Pill skit. It was like I was like, bitch. <laughs> Hey, nigga, nigga was in fucking space looking around. <laughs> That's what that shit remind me of. Every time she keep doing that shit, it's like she looking for her husband. I was like, bitch, if you hey, don't yo, get your ass in the yo, car, so we can get the fuck out of here. Yo, she gonna say that one more time. And a random ass white dude walk right behind her. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey, so what are you, doing are you actually there by yourself? Huh? Are you there by yourself? Yeah. So who the fuck is you looking for? <laughs> because every um because first of all that like okay there's a way to get back here, and every so often like my boss she stays the night here because she has to work like double shifts. She don't stay the night there. She ain't got no yeah, house. Yeah, she stay the night. She'll come. She'll come in like in the middle of the night, like around five or four or something like that. So I'm always on guard. And then I'm the front desk is right here. So like if you can hear me speaking. Hey, yo, yeah. hey, yo, no, 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 no. Oh, damn. Like. Hey, hey, before you say anything, Gary, I just need to let you know it wasn't my fault. Um, I happened to be drinking. Look, it was spring bling. It was spring break. We was about to party. I remember like, hey, we got to meet white boy Cam at the club. And then what's crazy is the niggas didn't even have my shoes, yo. I had to walk home. I had to go back home in the fucking prison slippers, man. The fucking hard ass Jesus sandals. They ain't got no bottom. It's just fucking hard plastic with a strap that your feet go in. Yo, no you socks. Your ass off that night, won't you, man? Hey, man, I have one. They have one boot. <laughs> they have one of my boots, man. Yo, I was like, where my shit at? It's like, we only had one boot. You had a hell of a night. Yeah. He had a time that night. Good times, man. I'll never forget it. Damn, I, I, still... wish, I, I, mean, I wish this was going down like all the weekends at work. <laughs> <laughs> the Kiki through that shift. Right. She no, but go ahead, Gary, because I feel like you want to no, judge me. I, I just was listening to y'all, y'all journeys. And no, we we'll don't fuck with Kim, Kim, uh, Gary. He eat candy corn. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. We hating on candy corn? We doing this again? No. Nope. Nah, go ahead, Gary. Hey. I, I I thought we left that in the past. See, that, that's fine. I uh, you know, women don't forget shit. Your adventures and stories, man. I thought how hilarious that was. That's that shit. But you know I'm, what? I got I got I got one to offer. I got a story to offer. All I'm right. Always. So, me and my homeboys, we will always go to this bar every week, and uh, we will always sit in the same spot on some Cheers type shit. No. Right. So we <laughs> called it the block. Right. So. <laughs> This one time we go, and uh, it's this woman sitting there, and you know, and I'm like, all right, she's over there. I think she's drinking like a Shirley Temple or something. I said, hey, you can't be on the block Girl. drinking like a, a Hawaiian punch. And she looks at me, and she says, I'll drink you under the table. Now, it seemingly at that time that she said it, like the music stopped. Everybody was like, oh, shit, oh. <laughs> they were like, together. I was like, oh, you have the wrong, you got the wrong one. Okay, let's do it. And I remember sitting there and I said, what do you drink? She said, 151. Now. Oh. oh. See, hindsight is 2020. I did not have that. Oh, shit. 
I didn't think about it. I was like, all right, mm. you know, you do what you do. So she said she drank 151. I said, okay. She said, well, I'm going to eat first. I said, all right, I'm going to eat also. I had these little raggedy ass wings and some fries. She had a steak, potatoes. She knew what she was doing. Oh, she beat stuff she on ready. your ass. She was ready. Mm. And I mean, I know that I know our cameras are small and stuff like that, but in real life, I am six eight. And I was like, man, I got her. Man, she ain't nothing. I got this. Wait, wait, wait. you how though? I'm six eight. So you six eight and you, you like throw three dudes in my family. Probably. Probably. Hey, you six so, eight and you throw six wings is really gonna help you. <laughs> hey, I, I I thought that I was gonna be enough for her. I thought it was gonna be enough. You thought gonna be a Next. long. You thought gonna take a long time for that damn look at the bottom of your belly. Right there, you go. That was cute. I like that. Right, that, was cute. that was nice. That was very nice. So, next thing you know, we start doing shots. She do a shot, I do a shot. She do a shot, I do a shot. She do a shot, I do a shot. Now she's done. She just gets up, and a taxi just shows up, and I'm like, "Where the fuck a taxi cab come from?" So I'm standing there victorious. That's that's how I thought. Oh, so he I thought. Right. So I left. So I I left. It out. was at this moment that he knew he <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. that was that was perfect. I, you had that sound ready to go. So Y'all was on cue. <laughs> I remember. I remember my my contact. I wore contacts, and I remember one of them was like dry as fuck. So I'm driving home, Cotton Eye Joe style. I'm driving with one eye. I get home. I I, mar- I was married at the time. And I remember just getting home and just making it to the bed. The next day, I hear her stomping all around. I said, oh, shit, she's mad. And I'm like, oh, babe, what's going on? Is everything okay? And she just lets me fucking have it. She says, you staggered out the car, you staggered in the house, and you staggered upstairs. And I said, well, at least I was consistent. Uh, that, that wasn't the right thing to say at that point. <laughs> Not at that moment. Then she said, and you threw up. Now... <laughs> when she said it right I don't know what made me go hard with defending that I was like no I did not like this is some like OJ like didn't do it shit I was like no I did not she said look outside and show enough I look outside <laughs> and it's like a fucking crime scene it's just wings wing wing <laughs> residue all around and <sighs> birds over there eating, and I'm like, oh wow, that's crazy. I was like, okay. Well, at least the birds were cleaning it up. At least oh, the birds were laughing. Now you would think the story is over. Ha ha. You would think the story is over. No, 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 no. So that next week, we go to the club. I mean, we go back to the space. The bartender, which is cool, she gave me like a dirty look, and I'm like, what's going on? Mm. I'm like, you know, I, I, you know, now I'm talking, I'm running my mouth, and I said, well, listen, you know, she went up against the. You know, she went up against me. Like, what she thought was going to happen? They said, "No, nah, that's not what happened." I said, "What yeah, you mean?" Yeah. So clearly, I I didn't get the Snyder's cut. I didn't get the director's cut of what really happened. <laughs> what really happened is she left to go get the cab, and two minutes later, I got up and staggered out. And there's a it was a park bench that was right outside of this spot. They said I sat there for thirty minutes. I was like. <laughs> For wow. <laughs> I don't remember this. They said, "Yeah, you sat there for thirty minutes. Jenna, you got yeah. up. You took one. You said you didn't even pay your bill." I was like, "Oh wow, that's crazy." She said, "You took one step off the curb and fell." And I swear, in that moment, I said, "Oh shit, that is why I had gravel on my face." Oh uh, shit! <laughs> Hey yo, hey Barry, Barry, you had to sit down and contemplate life for a quick second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm sitting there and somebody really telling you the real director's cut of what really it happened, hurt. you like, oh, it really I'm hurt. Victorious. You're like, wait, what? I was like, oh shit, I do sort of remember this. And to this day, I never saw her again. I never saw the girl, and I and I will never drink 151. Like I don't care. Like I drink a lot of stuff. Yeah, that was wild. Nah, I'm gonna right, tell y'all one, one little story that, because of all my stories is wild, but this one is not that wild. We don't this want one. the semi wild one. We want the wild one. What the hell? It's, 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 it gets some oh, oh, oomph to it. It got some oomph to it. All right, go, go for it. Um, we at the dark right now. We want the real shit. We got drunk as fuck. Like we was all at the house. We all was there with our guy friend or whatever. So we're just drunk. How many? So all I remember is they putting me and my friend into the bedroom, and they said, "Y'all drunk as hell. Go to sleep." Excuse me. Uh oh. 
hold on one second. As soon as I got um I'm gonna finish the story for y'all. So then every they put each other in the room and next thing you know, titties drop. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James. When that motherfucker lift up in them drinks, boom. <laughs> no, but 151 is dangerous, yo. Let me tell you how dangerous it is. If you put orange juice in it, one at a time, even better. I don't know if y'all ever tried this. Try this experience. Go no. buy 151. No. no, hold on. Listen to me. No, no. don't drink. Don't drink. Don't drink no. it. Listen. Don't drink it. Buy it. Put some orange juice in it and let it sit overnight. The orange juice will turn into a ball in the 151, like a full circle, coagulated fucking blood clot in the 151, and you can stir it and it'll go back to a solid. That's how strong that shit is. Wow. I, I got a, I got a million stories, but I, I'm going to give you this one real quick. This might prove that I'm genetically opposed to one night stands. This might have been my... <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't, I ain't go with it. So it, was, it was my birthday and my uh, my homeboy's girl, for whatever reason, decided she wanted to take me out. We all went out. He was dead, too. It wasn't that kind of party. But uh, she wanted to take me out for my birthday. So she said we're going to have a drinking competition. She's going to drink me under the table. So uh, we doing shots of Patron. I know, I, I remember getting like 12, 13 shots in. Her girl is there. She uh, she decided to, you know, take me out to her car. We pop an ecstasy in the car. We come back. Oh, shit. You we ain't couple, We get a couple more shots in. I don't know how many more shots we went. What I didn't know was that this was day spot. They knew the bartender. So they was getting water shots. And I was getting straight patrol oh they was oh. trying to get you drunk so you getting, got bill cosby so then so then shorty the the uh my girl my my homie's girlfriend's girl she decides she gonna give me a ride home so i'm, I'm driving riding home with her and that's pretty much all i remember i woke up in the house and then my homie's calling me he's blowing my phone up so i answer he's like dude what the fuck happened between you and so-and-so last night i'm like oh shit, man what did i do i don't know he was like, man, she said, yo, she was driving you home. She got about, you know, a couple miles away. They all was on the parkway. You hopped out the car and ran across three lanes of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to get me. They trying to get me. They trying to get me. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't even have all my faculties with me. And I was like, nah, I can't do it. I'm out. I'm out. I gotta run. So you I, said, I, oh, she was sucking your dick that night, huh? Fuck that. They was a setup. They tried to set me up. They taking water shots, getting me fucked up. Yeah, Nose plugged in. I can smell the setup. Hey, yo, that's so, bananas right there. Yeah, I, I, it's almost time for me to get off of here, man. But I got my story is that um, I just I never get fucked up at bars and clubs and shit. I I rather get fucked up at home. That's my thing. But um, I think this story I tell you about this, this main story. So one night I went out. I think I had to be on like twenty two years old or some shit like that. Went on my people. I came back home, man. We all had a good time that night. Came back home at three o'clock in the morning. We fine. So I go to bed. They slept in my living room. I slept in the bedroom. I go to bed. The house is pitch black and dark. Dude, I woke up to my, my homeboys in the living room. was like, hey, yo, Eric, wake up, wake up. I'm like, yeah, what's up? So it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I woke up. He said, is somebody in the room with you? I'm like, I know damn ain't nobody. I said, no, I ain't bring nobody home. I'm by myself. What the fuck are you talking about? He said, I could have sworn somebody went in the room with you. So, I'm, so I get up, walk past my, like my bathroom was in my room. I didn't even pay the mind that my light was on in my bathroom. You know what I'm saying? So I walked right past my bathroom, went to the kitchen. I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm tripping, I'm tripping, wait a minute. I back up to look at my bathroom. It's a crackhead taking a shit. <laughs> hold up, wait a minute. Wait, How the what? fuck? Well, I want to hear at this moment, we knew. <laughs> It was at this moment that he knew <laughs> he fucked up. So, this, I'm, I'm just, I can't, I'll be putting my right hand up. So I back up, I back up, and I'm looking like, you know, at the time, you know, I, 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 I said, I said, man, I'm tripping, man. I'm tripping. I, I swear to God, this game, this game be real. So I looked up this, this little short ass, little crackhead motherfucker. Had it been maybe like five foot. Black ass older cat. He ain't not taking a shit. He literally sitting that motherfucker shitting. And how he's shitting, y'all, I swear to God, he's looking everywhere but at me. <laughs> the oh, he like, Do you look at that motherfucker while you trying to take a shit? <laughs> first, <laughs> fuck that, nigga. How the fuck did you get in here, first of all? I, 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 I have to finish now, bro. Listen, 
this is a motherfucker the whole time he's sitting there, he doing this right the whole time. Somebody said, Bitch, what the fuck you doing? Then we uh, I think reality is just but I cannot see I'm legally blind. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, look, look, listen, listen, listen. So he look he looks dead at me, y'all. I swear to God. He looks dead at me and starts shaking like hell, right? I said, what the, what the fuck is you doing? I instantly I think the crack just wore off his ass. <laughs> realize that he's in somebody else's fucking house, right? Oh so my like, god. So my homeboy runs in there to see what the fuck I'm yelling at. He's like, hey, what the fuck? Oh god. <laughs> so we're looking at we both debating, we both going back and forth, like, yo, it's a crackhead taking a shit, whatever. Then I think like I want to grab this motherfucker, but have you ever grabbed him out taking a shit? You don't do that. Hell no. What if I grab him? He shit on my floor, then I had to kill his ass. <laughs> and then you slipping and sliding in it. We ain't, we ain't got time for that shit. Honest guys, we sit back. And forth. He had we time had, for that shit. We took, we took. Like me and going, me and my homeboy going back and forth with the dude. Meanwhile, dude was just shitting like hey, man. he just sitting there enjoying himself. So we going back and forth. Man, fuck it. I grabbed his ass. Right, I grabbed him. Not his ass, his shirt, because you no know, kid ass. Anyway, <laughs> I grabbed, I grabbed him by his damn shirt. Right, let like, me pull your goddamn pants on, motherfucker. At this time, I didn't. And he let him wipe his ass. You know what? Yeah, that part. Oh. No, no, you gonna go outside with an itchy ass, bitch. We ain't doing this. <laughs> you could at least let the nigga finish. Damn, bro. hell no, 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 damn that. He ain't give me a chance to. See, that's why he want to look at you. Look. You was fucking his groove, but he probably would have been done already. <laughs> he's a shy. He's a shy shitter. A shy shitter. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Eric, thank you for being a part of this uh, this journey. I have a potpourri of questions. Go ahead. Um, a potpourri <laughs> of questions. <laughs> How, how the first question is what was the food spread that allowed this crackhead to have some type of stomach issue? And why was a crackhead just in your house using no, your no, 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 no. before we even get there? How did he even get in the house? That's Everybody, my question. All you motherfuckers in there. He he picked the lock on the front door. He picked the lock on the front door and came here. I'm, and I'm well, realize, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me explain to you why, how this motherfucker came, came in my house so easy, all right? Yeah, please. So, uh, apparently, apparently, unbeknownst to me, this motherfucker was coming to my house for a week straight. Oh, shit. <laughs> so he was a serial, he was a serial mother, shitter. Motherfucker, mother, 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 he was grub man, man from outside. <laughs> So no lie, no lie. I would come home. I, at the time, I used to work like swing shift job, a uh, swing shift job. So I'll come home like late night. He knew your schedule. Is that crackheads do? So I come home, man. I would come home, and I remember like, at the time I didn't smoke. So I'm like, why my house smell like weed? What the fuck is this? Weed and I'm shit. In, I'm in that. I'm in that like little, little porn bleach down my damn pipes and shit. Trying to figure what the hell going on. So not paying a mind to it. Then one day I came home, and and this and again, this me being stupid. Cause I used to let people stay at my house all the time. I didn't pay a mind to it. One day I came home, I seen a pillow and a blanket on my couch. Something like that, I said, damn, man, what the fuck is it? So my dumb ass thinking today is one of my people's that stayed tonight. I took the motherfucker, that's said, man, fuck it, this shit, I'm gonna just throw this shit out. The whole damn time, it was this crackhead motherfucker been breaking in my house for a week straight. He wasn't breaking in, he uh, made himself at home. He he was was you, you, you were, you I were Airbnb, him. Eric? You're, let, me yeah. you, let, me, let me tell you this shit right here. Real talk. He should have hopefully oh, left a so quality hope. review. Let me tell you this right here. So where, where, where I lived at at the time, man. <laughs> I, lived, I lived in the hood for real. So when we, we I, I lived inside a crackhead and a drug dealer. So I stayed in the middle of them. So I would get the motherfucker clients would come knocking my door thinking I'm the drug dealer house or it'd be the crackheads come from the crackhead house. So I was oh, always oh, in the middle. Oh. You should have had a sign. Oh, your house you was a tunnel. Know. But the tunnel between you the crack and the yeah. This is not whatever it not that's that this ain't what you want. <laughs> this ain't what you want. Hey, he found that out. I threw, I threw his way. ass, no lie. I threw his ass through my fucking damn door. So he went through You ain't open that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, he, he already cracked the bitch open. But yeah, I damn, that, 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 